The pages ahead contain translations of tablets that stretch back an astonishing 36,000 years before the rise of modern societies, a period so remote that it exists at the fringes of our collective imagination. The significance of these tablets cannot be overstated, for they promise to unlock secrets that have lain dormant for millennia, shedding light on the enigmatic origins of human civilization and offering tantalizing glimpses into a lost world of unparalleled sophistication. The author of the tablets, we are informed, is none other than Thoth, a figure shrouded in myth and legend yet revered as a priest king of the lost civilization of Atlantis. According to the remarkable claims put forth, Thoth migrated from his sinking homeland to establish a colony in the ancient land of Egypt, where he imparted his wisdom to those willing to receive it. For approximately 16,000 years, Thoth's influence cast a profound shadow over the ancient land of Egypt, shaping its destiny from around 50,000 to 36,000 BC. During this epoch, the once primitive inhabitants of the region were elevated to the heights of civilization under his enlightened guidance. It is said that he had transcended the bounds of mortality, wielding power over life and death at will. Even when he chose to depart from this earthly realm, it was not through the passage of death as mortals understood it. His dominion extended far beyond the borders of Egypt, encompassing various Atlantean colonies scattered across the globe. From the enigmatic lands of South and Central America to the distant reaches of the known world, his wisdom and authority held sway over a vast expanse of territory. His feats are so legendary they inspire us to ask questions that go beyond the limits of traditional scholarship. What secrets did Thoth possess that enabled him to wield such influence over the ancient world? What hidden truths do these ancient tablets contain? What knowledge about the universe and the nature of existence might they reveal? And what lessons can we glean from his timeless legacy as we seek to navigate the complexities of our own modern age? As Thoth prepared to depart from the land of Egypt, he embarked upon a final act of profound significance, the construction of the Great Pyramid, a monumental edifice destined to become a repository of ancient wisdom and a guardian of sacred knowledge. At the heart of this majestic structure lay the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, a mystical realm where the secrets of the ages were said to be ensconced. Here, within the labyrinthine corridors of the pyramid, Thoth placed his records, safeguarding them for future generations and entrusting their protection to a select cadre of trusted guardians. In time, these chosen sentinels, drawn from the highest echelons of Thoth's people, would evolve into the revered order of pyramid priests, whose sacred charge was to uphold the legacy of Thoth and safeguard the esoteric knowledge contained within the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid of Egypt also served as a temple of initiation into the mysteries of the ages. Within its ancient chambers, countless seekers of wisdom and enlightenment, including figures as illustrious as Jesus, Solomon, and Apollonius, underwent initiation rites that transcended the boundaries of time and space. Across the ages, Thoth's memory endured, his name whispered in reverence as the God of Wisdom, the Recorder. In the dim twilight of subsequent eras, when the light of enlightenment flickered and waned, he was elevated to the status of a divine deity by those who sought solace and guidance in the midst of darkness. Over time, legend enshrouded the halls of Amenti, casting them as the gateway to the underworld, the fabled realm where the souls of the departed journeyed for judgment in the presence of the gods. According to the accounts preserved within the ancient tablets, Thoth's ego transmigrated into the bodies of mortal men a process detailed in intricate detail within the sacred texts. In a sequence of incarnations spanning the depths of history, Thoth is said to have returned to the earthly realm thrice over, each time assuming a new identity and bestowing upon humanity a portion of his boundless knowledge. In his final incarnation, he was known as Hermes, the thrice-born, a figure of profound significance in the pantheon of ancient wisdom. It was during this last sojourn among mortals that Hermes bestowed upon the world his magnum opus, the Emerald Tablets, a compendium of esoteric teachings and arcane insights that continue to intrigue and mystify scholars and occultists to this day. Across the ages, seekers of truth and wisdom have turned to these cryptic texts in search of enlightenment, drawn by the enigmatic allure of their timeless teachings. The tablets were divided into thirteen parts for ease of study. However, among this trove of ancient wisdom, the final two tablets stood apart, their contents so profound and far-reaching that they remained shrouded in secrecy, forbidden from being released to the world at large. However, within the contents of the translated tablets lie secrets of immeasurable value to those who dare to delve into their depths. 
To the serious students of ancient wisdom, these teachings offer a path to enlightenment and understanding, guiding them along the labyrinthine corridors of esoteric knowledge. It is not enough to merely skim the surface of these sacred texts. To truly grasp their meaning, one must immerse oneself in their words, studying them not once but a hundred times over. For it is through this intensive study that the true essence of their teachings is revealed, opening avenues of wisdom and insight to the dedicated seeker. To those who approach with an open heart and a thirst for knowledge, these tablets offer more than mere glimpses of beauty, they provide a roadmap to the most profound truths of existence. With each reading, new layers of meaning unfurl, guiding the seeker ever closer to the elusive secrets that lie at the heart of the universe. The revealing of these ancient secrets to modern humanity is a tale shrouded in the mists of time. Around 13 centuries before the birth of Christ, Egypt, known in antiquity as Chem, found itself engulfed in turmoil. In response to the unrest, numerous delegations of priests were dispatched to distant lands, tasked with seeking wisdom and solace beyond the borders of their troubled homeland. Among these emissaries were select members of the esteemed pyramid priesthood, bearing with them a most potent talisman, the emerald tablets. These sacred artifacts served as symbols of authority and power, granting their bearers dominion over the lesser priestly orders that had emerged from the remnants of Atlantis. Through their travels and encounters, the wisdom of the ancients was disseminated, paving the way for the eventual revelation of these timeless truths to a world hungry for enlightenment. The priests entrusted with the sacred emerald tablets journeyed across vast oceans to the continent of South America, where they encountered a thriving civilization known as the Maya. Here, the priests found a hospitable people and chose to settle among them, sharing their knowledge and wisdom with the indigenous people. Over the centuries, a deep bond formed between the priests and the Maya as they worked together to cultivate a society founded upon the principles of ancient wisdom and spiritual enlightenment. By the 10th century, the Maya had established a flourishing civilization throughout the Yucatan Peninsula, building magnificent cities and temples dedicated to their deities. It was during this time that the sacred emerald tablets found their final resting place beneath the altar of one of the great temples dedicated to the sun god. Yet, as the wheel of time turned and the tide of history shifted, the fate of the Maya civilization hung in the balance. With the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century, the once great cities of the Maya fell into decline, abandoned by their inhabitants and forgotten by the world. In the wake of the conquest, the treasures of the temples, including the sacred tablets, were lost to the sands of time, their secrets buried beneath the rubble of ancient civilizations. For centuries, the knowledge contained within the tablets lay dormant, awaiting the day when it would once again be revealed to humanity. As we reflect upon the journey of the emerald tablets and the legacy of the ancient Maya, we are reminded of the fragility of human civilization and the impermanence of worldly treasures. Yet, even in the face of adversity and upheaval, the wisdom of the ancients endures, waiting to be rediscovered by those who seek enlightenment and understanding in the ever-changing passage of history. Maurice Doriel, the person who brought these teachings to the modern world, claimed that he received divine guidance to recover and return the ancient tablets to the Great Pyramid. Despite the details of his adventures being shrouded in mystery, he was able to successfully accomplish this monumental task. Before returning the tablets to their rightful place, the writer was granted the extraordinary privilege of translating and retaining a copy of the wisdom inscribed upon them. Many will inevitably greet these revelations with skepticism and disbelief. Yet, as the writer intimates, for those whose hearts are open and receptive, the light of wisdom contained within these tablets will resonate with their innermost being, illuminating the path to enlightenment and understanding. As we contemplate the implications of these revelations, let us remember that truth often resides beyond the confines of our preconceived notions and beliefs. The physical manifestation of the tablets is as remarkable as their spiritual significance. For they are said to have been fashioned through the alchemical transmutation of substances into a material that defies conventional understanding. Imperishable and impervious to the ravages of time and nature, these tablets possess a stability that transcends the material laws governing the world. Their atomic and cellular structure remains immutable, resistant to any external influence or alteration, their form and essence preserved for eternity. Upon their luminous green surfaces are etched characters in the ancient Atlantean language, symbols imbued with a potency that transcends mere written words. 
In the presence of an attuned mind, these characters respond to thought waves, invoking a resonance that unlocks the associated mental vibrations within the consciousness of the reader. Bound together by hoops of a golden-colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material, the tablets exude an aura of mystical potency and sacred significance. Yet, it is not their physical appearance that holds the true essence of their wisdom, but rather the profound truths inscribed upon their surfaces. Throughout the passage of human history, the quest to understand the laws governing existence has been ceaseless. Yet, the elusive truths that lie beyond the reach of material perception have remained tantalizingly just beyond the grasp of mortal vision. However, hidden behind the veil that separates the mundane from the transcendent, the essence of truth has awaited those who possess the courage to turn inward rather than outward in their search for enlightenment. For those who dare to expand their awareness and delve into the recesses of their own consciousness, the secrets of the higher planes stand ready to be assimilated. It is through inner contemplation and introspection that the veils of illusion are lifted, revealing the eternal verities that underpin the fabric of existence. The sage understands that those who speak often do not truly comprehend, while those who possess true wisdom are usually silent. The highest truths elude verbal description, existing instead as ineffable entities that surpass the limitations of language and symbols. Symbols, whether verbal or visual, serve as keys that unlock doors leading to more profound truths. Yet, at times, the magnitude of the key may obscure the truths that lie beyond, rendering them invisible to the untrained eye. It is only by recognizing that all symbols are manifestations of a greater law and reality that one can begin to develop the vision necessary to penetrate the veil of illusion. Throughout the vast expanse of existence, from the smallest atom to the grandest celestial body, all things are governed by immutable laws. Just as the movements of the planets adhere to precise laws of motion, so too do the material expressions of humanity abide by laws of equal constancy and reliability. The cosmic dance of celestial bodies through the heavens is a testament to the order and harmony that pervades the universe. Yet, this order extends beyond the reaches of outer space to encompass the intricacies of human existence. The laws that govern the cosmos are mirrored in the rhythms of human life, guiding the ebb and flow of our experiences with unfailing precision. In recognizing the universality of these laws, we come to understand that there is an inherent interconnectedness between all aspects of existence. Just as the movements of the stars are governed by celestial mechanics, so too are the affairs of humanity subject to the laws of cause and effect, balance and harmony. At the heart of this cosmic law lies the understanding that the intellect serves as the connecting link between the material and spiritual realms. As a facet of human consciousness, the mind possesses qualities that transcend the confines of the physical world, allowing it to bridge the gap between the tangible and intangible aspects of existence. In the quest for higher knowledge, aspirants are called upon to cultivate and strengthen the intellectual aspect of their nature. By honing the powers of the mind and fortifying the will, individuals can harness their innermost faculties and focus their energies on the desired planes of existence. Through disciplined concentration and unwavering determination, seekers of truth can unlock the latent potential within themselves, attaining a deeper understanding of the cosmic laws that govern both the material and spiritual dimensions of reality. In aligning their will with the higher principles of existence, they can ascend to new heights of consciousness and unlock the mysteries of the universe. As seekers progress along their spiritual journey, they ascend to higher levels of consciousness, transcending the limitations of the material plane. The ultimate goal of this quest is the attainment of complete oneness with the universal consciousness, where the boundaries of individuality dissolve and unity with the divine is achieved. While the material plane serves as the initial stepping stone in this grand odyssey, it is but the first stage of a greater journey toward spiritual enlightenment. As individuals awaken to the deeper truths of existence, they strive to align themselves with the higher principles of love, compassion, and unity realizing their interconnectedness with all beings and the cosmos. In essence, the quest for light, life, and love is a journey of self-discovery and transformation, leading individuals toward the realization of their highest potential. As they progress along this path, they move ever closer to the fulfillment of their spiritual destiny, where unity with the universal consciousness becomes the ultimate goal and the culmination of their spiritual journey. Within the pages that follow, a journey into the hidden depths of the emerald tablets awaits.
As we delve into the enigmatic words of Thoth, we will uncover layers of meaning that lie concealed beneath the surface. Indeed, within the cryptic language of the tablets, there exist numerous hidden and esoteric truths awaiting discovery. Through careful interpretation and analysis, we will shine the light of knowledge upon the tablets, illuminating new pathways of thought and understanding. Yet, it is important to recognize that the true wisdom contained within these ancient texts can only be unlocked by the awakening of one's own consciousness. Thoth and the Great Pyramid across the expanse of human history, diverse cultures from every corner of the globe have preserved teachings that echo the enigmatic wisdom encapsulated within the emerald tablets of Thoth. Yet, despite the widespread recognition of their significance, these ancient relics remain shrouded in a veil of mystery, intrigue, and controversy. The tablets are believed to have originated during Zep Tepi, a golden age when gods walked the earth and ancient civilizations flourished. This was long before the cataclysmic events described in biblical accounts of the Great Flood. Among the wealth of profound insights contained within the emerald tablets, one passage stands out as particularly remarkable, addressing a question that has intrigued scholars and seekers for millennia who built the Great Pyramid? Despite its significance, this passage has often been overlooked, but now we have the opportunity to delve into its depths and glean its true meaning. Khufu, the ancient Egyptian pharaoh associated with the construction of the Great Pyramid, remains a figure shrouded in mystery and controversy. Throughout history, he has been remembered mainly as a tyrannical ruler, with accounts from notable historians such as Herodotus and Diodorus Siculus painting a picture of oppression and disdain among his subjects. According to these accounts, Khufu was feared and despised by his people for his authoritarian rule. However, beyond these depictions, our understanding of Khufu remains remarkably limited, with historians still engaged in debates over the length and scope of his reign. The reign of Khufu remains a subject of debate among historians and scholars. While the Turin king list records his reign as lasting 23 years, other sources offer conflicting accounts, with Manetho suggesting a reign of 65 years and Herodotus proposing 50 years. Amidst this uncertainty, one aspect of Khufu's rule stands out, his commitment to cultural preservation. Nowhere is this more apparent than the Great Pyramid. The inventory steel, unearthed in 1857, provides a fascinating glimpse into Khufu's interactions with the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. In this inscription, Khufu himself speaks of his efforts to clear away the sands surrounding these ancient monuments and his subsequent discoveries. These revelations raise intriguing questions about Khufu's role in the construction of the Great Pyramid. The inscription suggests that Khufu may have been involved in uncovering and perhaps even restoring the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx rather than directly overseeing their construction. Furthermore, while Khufu's name is indeed mentioned in an inscription found near the entrance to the Great Pyramid, it is worth noting that the spelling is inconsistent with other contemporary inscriptions. This discrepancy raises doubts about the authenticity and timing of the inscription, suggesting that it may have been added long after the completion of the pyramid. So, if Khufu did not build it, who did? The question of who made the Great Pyramid continues to elude definitive answers, giving rise to a plethora of theories and speculations throughout history. Among these, Ancient Arabian writers put forth a compelling notion that attributes the construction to the Egyptian god Thoth. Known by various names in different cultures, such as Hermes in Greece and Mercury in Rome, Thoth is depicted as a figure of immense wisdom and power, revered for his role as a mediator between the divine and mortal realms. Over the centuries, Thoth has occupied a position of profound reverence within the sacred temples of ancient Egypt. Foremost among these centers of worship was Hermopolis where Thoth held sway as the principal deity, revered for his wisdom and divine insight. Yet, his influence extended far beyond the confines of Hermopolis, reaching every corner of the land of Egypt. In temples and shrines dedicated to Thoth, communities gathered to pay homage to the god of wisdom, seeking his counsel and spiritual guidance in matters of great importance. These sacred spaces served as focal points for communal worship and spiritual contemplation, offering solace and enlightenment to all who sought Thoth's divine intercession. However, Thoth's temples were more than mere places of worship, they were also centers of learning and knowledge, where priests and scribes meticulously preserved the wisdom of the ages for future generations. Through the rituals and ceremonies conducted within these hallowed halls, devotees sought to commune with Thoth and gain insight into the mysteries of existence. 
Thoth, revered as a creator god in ancient Egypt, was renowned for his multifaceted domain over various aspects of life and the cosmos. As the god of the moon, he held sway over the celestial realms, guiding the cycles of time and illuminating the night sky with his radiant presence. In addition to his lunar domain, Thoth was venerated as the patron of reckoning, wisdom, and writing, embodying the essence of intellect and divine insight. It was believed that Thoth was the creator of hieroglyphs, bestowing upon humanity the gift of language and the means to record knowledge and wisdom for posterity. Furthermore, Thoth occupied pivotal roles as a scribe, interpreter, and advisor of the gods, serving as a conduit between the mortal and divine realms. His unparalleled skill in writing and interpretation made him indispensable to the gods, as he meticulously recorded their deeds and imparted his wisdom to those who sought his counsel. Through his diverse attributes and divine prerogatives, Thoth emerged as a central figure in the Egyptian pantheon, revered for his role in shaping the course of human civilization and illuminating the path to spiritual enlightenment. Thoth's divine presence permeated the sacred landscape of ancient Egypt, making him one of the most revered and enduring gods in the pantheon. From the earliest traces of civilization in the pre-dynastic period, around 6000 BC, to the twilight of the 1st century BC and the fall of the Persian Empire, Thoth's worship endured across millennia, spanning one of the most prolonged periods of continuous veneration for any Egyptian deity. One testament to Thoth's enduring legacy is the naming of pharaohs, with names like Thutmose, bearing the unmistakable imprint of his divine patronage. The name, Thutmose, meaning, born of Thoth, served as a powerful reminder of the pharaoh's divine lineage and the enduring bond between mortal rulers and the gods. As we delve into the ancient texts and hermetic documents that speak of Thoth, questions inevitably arise regarding the true nature of this enigmatic deity. Can these accounts be substantiated as accurate historical records, or do they belong more to the realm of myth and legend? What significance should be attributed to the contents of the emerald tablets and the intricate scientific codes inscribed upon them? And perhaps most intriguingly, is there a tangible connection between the civilization of the pyramid builders and the divine figure of Thoth? In our examination of the ancient texts and hermetic documents, a compelling proposition emerges, that these mysterious documents hold an accurate account of historical events and that Thoth himself was the actual builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza. By embracing the notion that the legendary tale of Thoth recounts actual historical events, we are compelled to view history through an entirely new lens. No longer mere myth or legend, the story of Thoth takes on a newfound significance as a testament to the profound influence of divine beings on the course of human history. If this hypothesis holds true, it suggests a paradigm shift in our understanding of history and the role of divine intervention in shaping the course of human civilization. The inscription on the first tablet offers a profound revelation, attributing the construction of the Great Pyramid directly to Thoth himself. It reads, I built the Great Pyramid, patterned after the Pyramid of Earth Force, burning eternally so that it, too, might remain through the ages. And it is my knowledge of, magic science, so that it might be here when I return from Amenti. While I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul will roam free, incarnating amongst men in this form or another. This statement, attributed to Thoth, provides a direct link between the legendary figure and the construction of one of the most iconic monuments in human history. It suggests that the Great Pyramid was not merely a feat of mortal engineering but a manifestation of divine will and wisdom, imbued with the secrets of magic science that Thoth intended to preserve for future generations. Furthermore, the inscription hints at Thoth's transcendent nature, suggesting that while his physical form may rest in the halls of Amenti, his soul continues to roam free, incarnating amongst humanity in various forms. This concept challenges conventional notions of mortality and suggests a deeper connection between Thoth and the destiny of humankind. So, could Thoth truly be the builder of the Great Pyramid? According to one researcher, there may be clues hiding in plain sight. While examining an aerial bird's eye view map of Giza, researcher Armando May made a startling observation. The three pyramids bore a striking resemblance to a trio of enormous stylus wedges embedded in the ground. Through meticulous tracking of specific points on the pyramids, May unveiled geometric patterns that revealed a startling possibility. They resembled cuneiform symbols. Could these geometric patterns be a hidden language, a message from the ancient past left for us to decipher? Cuneiform, 
characterized by its logo syllabic script composed of wedge-shaped characters, represents a vital element of the ancient Sumerian language. Interestingly, current scientific understanding maintains that the Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations never intersected during their respective historical periods. However, the observation that the geometric patterns on the pyramids of Giza resemble cuneiform symbols raises intriguing questions about the potential connections between these ancient cultures. May undertook a remarkable comparison, juxtaposing technical aspects of Sumerian writing with symbols derived from the graphic shapes extracted from the structures of Giza. Through this meticulous analysis, May uncovered a revelation. The decoded message unequivocally attributes the design of Giza to Thoth mirroring the assertions made in the emerald tablets. The decoded message, Tehu the Great Wise, suggested that Tehu likely denoted a proper noun, potentially the designer of the Giza project. Remarkably, parallels emerged between Tehu and references to Thoth in ancient Egyptian texts. For example, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, as translated by Wallace Budge and Boris de Rachwiltz, identifies Thoth as Tehu. Furthermore, the Egyptian word for the ibis, tek, bears a striking resemblance to tehu. This association is significant, as the ibis symbolizes Thoth, and the word tek is linked to the moon as the measurer of time, a role attributed to Thoth. Archaeological investigations into the origins of the cuneiform script date its inception to around 3500 BC. Yet, what stands out as particularly intriguing is the remarkable complexity of Sumerian writing at its emergence. In fact, the structure of Sumerian writing was exceptionally intricate, comprising over a thousand phonetic symbols. As time progressed, Sumerian writing underwent a process of rationalization, resulting in a reduction in the number of symbols from over a thousand to mere hundreds. This evolution suggests that Sumerian writing emerged in a remarkably complete form from its inception, unlike many other forms of writing that exhibit significant signs of development and refinement over time. The relative stability and lack of substantial evolution in Sumerian writing raise intriguing questions about the origins and development of this complex script. What factors contributed to its initial complexity, and why did it undergo minimal change over time? A tantalizing hypothesis emerges when considering Sumerian cuneiform. Was it the language of the ancient gods? Such a notion raises profound questions about the origins of human civilization and the potential influence of divine beings on early cultures. Could it be postulated that the pre-dynastic cultures of the Middle East and Egypt were shaped by interactions with an ancient and enigmatic civilization during the pre-dynastic age? This intriguing possibility challenges conventional narratives of human history and invites us to reconsider the role of divine intervention in shaping the course of human civilization. Historians traditionally maintain that Egypt remained isolated from external influences until the first intermediate period, around 2000 BC asserting a lack of interaction with the broader world. However, the possibility of such interactions may have occurred long before the pre-dynastic age, prompting a re-evaluation of ancient cultural connections. A compelling aspect to consider is the striking similarity between the Egyptian pantheon and that of the Sumerians. The Egyptian gods share notable parallels with the Sumerian deities, reminiscent of the Nedaru of Egypt and the religious traditions of Eastern civilizations. The historical narratives of the Sumerian gods bear a resemblance to the mythology surrounding the Egyptian Nedaru, suggesting a deeper connection between these ancient cultures. Evidence abounds of symbols left behind by an enigmatic civilization that spans across the globe. Examples include the winged sun, the caduceus, a winged staff entwined by two serpents, and the omega sign, among others. These symbols, recurring in diverse cultures worldwide, suggest a shared legacy and hint at the existence of a mysterious civilization with far-reaching influence. Moreover, the similarities in names and functions of ancient gods across different cultures are striking. Despite being separated by vast distances and seemingly isolated from one another, these cultures display remarkable parallels in their religious beliefs and practices. It is conceivable that this unknown civilization played a significant role in shaping both Sumerian and Egyptian cultures, serving as a common source from which they emerged in the distant past. Encoded within the ancient Sumerian cylinder seals are records of the gods and their elusive sanctuary, depicted as an underground realm. Described as a subterranean domain accessible through a concealed tunnel, its entrance lies obscured by sand and guarded by a creature known as Hawana. 
Hawana is described as possessing the fearsome teeth of a dragon and the majestic visage of a lion, embodying a formidable guardian of the god's hidden sanctuary. Remarkably, this ancient Sumerian text offers a strikingly accurate description of the lion-headed sphinx at Giza, suggesting a potential link between Sumerian and Egyptian cultures that predates conventional timelines. Moreover, another translated story from ancient Sumerian cuneiform texts recounts a ruler seeking refuge within the confines of the Great Pyramid during a conflict. This narrative raises puzzling questions, as it seems to contradict the prevailing notion of isolated civilizations and suggests unexpected interactions between ancient peoples. If significant cultural and religious connections exist between the Egyptian and Sumerian civilizations, it raises compelling speculation regarding their shared origins. Could it be that both cultures were influenced by a lost civilization, potentially the same enigmatic civilization to which Thoth, the Atlantean, belonged? This hypothesis suggests a profound interconnectedness between ancient civilizations and hints at the existence of a lost civilization that served as a common source for the cultural and religious traditions of Egypt and Sumer. If true, it would fundamentally reshape our understanding of human history, revealing a legacy of ancient wisdom and knowledge passed down through the ages. Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 1. I, Thoth, the Atlantean, Master of Mysteries, Keeper of Records, Mighty King, Magician, Living from Generation to Generation. Here, Thoth is introducing himself, claiming titles and attributes that establish his authority and significance. He identifies himself as an Atlantean, linking him to the island civilization of Atlantis. He also asserts his mastery of mysteries, suggesting profound knowledge, and claims to be the keeper of records, indicating his role in preserving ancient wisdom. The mention of being a mighty king and magician adds to his aura of power and expertise. The phrase, living from generation to generation, implies his longevity or perhaps his existence beyond the confines of mortal life. Being about to pass into the halls of Amenti, I set down these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis for the guidance of those that are to come after. Here, Thoth announces his imminent transition or departure into the halls of Amenti. In various mythologies, Amenti is a realm associated with the afterlife or the underworld, often depicted as a place of judgment or transition for souls. His passage into the halls of Amenti could symbolize his departure from the physical world or his transition into a higher state of existence. Before his departure, Thoth states his intention to leave behind records or teachings for the benefit of future generations. These records contain the mighty wisdom of Atlantis, suggesting that Atlantis possessed advanced knowledge and insights that Thoth wishes to preserve and pass on. By leaving these records, Thoth aims to provide guidance and enlightenment to those who come after him, ensuring that the wisdom of Atlantis endures. In the great city of Kior on the island of Undal in a time far past, I began this incarnation. Thoth establishes that he began his current existence in the city of Kior, located on the island of Undal within Atlantis, during a distant era. This provides context for his identity and the setting of the events he describes. Not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti where the river of life flows eternally onward. This contrasts the longevity and mode of existence of the Atlanteans with those of contemporary humans. Unlike the people of Thoth's current time, referred to as little men, who experience a single lifetime followed by death, the Atlanteans had a different cycle of existence. They continuously renewed their lives, from eon to eon, in the halls of Amenti, a realm where the river of life flows eternally. This suggests that the Atlanteans had access to a process of reincarnation or rejuvenation that allowed them to perpetuate their existence across vast periods. A hundred times ten have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power renewed. Thoth reflects on his own experiences of undergoing cycles of descent into darkness and ascent into light. Each time he undergoes this journey, his strength and power are renewed. This could symbolize a personal journey of spiritual growth and enlightenment, where Thoth repeatedly confronts challenges and emerges stronger and wiser from the experience. Now, for a time, I descend, and the men of Chem shall know me no more, but in a time yet unborn will I rise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Thoth announces his departure, 
suggesting that he is withdrawing from his current presence or influence among the people of Kem. This indicates a temporary absence or retreat from the public eye. However, emphasizes his potential for remarkable power and authority upon his resurgence. He further suggests that upon his return, he will judge those who have remained in his absence. Then beware, O men of Kem, if ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Thoth issues a warning to the people of Kem, cautioning them against betraying his teachings or trust. He threatens consequences for those who cross him, suggesting a punishment that involves being cast down from positions of influence or power into a state of darkness or obscurity. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north or the men of the south lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require of thee that which ye guard. Thoth instructs the people of Kem to safeguard his teachings and not to reveal them to others, specifically mentioning the men of the north and the men of the south. This indicates that Thoth's wisdom is not to be shared indiscriminately and that there are consequences for revealing it to unauthorized individuals. He further emphasizes the importance of remembering and obeying his instructions, reinforcing the idea that he will return and hold those who have followed his teachings accountable for their actions. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. Thoth asserts his transcendence beyond time and death suggesting that his return is inevitable and that he will judge individuals based on how faithfully they have upheld his teachings and trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me. Thoth begins by emphasizing the greatness of his people during ancient times, contrasting it with the limitations or lack of understanding of the people he currently interacts with. This suggests a sense of superiority or nostalgia for a bygone era of greatness. Knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to Earth's youth. Thoth highlights the wisdom possessed by his people, which involved seeking profound knowledge that was inherent to the early days of Earth's existence. This suggests that the ancient civilization of Thoth's people was deeply connected to the primordial origins of the planet and sought to understand the fundamental truths of existence. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong were we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. Thoth describes his people as wise, drawing upon the knowledge and wisdom of beings known as the children of light who lived among them. This suggests a spiritual or metaphysical dimension to their wisdom, indicating an association with higher realms of consciousness or enlightenment. Thoth further asserts that his people were strong, possessing power derived from an eternal source symbolized as the eternal fire. This power could represent spiritual, intellectual, or perhaps even physical strength and vitality, and of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Thotmi, keeper of the great temple. Thoth speaks with reverence about his father, Thotmi, whom he describes as the greatest among the people of his civilization. Thotmi held a significant role as the keeper of a great temple, serving as a crucial link between the divine beings and the human races inhabiting the land. Mouthpiece after the three, of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the kings with the voice that must be obeyed. Thotmi served as a mouthpiece for a divine entity known as the dweller of Unal, acting as an intermediary between this higher power and the earthly kings. His words carried authority and were to be obeyed without question, indicating his immense influence and importance in their society. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom until it burst into a consuming flame. Thoth recounts his journey from childhood to adulthood in the ancient civilization, during which he was educated by his father in the profound mysteries of their culture. Over time, Thoth's quest for wisdom intensified until it became like a burning fire within him, consuming his consciousness and driving him forward in his pursuit of knowledge. Not desired I but the attainment of wisdom. Thoth emphasizes his singular focus and desire for wisdom above all else. This highlights his dedication and commitment to acquiring knowledge and understanding, suggesting that he was willing to devote his life to this pursuit. Until on a great day, the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Thoth describes a pivotal moment when he received a command from the dweller of the temple, a divine entity, to appear before it. 
This indicates a significant event in Thoth's life, suggesting that he was chosen for a particular purpose or mission. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Thoth reflects on the rarity and perilous nature of encountering the dweller of the temple. The dweller's presence is described as awe-inspiring and potentially deadly for those who are not spiritually prepared to witness it. This implies that the children of light, beings of higher spiritual realms, possess a level of existence beyond that of ordinary humans, and encountering them in their proper form can be overwhelming or even fatal to mortals. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet unborn in the womb of time. Thoth reveals that he was selected from among ordinary humans by the dweller, a divine being to be taught wisdom for the fulfillment of purposes that were yet to come into existence. This suggests that Thoth's education and enlightenment were part of a larger cosmic plan or destiny. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I, too, approached the light emitted from the great fire. Thoth spent countless ages in the temple, continuously deepening his knowledge and understanding. He describes approaching the light emitted from a great fire, symbolizing his gradual enlightenment and spiritual ascent. Taught me he, the path to Amenti, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. The dweller taught Thoth the path to Amenti, the underworld where a mighty king reigns. This suggests that Thoth gained access to hidden or esoteric knowledge, including the mysteries of the afterlife and the realms beyond. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Thoth humbly paid homage to the lords of life and death, symbolizing his reverence for the forces that govern existence. As a reward for his reverence, he received the key of life, which likely represents access to profound spiritual truths or the ability to transcend the cycle of life and death. Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. Thoth attained liberation from the constraints of mortal existence, suggesting that he achieved a state of spiritual freedom or enlightenment that allowed him to transcend the cycle of reincarnation and gain eternal life. Far to the stars, I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Thoth describes transcending the limitations of space and time, indicating a profound spiritual journey beyond the confines of physical reality. Then, having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men, and there, I found greater mysteries and was glad. Having attained wisdom through his spiritual journey, Thoth gained insight into the more profound mysteries of human existence. This suggests that his enlightenment enabled him to perceive truths about the nature of humanity and the universe that were previously inaccessible. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Thoth concludes by emphasizing the importance of seeking truth as a means to achieve spiritual fulfillment and inner peace. This suggests that his quest for wisdom and enlightenment was driven by a profound desire to understand the nature of reality and find inner harmony. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Thoth describes his enduring existence across time, during which he observed the mortality of those around him as they experienced death and subsequently reincarnated or returned to life. This suggests that Thoth himself has lived through many lifetimes, witnessing the cyclical nature of existence. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. Thoth laments the gradual decline of consciousness or spiritual awareness within the kingdoms of Atlantis. He observes that waves of consciousness, which were once connected or aligned with his own, began to fade away from Atlantis. These waves of consciousness were replaced by beings whom Thoth describes as spawn of a lower star, implying a descent into a state of spiritual degradation or lesser awareness. In obedience to the law, the word of the Master grew into flower. This suggests that the teachings or commands of a higher authority or Master blossomed or came into fruition among the Atlanteans, indicating a period of spiritual growth or enlightenment. Downward into darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans, until at last in his wrath arose from his Agwanti, the dweller, speaking the word, calling the power. Thoth describes a descent into darkness among the Atlanteans as their thoughts and actions turned away from the path of light. In response to this, 
the dweller emerged in a state of detachment or transcendence, referred to as Agwanti, speaking a powerful word or command that called upon divine power or intervention. This suggests that the dweller reacted with anger or indignation at the Atlanteans' deviation from the spiritual path. Deep in Earth's heart, the sons of Amenti heard, and hearing, directed the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the logos, until that great fire changed its direction. Thoth explains that the sons of Amenti, beings associated with the underworld or hidden realms, heard the dweller's command deep within the Earth. They responded by using their knowledge and the power of the Logos, the divine creative principle or word, to alter the direction of a great eternal fire. This suggests a significant cosmic or metaphysical event, symbolizing a shift in the spiritual forces at play. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing Earth's balance until only the Temple of Light was left standing on the great mountain of Undal. Thoth recounts a massive deluge that engulfed the world, resulting in widespread flooding and the sinking of landmasses. This catastrophic event altered the balance of the earth, suggesting significant geological and environmental upheaval. Amidst the devastation, Thoth describes how only the Temple of Light remained standing on a great mountain on the island of Undal, which continued to rise above the floodwaters. This temple, associated with enlightenment or spiritual truth, stands as a solitary beacon amidst the destruction. Some there were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Despite the widespread destruction caused by the flooding, Thoth mentions that some individuals managed to survive, saved from the rushing waters. This implies that a few fortunate souls were able to find refuge or escape the devastation, possibly by seeking shelter in elevated areas or through other means of survival. Called to me then the Master, saying, Gather ye together my people. Thoth describes being summoned by a figure of authority, referred to as the Master, who instructs him to gather his people. This suggests that Thoth is being given a directive or command to assemble a group of individuals for a specific purpose. Take them by the arts ye have learned of far across the waters until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. The Master advises Thoth to use the skills and knowledge he has acquired, particularly those learned from distant lands or cultures across the waters. This implies that Thoth possesses expertise or abilities that will be valuable for the journey ahead. Thoth is instructed to lead his people to a new land inhabited by primitive people described as hairy barbarians, who live in caves in the desert. This characterization suggests that these people are uncivilized or primitive compared to Thoth's own culture. Follow there the plan that ye know of. The master advises Thoth to follow a specific plan or strategy that he is familiar with. This indicates that Thoth has been entrusted with knowledge or guidance regarding how to interact with and navigate the challenges of the new land and its inhabitants. Gathered I then my people and entered the great ship of the Master. Thoth explains that he gathered his people and boarded a magnificent ship provided by the Master. This ship is likely a vessel capable of traveling through air or space, given the subsequent description of rising upward. Upward we rose into the morning. Thoth describes their ascent into the sky as they depart from the earth. This indicates that their journey is not confined to terrestrial boundaries but involves traveling upward into the atmosphere or beyond. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly, over it rose the waters. Vanished from earth, until the time appointed, was the great temple. As they ascend, Thoth observes the temple below them, now shrouded in darkness. Suddenly, Thoth witnesses the temple being submerged by rising waters. This suggests a continuation or aftermath of the catastrophic flooding described earlier. Thoth concludes by noting that the temple disappears from view as it becomes completely submerged by the waters. This disappearance is temporary, as Thoth implies that the temple will reappear at a future designated time or according to a predetermined schedule. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning, until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kem. Thoth describes the rapid journey of his people toward the sunrise until they reach the land of the children of Kem, likely ancient Egypt, situated to the east. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Upon their arrival, Thoth's people are met with hostility from the inhabitants of Kem, who are armed and intent on attacking and destroying them. Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, 
striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. In response to the aggression, Thoth uses his staff to unleash a powerful force, possibly magical in nature, that immobilizes the attackers, likening them to fragments of stone. This suggests that Thoth possesses advanced knowledge and abilities beyond conventional weaponry. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Thoth, having subdued the attackers, addresses them calmly and peacefully, informing them of the power and significance of Atlantis and asserting that they are emissaries of the sun. This implies a diplomatic approach aimed at both asserting authority and fostering understanding. Cowed I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they groveled when I released them. Thoth's demonstration of his magical abilities intimidates and subdues the attackers, causing them to grovel at his feet in submission. This further establishes Thoth's superiority and control over the situation. Long dwelt we in the land of Kem, long and yet long again. Until obeying the commands of the Master, who while sleeping yet lives eternally. Thoth describes an extended period spent residing in the land of Kem, suggesting that he and his people remained there for a considerable duration. During their stay in Kem, Thoth receives commands from a master figure. This master is described as eternally living, even while sleeping, indicating a state of perpetual existence and consciousness beyond conventional understanding. I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions so that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children. In response to the commands of the master, Thoth decides to send the sons of Atlantis, his people, in various directions. This implies a deliberate dispersal of his followers, sending them out to different regions or lands. Thoth's decision to send out the sons of Atlantis is motivated by the desire to spread wisdom anew. By dispersing his people, Thoth hopes to facilitate the resurgence of wisdom among the future generations of humanity. Long time dwelt I in the land of Kem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Kem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. Thoth indicates that he spent a significant amount of time residing in Kem, during which he performed remarkable feats and accomplishments. These achievements were made possible by the wisdom he possessed. Thoth's presence and influence in Kem facilitated the growth and development of knowledge among the inhabitants of the land. His wisdom acted as nourishment, metaphorically depicted as rains, which helped the people of Kem ascend to greater heights of understanding and enlightenment. Blasted I then a path to Amenti so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Thoth describes an action he took to ensure the preservation of his powers and wisdom. He created a pathway to Amenti, the underworld or hidden realms, which allowed him to maintain his abilities and knowledge across ages. This enabled him to continue serving as a source of enlightenment and guidance, akin to a son of Atlantis, and to safeguard the wisdom and records accumulated over time. Great grew the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them, growing slowly upwards in soul force. Thoth acknowledges the progress and advancement of the people of Kem who have achieved greatness and expanded their territory by conquering neighboring populations. He notes that their growth is not just in material power but also in spiritual strength, described as soul force, indicating an elevation of consciousness and spiritual development. Now, for a time, I go from among them into the dark halls of Amenti, deep in the halls of the earth before the lords of the powers, I come face to face once again with the dweller. Thoth announces his departure from among the people of Kem, indicating that he will retreat into the depths of Amenti. This suggests a temporary withdrawal from his earthly presence into the hidden realms beneath the earth's surface. Thoth reveals that his purpose for venturing into Amenti is to appear before the lords of the powers, presumably divine beings or entities, and to confront the dweller once more. This indicates a significant spiritual or metaphysical encounter involving judgment, guidance, or some form of reckoning with higher powers. Raised eye high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. Thoth describes the creation of a grand entrance or gateway that serves as a passage leading down to Amenti, the realm of the underworld or hidden dimensions. Few there would be with courage to dare it. Few pass the portal to dark Amenti. Thoth acknowledges that only a few individuals possess the courage to venture through this gateway into the depths of Amenti. 
This suggests that the journey to the underworld is fraught with challenges and dangers, deterring many from attempting it. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes Earth's force, gravity. Thoth explains that he constructed a mighty pyramid over the entrance to the gateway, utilizing a power that transcends the force of gravity. This implies that the pyramid serves as a symbolic and functional structure, harnessing metaphysical energies to facilitate access to Amenti. Deep and yet deeper placed I a force house or chamber, from it carved I a circular passage reaching almost to the great summit. Thoth describes placing a chamber deep within the pyramid, extending downwards from the entrance passage and reaching nearly to the summit of the pyramid. This chamber likely serves as a focal point for the concentration and manipulation of energies associated with the gateway to Amenti. There in the apex, said I the crystal, sending the ray into the time space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. At the apex of the pyramid, Thoth places a crystal that emits a ray into the time space, a dimension beyond conventional time and space. This ray draws force from the ether, the subtle and intangible medium believed to permeate the universe, concentrating it upon the gateway to Amenti. This setup likely enhances the metaphysical properties of the gateway, facilitating passage into the hidden realms. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amenti. Thoth reveals that he constructed additional chambers that appear empty or unused but actually contain the means to access Amenti. These chambers hold the keys, both literal and metaphorical, to unlocking the mysteries of the hidden realms. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Thoth sets a requirement for those who wish to explore the dark realms. They must demonstrate courage and undergo purification through an extended period of fasting. This purification process suggests a spiritual preparation necessary for facing the challenges of the underworld. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber. Then to reveal I to him the great mysteries. Thoth instructs those seeking access to Amenti to lie in the stone sarcophagus within his chamber. This act likely symbolizes a temporary surrender or submission to the journey ahead, as well as a connection to the realm of death and rebirth. Thoth promises to reveal to the seeker the great mysteries of existence once they have undergone the purification process and lain in the sarcophagus. This suggests that access to hidden knowledge and enlightenment awaits those who are prepared to embark on the journey to Amenti. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him. Even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him, I, Thoth, Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Thoth assures the seeker that he will meet them in the darkness of earth, implying a symbolic or metaphysical encounter within the depths of the hidden realms. As the Lord of Wisdom, Thoth promises to guide, support, and dwell with the seeker always, suggesting an ongoing relationship and partnership in the pursuit of knowledge and enlightenment. Built I the Great Pyramid, patterned after the Pyramid of Earth Force, burning eternally so that it, too, might remain through the ages. In it, I built my knowledge of magic science, so that it might be here when again I return from Amenti. Thoth reveals that he constructed the Great Pyramid, drawing inspiration from the natural energy structure of the earth. He ensured that the Great Pyramid would endure for ages, just as the natural pyramid of Earth's force persists. This implies that the Great Pyramid serves as a physical manifestation of enduring knowledge and wisdom. Within the Great Pyramid, Thoth embedded his extensive knowledge of magic science, the esoteric and mystical understanding of the universe. By storing this knowledge within the structure of the Great Pyramid, Thoth ensured that it would be preserved for future generations, accessible upon his return from Amenti, the hidden realms. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. Hermes, thrice born. Thoth reveals that while his physical body rests in the halls of Amenti, his soul will continue to roam freely and incarnate among humanity. This indicates a cyclical process of reincarnation with Thoth's soul assuming different forms and identities as it interacts with humanity. The reference to Hermes, thrice born, likely alludes to Thoth's symbolic association with Hermes Trismegistus, the legendary figure associated with wisdom, magic, and alchemy. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands so man might be lifted. 
Thoth declares himself as the earthly representative of the Dweller, tasked with carrying out its commands for the betterment of humanity. His mission is to assist in the spiritual elevation and enlightenment of mankind. Now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the Dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Thoth announces his departure from the earthly realm, returning to the halls of Amenti, where he resides between incarnations. Before departing, he leaves behind a portion of his wisdom for humanity to preserve and benefit from. Thoth imparts the commandment of the Dweller, urging humanity to continuously strive towards spiritual enlightenment and higher consciousness. This involves directing one's focus towards the light, symbolizing divine truth and wisdom. Surely in time, ye are one with the Master, surely by right, ye are one with the All. Thoth assures humanity that with time and spiritual growth, they will become united with the Divine Master and the entirety of existence. This emphasizes the interconnectedness and unity of all beings with the Divine Source. Now before me opens the portal. Go I down in the darkness of night. Thoth concludes by describing the opening of a portal before him, signaling his departure into the darkness of night, likely symbolizing his return to the hidden realms or the halls of Amenti. End of Tablet 1 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 2 Deep in the Earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti, far, neath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead, and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. In this passage, Thoth is describing the location and nature of the halls of Amenti. He explains that these halls are situated deep within the Earth's core, far beneath the sunken islands of Atlantis. The halls of Amenti are depicted as spaces where both the deceased and the living coexist, suggesting a realm that transcends ordinary concepts of life and death. Additionally, Thoth emphasizes that these halls are illuminated or imbued with the energy of the infinite all, implying a profound connection to universal consciousness or divine energy. Far in a past time, lost in the space-time, the children of light look down on the world. Thoth describes a distant past where the children of light, beings of higher consciousness or spiritual enlightenment, observed the world from a vantage point beyond ordinary human perception. This suggests a timeless perspective, transcending conventional notions of time and space. See the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. The children of light experience a state of bondage or limitation. This bondage is attributed to a force originating from beyond the earthly realm implying external influences shaping human existence. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. The children of light recognized that humanity could only achieve spiritual enlightenment or transcendence by breaking free from their bonds or limitations. This implies that liberation from earthly constraints is essential for humanity's ascent towards higher states of consciousness or spiritual realization. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of men as their own. In response to their understanding of humanity's plight, the children of light descended from their higher realm and manifested physical bodies, assuming the appearance and form of humans. This suggests an act of divine intervention or incarnation, with the purpose of directly engaging with and assisting humanity. The masters of everything said after their forming, We are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. Having taken on human semblance, the divine beings declare their nature and purpose. They acknowledge their origin from the cosmic elements, space dust, and their connection to the infinite all, the universal source of life and consciousness. Despite inhabiting human bodies, they remain distinct from ordinary humans, embodying divine attributes and serving as guides or mentors to humanity. Then for a dwelling place, far, neath the earth crust, blasted great spaces they by their power, spaces apart from the children of men. Thoth describes how the divine beings created dwelling places deep beneath the earth's crust, using their power to carve out large spaces that were separate from the habitations of ordinary humans. This suggests the establishment of secluded realms where the divine beings could reside undisturbed. Surrounded them by forces and power, shielded from harm they the halls of the dead. The divine beings surrounded these spaces with protective forces and energy, ensuring that they were shielded from harm. Specifically, 
they protected the halls of the dead, implying that these were spaces where the deceased could dwell safely and undisturbed. Side by side then, placed they other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above. In addition to the halls of the dead, the divine beings also created adjacent spaces filled with life and light, drawing energy from above. These spaces likely served as realms for the living, characterized by vitality and illumination. Built they then the halls of Amenti, that they might dwell eternally there, living with life to eternity's end. The divine beings constructed the halls of Amenti, which served as their eternal dwelling place. Here, they could live indefinitely, existing with life that extended to the end of eternity. This emphasizes the timeless nature of their existence within the halls of Amenti. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of light who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Thoth reveals that there were thirty-two divine beings, referred to as the children or sons of light, who descended among humanity. Their purpose was to liberate those bound by the forces of darkness originating from beyond the earthly realm. This further underscores their role as benefactors and guides for humanity's spiritual liberation. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Placed in the center, a ray of great potence, life-giving, light-giving, filling with power all who came near it. Thoth describes the presence of a radiant and vibrant flower within the halls of life. This flower is depicted as dynamic and powerful, symbolizing the force of life itself and its ability to dispel darkness. At the center of the flower, there is a potent ray of energy that emanates life and light. This ray serves as a source of power, bestowing vitality and illumination upon all those who come into its proximity. Placed they around it thrones, two and thirty, places for each of the children of light, placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with the life from the eternal light. Surrounding the central ray, there are thirty-two thrones, each intended for one of the divine beings known as the children of light. These thrones are strategically positioned to ensure that the celestial beings are enveloped in the radiant energy and life giving light emanating from the eternal source. There, time after time, placed they their first created bodies so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. The divine beings repeatedly place their initial physical bodies within the proximity of the central ray. This act was undertaken to imbue their physical forms with the essence of life and vitality, ensuring their sustenance and empowerment. One hundred years out of each thousand must the life giving light flame forth on their bodies. Quickening, awakening the spirit of life. Thoth reveals that periodically, the life giving light would blaze upon the bodies of the divine beings for one hundred years out of every thousand. This occurrence serves to rejuvenate and awaken the spirit of life within them, ensuring their continued vitality and connection to the eternal source of life. There in the circle from eon to eon sit the great masters, living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life, they lie sleeping, free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Thoth describes a timeless circle where the great masters reside, existing from one age to another. Their way of life transcends the understanding of ordinary humans and is characterized by profound wisdom and enlightenment. Within the halls of life, the great masters rest in a state of sleep. However, their souls are not confined to their own bodies but instead flow freely through the bodies of humans, suggesting a form of spiritual influence or guidance. Time after time, while their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men. Periodically, while their physical bodies remain dormant, the great masters manifest or incarnate into human bodies. This act of incarnation allows them to directly interact with humanity, offering teachings and guidance for spiritual growth. Teaching and guiding onward and upward, out of the darkness into the light. During their incarnations, the great masters fulfill their role as teachers and guides, leading humanity towards enlightenment and spiritual evolution. Their teachings aim to uplift individuals from darkness, symbolizing ignorance or spiritual stagnation, and show them toward the light of wisdom and understanding. There in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of man, living forever, Neath the cold fire of life, sit the children of light. Within the halls of life, the great masters reside, surrounded by their accumulated wisdom. This wisdom is not widely known or understood by humanity. Despite this, 
The children of light, as they are described, endure eternally within the realm of life, symbolized by the cold fire of life, suggesting a transcendent existence beyond mortal limitations. Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite they among finite. At certain times, the great masters awaken from their slumber within the halls of life and descend into the human realm. In doing so, they become beacons of light and wisdom among humanity, serving as infinite beings amidst the finite nature of mortal existence. He who by progress has grown from the darkness, lifted himself from the night into light, free is he made of the halls of Amenti, free of the flower of light and of life. Thoth speaks of individuals who have progressed spiritually, moving from a state of darkness and ignorance to one of enlightenment and understanding. Such individuals become liberated from the constraints of the halls of Amenti, as well as from the essence of the flower of light and life, symbolizing spiritual growth and vitality. Guided, he then, by wisdom and knowledge, passes from man to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Once liberated, these individuals are guided by wisdom and knowledge, transitioning from ordinary human existence to a state where they become masters of life. This suggests a profound transformation and elevation in consciousness, where one attains mastery over one's existence and spiritual journey. In this state of mastery, individuals are able to dwell among the enlightened masters, existing in unity with them. They are no longer bound by the darkness and limitations of ignorance but instead experience freedom and enlightenment. This implies a harmonious integration into the higher realms of existence, where one's consciousness is aligned with the divine principles of light and truth. Seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from the space-time above us, helping and guiding through infinite wisdom, the pathway through time of the children of men. Thoth describes seven lords who reside within the radiant flower, symbolizing their connection to higher dimensions or realms beyond ordinary human perception. These lords possess infinite wisdom and serve as guides, aiding humanity in navigating the passage of time and spiritual evolution. Mighty and strange, they, veiled with their power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. I, different, and yet one with the children of light. The lords are depicted as beings of great power and mystery, veiled in their divine authority. Despite their silent demeanor, they possess omniscient knowledge and have the ability to draw upon the life force that sustains all existence. While different from ordinary humans, they are also connected to them in some profound way. Thoth reaffirms that although the lords are distinct from ordinary humans, they are nevertheless unified with the children of light. This suggests a fundamental connection between the lords and enlightened beings, indicating their shared purpose and alignment with divine principles. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to lose when the light has been reached. Thoth describes the lords as custodians and watchers who oversee the force that keeps humanity bound or limited. They stand ready to release this bondage once individuals have attained enlightenment or reached a state of spiritual illumination. First and most mighty, sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the Infinite Nine, over the others from each cosmic cycle, weighing and watching the progress of men. The veiled presence is depicted as the foremost and most powerful among the lords. This entity is described as the Lord of Lords. It is associated with the concept of the Infinite Nine, suggesting a primacy and overarching authority over the other lords across cosmic cycles. The Veiled Presence and the other lords monitor and assess the progress of humanity. They observe and evaluate the advancement of individuals along their spiritual journey, discerning when they are ready to transcend their limitations and be liberated from bondage. Under he sit the lords of the cycles, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8, each with his mission, each with his power, guiding, directing the destiny of man. Thoth explains that beneath the veiled presence, there are the lords of the cycles, designated as three through to eight. Each of these lords has a specific mission and power, and collectively, they are responsible for guiding and directing the fate or destiny of humanity throughout different cycles of existence. There sit they, mighty and potent, free of all time and space. Not of this world they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they, of the children of men. 
The lords of the cycles are described as mighty and powerful beings who exist beyond the constraints of time and space. This suggests that they operate from a transcendent perspective, unaffected by the limitations of mortal existence. Despite their otherworldly nature, the lords of the cycles are connected to the earthly realm. They are depicted as elder brothers to humanity, implying a relationship of guidance and mentorship, although they exist on a higher plane of existence. Judging and weighing, they with their wisdom, watching the progress light among men. Thoth describes how the lords of the cycles assess and evaluate humanity's progress with their wisdom. They observe the advancement of enlightenment among humans, overseeing the unfolding of spiritual illumination and evolution among individuals. There before them was I led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Thoth describes being led before the lords by the dweller, a divine entity. He observes as the dweller merges with another powerful being, referred to as one from above, suggesting a significant spiritual union or alignment. Then from he came forth a voice saying, Great art thou, Thoth, among children of men. A voice emanates from the merged entity, addressing Thoth directly and acknowledging his greatness among humanity. This voice likely represents a higher spiritual authority, affirming Thoth's elevated status and significance. Free henceforth of the halls of Amenti, master of life among children of men. Thoth is declared free from the halls of Amenti, indicating his mastery over the realm of life and death among humanity. This liberation suggests a newfound level of autonomy and authority for Thoth. Taste not of death except as thou wilt. Drink thou of life to eternity's end. Thoth is granted the ability to control his experience of death, implying that he can choose when or if to transition from life to death. Additionally, he is encouraged to partake of eternal life, symbolizing his spiritual immortality and enduring vitality. Henceforth forever is life, thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Thoth is assured that life is now his indefinitely, emphasizing his eternal existence and the boundless opportunities before him. Similarly, Thoth is given authority over death, suggesting that he has the power to determine his own mortality. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth, free is a menti to the son of man. Thoth is granted the freedom to choose whether to remain in the halls of a menti or depart from them as he wishes. This freedom signifies his sovereignty and autonomy in his spiritual journey. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth, child of the light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all souls must labor, never be free from the pathway of light. Thoth is encouraged to embrace life in any form he desires, recognizing his divine nature as a child of light who has evolved among humanity. Further, Thoth is advised to choose his work or purpose wisely, emphasizing that all souls are obligated to engage in labor or service. This suggests that spiritual growth and enlightenment require active effort and dedication and that the pathway of light is a lifelong journey that individuals must continually pursue. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh but heightens the mountain, all of thy progress but lengthens the goal. Thoth has made progress on his spiritual journey but is reminded that there is still much more to accomplish. The mountain of light symbolizes the vastness and infinite nature of spiritual enlightenment, suggesting that there are always higher levels of understanding and awareness to attain. Thoth takes on the spiritual path that contributes to the overall ascent towards enlightenment yet simultaneously reveals the enormity of the task ahead. Each advancement serves to elevate the spiritual journey but also expands the scope of the ultimate goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom, ever before thee recedes the goal. Thoth is encouraged to continually seek infinite wisdom, implying that the pursuit of enlightenment is a perpetual endeavor. The goal of spiritual enlightenment always remains just beyond reach, constantly receding as individuals strive to attain it, suggesting that the journey itself is the ultimate reward. Free are ye made now of the halls of Amenti to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world, one in one purpose, working together, bringers of light to the children of men. Thoth is now liberated from the confines of the halls of Amenti, granting him the opportunity to collaborate with the lords of the world in their shared mission of bringing enlightenment to humanity. This suggests that Thoth has been entrusted with a significant role in spreading spiritual illumination and guidance to humanity, 
aligning his purpose with the higher spiritual forces. Then from his throne came one of the masters, taking my hand and leading me onward, through all the halls of the deep hidden land. Thoth describes a master leaving his throne and guiding him through the halls of Amenti. This suggests a significant encounter with a spiritual guide or mentor who is leading Thoth through hidden realms and sacred spaces. Led he me through the halls of Amenti, showing the mysteries that are known not to man. Through the dark passage, downward he led me into the hall where sits the dark death. Thoth is led through the mysterious and sacred halls of Amenti, where he is shown secrets and knowledge that are beyond the understanding of ordinary humans. This implies that Thoth is being initiated into profound spiritual truths and teachings. Thoth and his guide descend through a dark passage into a hall where death resides. This suggests an encounter with the concept or personification of death, representing a journey into the depths of mortality and transition. Vast as space lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness but yet filled with light. Thoth enters a vast hall that appears as expansive as space itself. Despite being surrounded by darkness, the hall is illuminated with light. This juxtaposition of darkness and light symbolizes the contrast between mortality and transcendence, suggesting that even in the depths of darkness, there is the presence of spiritual illumination and enlightenment. Before me arose a great throne of darkness, veiled on it seated a figure of night. Thoth describes a grand throne shrouded in darkness, upon which sits a figure representing the essence of night or darkness. This imagery evokes a sense of foreboding and mystery, suggesting the presence of a powerful entity associated with darkness. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with a darkness not of the night. The figure seated on the throne is described as darker than darkness itself, implying an intensity and depth of obscurity beyond ordinary perception. This emphasizes the profound nature of the darkness being encountered, suggesting it transcends the mere absence of light. Before it then paused the master, speaking the word that brings about life, saying, O, oh, master of darkness, guide of the way from life unto life, the master, confronting the figure of darkness, speaks a powerful word or incantation associated with the creation of life. This indicates the master's authority over life and death, and suggests that the figure of darkness holds a significant role in the transition between different states of existence. Before thee, I bring a son of the morning. Touch him not ever with the power of night. The master presents a son of the morning before the figure of darkness, implying a symbol of light or enlightenment. The master commands that the figure of darkness should never exert its influence over this son, emphasizing the need to protect and preserve the light against the encroachment of darkness. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Know him, and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the light. The master instructs the figure of darkness not to extinguish or diminish the light of the sun by drawing it into the realm of darkness. Instead, the master urges the figure to recognize the sun as a fellow being who has transcended darkness and embraced the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage, free let it flame through the darkness of night. Raised then the hand of the figure, forth came a flame that grew clear and bright. The master implores the figure of darkness to liberate the flame or essence of the sun from any constraints or limitations imposed by darkness. This suggests a desire to allow the light to shine freely and illuminate even the darkest realms. The figure of darkness extends its hand, and a bright flame emerges, gradually increasing in clarity and intensity. This action suggests the figure's ability to wield or manifest light despite its association with darkness. Rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness, unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me, flame after flame, from the veil of the night. The darkness surrounding the hall is swiftly dispelled, as if a curtain is rolled back, revealing the space within. This imagery symbolizes the illumination of the hall and the dispelling of obscurity, allowing clarity and visibility to emerge. In the illuminated hall, multiple flames begin to appear emerging one after another from the previously shrouded darkness. This suggests the emergence of light and life within the space, as well as the revelation of hidden truths or manifestations. Uncounted millions leapt they before me, some flaming forth as flowers of fire. Others there were that shed a dim radiance, glowing but faintly from out of the night. 
an immense number of flames emerge and dance before Thoth, resembling flowers made of fire. This imagery evokes a sense of abundance and vitality, suggesting the proliferation of light and life within the hall. Among the bright flames, there are others that emit a dimmer glow, appearing less intense but still emanating light. This indicates a diversity of manifestations within the hall, ranging from bright to faint illumination. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from a small spark of light. Each surrounded by its dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with the light that could never be quenched. Some of the flames quickly diminish and fade away, while others gradually grow and expand from small sparks into larger flames. This illustrates the transient nature of some manifestations of light, as well as the potential for growth and development. Despite being surrounded by darkness, each flame retains its own luminosity that cannot be extinguished. This underscores the resilience and permanence of the light within the hall, even in the presence of surrounding darkness. Coming and going like fireflies in springtime, filled they the space with light and with life. The flames move and flicker within the hall, resembling fireflies in springtime. Their movements fill the space with both light and vitality, contributing to the overall atmosphere of illumination and vibrancy. Then spoke a voice, mighty and solemn, saying, These are lights that are souls among men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living, through death into life. A powerful and solemn voice speaks, explaining that the flames Thoth witnessed are representations of human souls. These souls undergo a perpetual cycle of growth and decline, persisting eternally and experiencing a transformation from death to new life. When they have bloomed into flower, reach the zenith of growth in their life, swiftly then send I my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life. Once these souls have reached their peak of development or maturity, darkness swiftly envelops them, initiating a transformation into new forms of existence. This suggests a cyclical process of death and rebirth, wherein the soul transitions to new stages of life. Steadily upward throughout the ages, growing, expanding into yet greater flame, lighting the darkness with yet greater power, quenched yet unquenched by the veil of the night. The souls steadily progress upward through the ages, continuously growing and expanding into greater states of illumination and power. Despite being temporarily obscured by darkness, they remain unquenched and continue to radiate light, illuminating the darkness with increasing potency. So grows the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. Thoth's passage concludes by emphasizing the perpetual upward growth of the human soul. Even though it may be temporarily obscured or challenged by the darkness of night, the soul remains unquenched and continues to ascend toward greater enlightenment and spiritual evolution. I, death, come, and yet I remain not, for life eternal exists in the all, only an obstacle, I in the pathway, quick to be conquered by the infinite light. Thoth, speaking as death, acknowledges his temporary presence and impermanence in contrast to the eternal existence of life within the universe. He describes himself as merely an obstacle in the journey of life, one that can be swiftly overcome by the boundless illumination of the infinite light. Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward, flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Thoth calls upon the inner flame, representing the essence of life and consciousness, to awaken and overcome the darkness that obscures understanding and enlightenment. This metaphorical flame symbolizes the innate power within individuals to transcend obstacles and illuminate their path. Then in the midst of the flames in the darkness grew there one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding, ever brighter, until at last was nothing but light. Amidst the flames within the darkness, a singular flame emerges and intensifies, gradually dispelling the darkness until only pure light remains. This imagery illustrates the triumph of enlightenment over ignorance and darkness, symbolizing the process of spiritual awakening and illumination. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the Master. See your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the Lord of the night. Thoth's guide, representing the voice of spiritual wisdom and enlightenment, directs his attention to the soul's expansion and growth within the light. The guide emphasizes the soul's liberation from the influence of darkness, signifying the attainment of spiritual freedom and transcendence. Forward he led me through many great spaces filled with the mysteries of the children of light. 
mysteries that man may never yet know of until he, too, is a son of the light. Thoth's guide leads him forward through numerous vast spaces containing the profound mysteries of the enlightened beings known as the children of light. These mysteries are beyond the comprehension of ordinary humans and can only be fully understood when one attains enlightenment and becomes a beacon of light. Backward then, he led me into the light of the Hall of the Light. Knelt I then before the great masters, lords of all from the cycles above. After traversing through these mysterious spaces, Thoth's guide then leads him backward into the brilliance of the Hall of Light. This movement signifies a return to a state of clarity, understanding, and enlightenment. Thoth kneels in reverence before the great masters, who are the supreme authorities and overseers of all existence, transcending various cycles and dimensions. Spoke he then with words of great power saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenti. Choose thou thy work among the children of men. The masters address Thoth with words of immense authority and potency, informing him that he has been granted freedom from the halls of Amenti, the realm of spiritual knowledge and wisdom. Thoth is given the freedom to choose his purpose and role among humanity, indicating his responsibility and agency in guiding and serving others. Then spoke I, O, oh, great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward until they, too, are lights among men, freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine among men. Thoth expresses his desire to serve as a guide and teacher for humanity leading them toward enlightenment and liberation from the darkness of ignorance. He envisions a future where all individuals become beacons of light, radiating wisdom and illumination to uplift others. Spoke to me then the voice, Go, as you will. So be it decreed. Master are ye of your destiny, free to take or reject at will. In response to Thoth's request, the voice grants him permission to pursue his chosen path freely. Thoth is acknowledged as the master of his own destiny, endowed with the autonomy to accept or decline the responsibilities and opportunities presented to him. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom. Shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then, led me the dweller. Thoth is encouraged to seize the power and wisdom available to him, empowering him to fulfill his role as a guiding light among humanity. He is urged to embrace his potential to illuminate the path for others spreading enlightenment and knowledge to uplift and inspire those around him. Thoth describes being guided upwards by the dweller, likely indicating a spiritual ascent or elevation to a higher state of consciousness or enlightenment. Dwelt I again among children of men, teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Thoth recounts returning to live among humanity, where he shares his wisdom and teachings with others. He metaphorically describes himself as a son of the light, implying that he radiates enlightenment and serves as a source of inspiration and guidance for others. Now again, I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. After his time among humanity, Thoth indicates a return to a more introspective or spiritual journey, symbolized by descending or treading the path downward. This suggests a period of seeking enlightenment or more profound understanding perhaps within himself or through further spiritual exploration. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record, guide shall it be to the children of men. Thoth implores others to preserve his teachings and records, recognizing their value as guides for future generations of humanity. He emphasizes the importance of passing down wisdom and knowledge to continue guiding others on their paths toward enlightenment. End of Tablet 2 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean Tablet 3. I, Thoth, the Atlantean, give of my wisdom, give of my knowledge, give of my power. Thoth introduces himself and declares his intention to share his wisdom, knowledge, and power with humanity. This emphasizes his role as a teacher and guide, offering valuable insights and understanding to others. Freely I give to the children of men. Give that they, too, might have wisdom to shine through the world from the veil of the night. Thoth emphasizes that his offerings are given freely, without expectation of anything in return. This underscores his generosity and desire to uplift and empower humanity. Thoth's purpose in sharing his wisdom is to enable others to also possess the enlightenment necessary to illuminate the darkness of ignorance and confusion in the world.
He aims to empower individuals to transcend limitations and spread light and understanding. Wisdom is power, and power is wisdom, one with each other, perfecting the whole. Thoth emphasizes the interconnectedness and symbiotic relationship between wisdom and power. He suggests that true wisdom leads to empowerment and that power, when wielded wisely, enhances one's understanding and ability to affect positive change. Together, they contribute to the overall improvement and enlightenment of humanity. Be thou not proud, O man, in thy wisdom. Thoth advises against arrogance or pride in one's wisdom. This implies humility as an essential attitude in the pursuit and possession of knowledge and understanding. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. Thoth suggests engaging in conversation with both the ignorant and the wise. This encourages openness to learning from all sources, regardless of their level of knowledge or understanding. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. Here he emphasizes the importance of listening attentively and learning from those who possess knowledge, regardless of one's own level of understanding. This underscores the continuous nature of learning and the value of being receptive to new insights. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken for truth like the sunlight shines above all. Thoth urges against remaining silent in the face of falsehood or wrongdoing. He emphasizes the importance of speaking up for truth and righteousness, highlighting the transcendent nature of truth over falsehood. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Thoth emphasizes the significance of abiding by laws and regulations, suggesting that disobedience or transgression will result in consequences. This reflects the idea that adherence to laws ensures the freedom and well-being of society. Follow thine heart during thy lifetime. Thoth advises following one's heart or intuition throughout life. This implies trusting one's inner guidance and instincts in decision-making and actions. Do thou more than is commanded of thee. Here, Thoth encourages going above and beyond mere compliance with obligations or duties. This suggests a commitment to excellence and the pursuit of higher ideals or goals. When thou hast gained riches, follow thou thine heart, for all these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Here, we are advised that even if one has acquired material wealth or success, it is essential to prioritize following one's heart. He suggests that external achievements are meaningless if one's inner being, represented by the heart, is not fulfilled or content. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart. It is abhorred of the soul. Thoth emphasizes the importance of dedicating time to following one's heart. He implies that neglecting one's inner desires or passions is detrimental to the soul's well-being and is viewed negatively. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are lost cannot find a straight path. This suggests that those who are guided by their inner guidance or intuition will not stray from the right path. Conversely, those who are lost or disconnected from their inner selves struggle to find direction. If thou go among men, make for thyself, love, the beginning and end of the heart. Thoth advises that when interacting with others, one should cultivate love as the foundation and culmination of their interactions. Love should permeate one's thoughts, actions, and relationships with others. If one cometh unto thee for counsel, let him speak freely, that the thing for which he hath come to thee may be done. This encourages openness and receptivity when providing counsel to others. He suggests that allowing individuals to express themselves freely enables effective communication and facilitates the resolution of their issues or concerns. If he hesitates to open his heart to thee, it is because thou, the judge, doth the wrong. This implies that if someone hesitates to confide in or seek guidance from you, it may be due to your judgmental attitude or behavior. It suggests that creating a non-judgmental and supportive environment encourages others to open up and seek assistance. Repeat thou not extravagant speech, neither listen thou to it, for it is the utterance of one not in equilibrium. Thoth advises against engaging in or entertaining extravagant or excessive speech, as it typically comes from individuals who lack balance or wisdom. He suggests avoiding such discourse, as it does not contribute to one's equilibrium or inner harmony. Speak thou not of it so that he before thee may know wisdom. Silence is of great profit. An abundance of speech profiteth nothing. Thoth recommends refraining from discussing extravagant speech with others, 
as doing so prevents the spread of foolishness and allows those around you to focus on gaining wisdom. He extols the value of silence, implying that speaking less and listening more can lead to greater insights and understanding. Exalt not thine heart above the children of man, lest it be brought lower than the dust. Thoth warns against arrogance or pride, advising against elevating oneself above others. He suggests that such arrogance can lead to a downfall, potentially lowering one's status or esteem even below that of common dust. If thou be great among men, be honored for knowledge and gentleness. Thoth suggests that true greatness is not found in arrogance or dominance but in possessing knowledge and exhibiting gentleness or kindness toward others. He implies that being respected for wisdom and compassion is more valuable than seeking power or status. If thou seeketh to know the nature of a friend, ask not his companion, but pass the time alone with him. Debate with him, testing his heart by his words and his bearing. Thoth advises against relying solely on the opinions of others when assessing a friend's character. Instead, he suggests spending time alone with the individual, engaging in conversation and debate to gauge their true nature. By observing their words and behavior firsthand, one can better understand their sincerity and integrity. That which goeth into the storehouse must come forth, and the things that are thine must be shared with a friend. This emphasizes the importance of sharing one's possessions or wealth with others, particularly friends. He suggests that hoarding or keeping things solely for oneself goes against the natural order, implying that what is stored or accumulated should eventually be shared or distributed. Knowledge is regarded by the fool as ignorance, and the profitable things are to him hurtful. He liveth in death. It is, therefore, his food. Here, Thoth contrasts the perspectives of the wise and the foolish. He suggests that the fool views knowledge as ignorance, indicating a lack of understanding or appreciation for wisdom. Additionally, the fool perceives beneficial things as harmful, reflecting a distorted perception. Thoth metaphorically describes the fool as living in death, implying a state of ignorance or spiritual stagnation. The fool sustains themselves on this ignorance, suggesting they are unwilling or unable to seek enlightenment. The wise man lets his heart overflow but keeps silent his mouth. This highlights the behavior of the wise individual, who allows their heart or inner being to be filled with emotions, thoughts, and insights. However, despite this internal richness, the wise person exercises discretion with their speech. They choose not to speak indiscriminately but instead remain silent, implying that they carefully consider their words and only speak when necessary or beneficial. O oh man! List to the voice of wisdom. List to the voice of light. Thoth is urging mankind to pay attention and listen to the wisdom and enlightenment that is available to them. He's calling for attentiveness to the truths that illuminate the path of understanding. Mysteries there are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Thoth acknowledges the existence of profound mysteries within the universe that, when revealed or understood, bring enlightenment and illumination to the world. These mysteries hold transformative power and can shed light on the nature of existence. Let he who would be free from the bonds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. Dot, dot, quote. Thoth is advising individuals who seek liberation from ignorance or spiritual darkness to discern between the material aspects of existence and the spiritual or immaterial aspects. He suggests separating the earthly, mundane aspects of life from the spiritual essence. Dot for know ye that as earth descends to earth, so also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with fire. Thoth explains a fundamental principle of existence using the analogy of fire and earth. He suggests that just as earthly matter returns to the earth, spiritual fire ascends and reunites with the eternal flame. This hints at the cyclical nature of existence and the potential for spiritual ascension. He who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Thoth concludes by emphasizing the importance of understanding the inner spiritual fire within oneself. Those who comprehend and cultivate this inner flame will ascend to unity with the eternal fire, achieving spiritual enlightenment and dwelling in it eternally. This highlights the journey of self-discovery and spiritual realization as a pathway to transcendence. Fire the inner fire, is the most potent of all force, 
for it overcometh all things and penetrates to all things of the earth. Thoth asserts the significance and power of the inner fire, symbolizing the spiritual essence within each individual. He suggests that this inner fire is supremely potent, capable of overcoming all obstacles and permeating all aspects of existence. Man supports himself only on that which resists. So earth must resist man else he existeth not. Thoth explains a fundamental principle of existence, highlighting the dynamic interplay between resistance and support. He suggests that humans derive strength and purpose from overcoming challenges and resistance. Without resistance, there would be no opportunity for growth or existence. All eyes do not see with the same vision, for to one an object appears of one form and color and to a different eye of another. Thoth acknowledges the subjective nature of perception emphasizing that individuals perceive reality differently based on their unique perspectives and experiences. He uses this analogy to illustrate the diversity of human perception and understanding. So also the infinite fire, changing from color to color, is never the same from day to day. Thoth extends the analogy of perception to the concept of the infinite fire, symbolizing the spiritual essence. He suggests that this spiritual essence is dynamic and ever-changing, much like the shifting perceptions of individuals. This highlights the fluid and evolving nature of spiritual growth and enlightenment. Thus, speak I, Thoth, of my wisdom, for man is a fire burning bright through the night, never is quenched in the veil of the darkness, never is quenched by the veil of the night. Thoth concludes by affirming the eternal nature of the inner fire within humanity. He asserts that this spiritual essence, symbolized by fire, remains resilient and enduring even in the darkest of times. This underscores the indomitable spirit of humanity and the perpetual quest for enlightenment and transcendence. Hark ye, zero man, and list to this wisdom, where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiance bright. Thoth urges the listener to pay heed to his wisdom, posing a profound question about the nature of existence. He suggests that the essence of name and form dissolves only in consciousness, an intangible yet powerful force akin to radiant light. The forms that ye create by brightening thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Here, Thoth emphasizes the creative power of human consciousness. He suggests that the external forms we perceive are manifestations of our internal visions and intentions, highlighting the interconnectedness between thought and manifestation. Man is a star bound to a body until, in the end, he is freed through his strife. Only struggle and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. Thoth uses the metaphor of man as a star tethered to a physical body, implying that liberation comes through overcoming challenges and striving for growth. He underscores the transformative potential inherent in human struggle and effort, likening it to the birth of a new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realms of night. Thoth suggests that understanding the origins of existence leads to liberation from darkness and limitation. This implies that enlightenment comes through attaining knowledge of the fundamental truths underlying existence. Remember, zero man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has to be is passing into yet another being, and thou thyself is not an exception. In this statement, Thoth imparts a profound insight into the cyclical nature of existence. He suggests that all forms of existence are transient and interconnected, constantly transitioning from one state to another. This serves as a reminder of the impermanence of life and the interconnectedness of all things. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exists only in the illusions of the senses. Thoth advises the listener to contemplate the universal law, implying that everything in existence is governed by this law. He warns against seeking things that are contrary to this law, suggesting that such pursuits are based on sensory illusions rather than reality. Wisdom cometh to all her children even as they cometh unto wisdom. Here, Thoth suggests that wisdom is accessible to all who seek it earnestly. He personifies wisdom as a nurturing mother figure, implying that those who earnestly seek wisdom will find it. All through the ages, the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. 
Thoth speaks of a hidden light that has persisted throughout the ages, suggesting that enlightenment has been obscured from humanity. He calls upon humanity to awaken from ignorance and embrace wisdom. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. Thoth reveals that he has delved deeply into the mysteries of life in his quest for hidden knowledge. He urges the listener to heed his words and attain wisdom. Far beneath the earth's crust, in the halls of Amenti, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Thoth describes his exploration of the mysteries hidden beneath the earth's surface in the halls of Amenti. He suggests that these mysteries are beyond the understanding of ordinary humans, indicating their profound and esoteric nature. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. Thoth speaks of his frequent travels through hidden passages, where he has witnessed the divine light that represents life among humanity. This suggests that he has gained profound insights into the essence of life. There beneath the flowers of life ever living, searched I the hearts and the secrets of men. In his explorations, Thoth has delved beneath the eternal essence of life, symbolized by the flowers of life. He has probed into the depths of human hearts and uncovered their innermost secrets. Found I that man is but living in darkness, the light of the great fire is hidden within. Thoth's discoveries reveal that humans exist in a state of spiritual darkness, unaware of the profound inner light that resides within them. This suggests that humanity is ignorant of its true potential and purpose. Before the lords of hidden Amenti, I learned the wisdom I give unto men. Thoth acquired his wisdom in the presence of the enigmatic lords of hidden Amenti, suggesting that he has received divine teachings from these mystical beings. Masters are they of the great secret wisdom, brought from the future of infinity's end. The lords of Amenti possess profound knowledge of the secret wisdom, which transcends time and originates from the distant future, signifying its timeless and eternal nature. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they as teachers for the children of men. Thoth describes the mystical origin of these teachers, suggesting that they transcend conventional notions of time and form. They emerge from a realm beyond the future, existing in a state of constant transformation, to impart wisdom to humanity. Live they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life and yet free from death. Rule they forever with infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the dark halls of death. These teachers possess eternal existence, but their nature transcends conventional life and death. They exist beyond the mortal realm, unaffected by the limitations of life and death that govern human existence. Despite their eternal rule and boundless wisdom, they are neither confined nor limited by the realm of death. They wield authority over existence itself, extending beyond the boundaries of mortality and the darkness of death. Life they have in them, yet life that is not life, free from all are the lords of the all. These teachers possess a form of life that differs from conventional existence. Their essence transcends the limitations of ordinary life, and they are liberated from all constraints, embodying the ultimate freedom and unity with the universal consciousness. Forth from them came forth the logos, instruments they of the power or all. These teachers serve as conduits for the logos, the divine creative principle or word, through which they exercise authority and influence over all aspects of existence. Vast is their countenance, yet hidden in smallness, formed by a forming, known yet unknown. While their presence and influence are immense and profound, they also possess an inherent sense of subtlety and mystery. They are simultaneously comprehensible and incomprehensible, embodying both the known and the unknown aspects of existence. Three holds the key of all hidden magic, creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth power, shrouding with darkness, binding the souls of the children of men, sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative to the children of men. Thoth describes three as the custodian of hidden magic and the creator of the halls of the dead. This entity wields power that can both shroud with darkness and bind the souls of humanity, acting as a director of negative forces. Four is he who loses the power. Lord, he, of life to the children of men. Light is his body, the flame is his countenance, freer of souls to the children of men. Four is depicted as the one who releases power and grants life to humanity. His essence is described as light and flame, 
signifying his ability to liberate souls. 5 is the master, the lord of all magic, key to the word that resounds among men. 5 is presented as the master of all magic and the key to the word, suggesting authority over divine utterances or truths that resonate with humanity. 6 is the lord of light, the hidden pathway, part of the souls of the children of men. 6 is identified as the lord of light and the guardian of the hidden pathway within the souls of humanity. 7 is he who is lord of the vastness, master of space, and the key of the times. 7 holds dominion over the vast expanses of space and time, serving as the master of cosmic forces and the keeper of temporal cycles. 8 is he who orders the progress, weighs and balances the journey of men. 8 is responsible for organizing and overseeing the progress of humanity, ensuring a balanced and equitable journey for all. 9 is the father, vast he of countenance, forming and changing from out of the formless. 9 is depicted as the paternal figure, vast and ever-changing, emerging from the formless depths of existence. Meditate on the symbols I give thee. Keys are they, though hidden from men. Thoth advises meditation on these symbols, suggesting that they hold profound significance as keys to understanding cosmic truths, even though they may remain obscured from ordinary perception. Reach ever upward, O soul of the morning. Turn thy thoughts upward to light and to life. Find in the keys of the numbers I bring thee, light on the pathway from life unto life. Thoth urges the reader to strive continuously toward higher spiritual growth, directing their thoughts toward enlightenment and vitality. He suggests that understanding the numerical keys he provides will illuminate the journey from one life to the next. Seek ye with wisdom. Turn thy thoughts inward. Close not thy mind to the flower of light. Thoth advises seeking enlightenment with discernment, encouraging introspection and openness to spiritual illumination symbolized by the flower of light. Place in thy body a thought-formed picture. Think of the numbers that lead thee to life. He suggests visualizing a mental image representing spiritual concepts and focusing on the numerical symbols that guide the path to spiritual rebirth. Clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom. Open the door to the kingdom of light. Pour forth thy flame as a son of the morning. Shut out the darkness and live in the day. Thoth emphasizes that clarity comes to those who possess wisdom, urging the reader to embrace the light and radiate their inner brilliance like the morning sun, banishing darkness and dwelling in enlightenment. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being, the seven who are but are not as they seem. Opened, O man, have I my wisdom. Follow the path in the way I have led. This invites the reader to integrate the knowledge of the seven mystical entities into their consciousness, acknowledging that they exist in a manner beyond ordinary perception. He asserts that he has shared his wisdom and encourages following the path he has illuminated. Masters of Wisdom, Son of the Morning Light and Life to the Children of Men Thoth concludes by affirming the role of the Masters of Wisdom as guiding lights, bringing enlightenment and vitality to humanity. End of Tablet 3 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 4. List ye, O man, to the voice of wisdom. List to the voice of Thoth, the Atlantean. Thoth calls upon humanity to heed the voice of wisdom, specifically his own, identifying himself as Thoth, a figure from Atlantis known for his profound knowledge. Freely I give to thee of my wisdom gathered from the time and space of this cycle. Master of mysteries, son of the morning, Thoth, the teacher of men, is of all. Thoth declares his intention to share his wisdom generously, acquired from across time and space within the current cycle of existence. He identifies himself as a master of mysteries, symbolizing enlightenment, and likens himself to the rising sun, signifying enlightenment and renewal. Additionally, he emphasizes his role as a teacher for humanity, suggesting that his wisdom is universal and accessible to all. A long time ago, I, in my childhood, lay, neath the stars on long-buried Atlantis, dreaming of mysteries far above men. Thoth reflects on his childhood in ancient Atlantis, where he lay beneath the stars, contemplating mysteries that surpassed human understanding. Then in my heart grew there a great longing to conquer the pathway that led to the stars. He describes how a profound desire grew within him to explore and understand the cosmic mysteries represented by the stars. Year after year, 
I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge, following the way, until at last my soul, in great travail, broke from its bondage and bounded away. Thoth recounts his relentless pursuit of wisdom over many years, tirelessly seeking new knowledge and following the path toward enlightenment. Eventually, his soul experienced a profound liberation from earthly limitations, breaking free from its constraints. Free was I from the bondage of earthmen. Free from the body, I flashed through the night. Having transcended earthly limitations, Thoth experienced freedom from the constraints imposed by mortal existence, allowing his consciousness to travel unhindered through the cosmos. Unlocked at last for me was the star space. Free was I from the bondage of night. Thoth expresses how he gained access to the vast expanse of the cosmos, freed from the limitations of darkness and ignorance. Now to the end of space sought I wisdom, far beyond knowledge of finite man. He explains how he continued his quest for wisdom, venturing to the farthest reaches of space in search of knowledge that transcended the understanding of mortal beings. Far into space, my soul traveled freely into infinity's circle of light. Thoth describes how his consciousness journeyed far beyond the confines of Earth into the vast expanse of space, where he experienced the boundless illumination of infinity. Strange, beyond knowledge, were some of the planets, great and gigantic, beyond dreams of men. Yet found I law, in all of its beauty, working through and among them as here among men. He encountered planets that were unfamiliar and incomprehensibly vast, surpassing the imagination of mortal beings. Despite their strangeness, Thoth discovered that the same fundamental laws governed these distant planets, just as they did on Earth. Flashed forth my soul through infinity's beauty, far through space I flew with my thoughts. I rest there on a planet of beauty. Strains of harmony filled all the air. Thoth's consciousness soared through the awe-inspiring beauty of the cosmos, traversing immense distances with his thoughts. He found himself on a planet of exquisite beauty, where harmonious melodies permeated the atmosphere. Shapes there were, moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night, mounting in harmony, ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmic, like unto law. Thoth observed majestic forms moving in perfect order and harmony, resembling stars in the night sky. These shapes represented the cosmic principles of order and balance, akin to the fundamental laws governing the universe. Many the stars I passed in my journey, many the races of men on their worlds, some reaching high as stars of the morning, some falling low in the blackness of night. Thoth recounts encountering numerous stars and civilizations during his cosmic journey, some of which flourished like bright morning stars while others languished in the darkness of ignorance and suffering. Each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plumbing the depths, moving at times in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining the light. Despite their differences, all these civilizations were engaged in a universal struggle for growth and enlightenment. They experienced highs and lows, moments of illumination, and periods of darkness but ultimately sought to ascend toward greater understanding and enlightenment. No, zero man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a veil. Thoth imparts a profound truth. Every individual's true essence is light, representing their divine heritage. Darkness, symbolic of ignorance and limitation, is merely an illusion that veils this inherent luminosity. Sealed in thine heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Within every individual lies an eternal light, waiting to be unleashed and overcome the darkness of ignorance. This divine spark within the heart yearns for liberation, awaiting the opportune moment to dispel the veil of ignorance and reveal its radiant brilliance. Some I found who had conquered the ether. Free of space were they while yet they were men. Thoth encountered beings who had mastered the manipulation of ether, the fundamental substance underlying all existence. Despite being human, they transcended the limitations of physical space. Using the force that is the foundation of all things, far in space constructed they a planet, drawn by the force that flows through the all, condensing, coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed. These advanced beings utilize the universal force that permeates everything to create a planet in the depths of space. They molded and shaped the ether according to their will, forming structures and landscapes as they desired. Outstripping in science, they, all of the races, mighty in wisdom, 
sons of the stars. These beings surpassed all other civilizations in scientific knowledge and wisdom. They were regarded as extraordinary individuals, descendants of the stars themselves. Long time I paused, watching their wisdom. Saw them create from out of the ether cities gigantic of rose and gold. Formed forth from the primal element, the base of all matter, the ether far flung. Thoth observed these beings for a considerable time, witnessing their remarkable achievements. They built massive cities from the ether, using its elemental properties to fashion structures of immense beauty and splendor, symbolized by their rose and gold hues. The ether, as the fundamental element of existence, served as the building blocks for their creations, demonstrating their profound mastery over the cosmic forces. Far in the past, they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their mind only a picture and swiftly created, it grew. Thoth describes how these beings achieved mastery over the ether long ago, liberating themselves from the need for laborious work. They possessed the ability to conceive of something in their minds and quickly bring it into existence, demonstrating their remarkable power to manifest their thoughts into reality. Forth then, my soul sped, throughout the cosmos, seeing ever, new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Thoth recounts how his soul journeyed forth across the cosmos, witnessing both new and ancient phenomena. Through this exploration, he came to understand that humanity is inherently connected to the vastness of space, born from the stars themselves and imbued with the essence of cosmic energy. Know ye, O oh man, whatever form ye inhabit, surely it is one with the stars. Thoth emphasizes that regardless of the physical form one assumes, an inherent connection exists between individuals and celestial bodies. This suggests that humans share a fundamental unity with the cosmos. Thy bodies are nothing but planets revolving around their central suns. Here, Thoth metaphorically likens the human body to planets orbiting around their respective suns. This analogy implies that individuals are part of a larger cosmic system, with their bodies playing a role similar to celestial bodies within a solar system. When ye have gained the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether, one of the suns that light outer darkness, one of the space born grown into light. Thoth suggests that when individuals attain comprehensive wisdom, they will transcend their earthly limitations and become radiant beings, akin to stars illuminating the surrounding darkness. This transformation implies a spiritual evolution from being bound by the constraints of earthly existence to embodying cosmic enlightenment. Just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from them into the great source, so, O oh man, thy soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Thoth draws a parallel between the fading brilliance of stars over time and the soul's journey beyond mortal existence. As stars eventually diminish in brightness, their light merges with the universal source. Similarly, human souls transition beyond earthly realms, departing from the darkness of ignorance to merge with the cosmic source of enlightenment. Formed forth ye, from the primal ether, filled with the brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the ether coalesced around yet ever it flames until at last it is free. Thoth describes how individuals originate from the fundamental substance of the universe, the primal ether, imbued with the radiant essence that emanates from the cosmic source. Despite being bound by the ether that surrounds them, there exists an inherent flame within each being that persists until it achieves liberation. Lift up your flame from out of the darkness, fly from thy night, and ye shall be free. Here. Thoth encourages individuals to elevate their inner flame above the darkness, symbolizing the journey toward enlightenment and liberation. By transcending the limitations of ignorance and embracing enlightenment, one can attain freedom from worldly constraints. Traveled I through the space-time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing that now might I pursue wisdom. Thoth recounts his personal journey through the dimensions of space and time experiencing the liberation of his soul and the newfound ability to seek wisdom uninhibited. This reflects his attainment of spiritual freedom and the subsequent pursuit of higher knowledge. Until at last, I passed to a plane, hidden from knowledge, known not to wisdom, extension beyond all that we know. Thoth describes reaching a realm beyond conventional understanding, inaccessible to ordinary knowledge and wisdom. 
This suggests the existence of realities beyond human comprehension, emphasizing the vastness of the universe and the limitations of mortal understanding. Now, oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. Thoth expresses the joy and fulfillment he experienced upon attaining this profound understanding and liberation. This signifies the deep sense of contentment and empowerment that accompanies spiritual enlightenment and freedom. Listen, ye space born, list to my wisdom. Know ye not that ye, too, will be free. Thoth concludes by imparting his wisdom to all, urging individuals to heed his teachings and recognize their innate potential for liberation. He reminds them that just as he achieved freedom, so too can they transcend earthly limitations and realize their spiritual freedom. List ye again, O man, to my wisdom, that hearing, ye too, might live and be free. Not of the earth are ye, earthy, but a child of the infinite cosmic light. Thoth calls upon humanity to listen once more to his teachings, offering the opportunity for liberation and enlightenment. He reminds them of their divine origin emphasizing that they are not merely earthly beings but children of the boundless cosmic light. Now, to ye, I give knowledge, freedom to walk in the path I have trod, showing ye truly how, by my striving, I trod the path that leads to the stars. Thoth bestows knowledge upon humanity, granting them the freedom to follow the path he has traversed. He offers guidance based on his own experiences, illustrating how he attained enlightenment and ascended to celestial realms. Hark ye, O man, and know of thy bondage, know how to free thyself from the toils. Out of the darkness shall ye rise upward, one with the light and one with the stars. Thoth urges humanity to heed his message and recognize their state of bondage. He imparts the wisdom necessary to liberate oneself from earthly struggles and ascend towards enlightenment. Through this transformation, individuals can unite with the divine light and celestial realms. Follow ye ever the path of wisdom. Only by this can ye rise from below. Every man's destiny leads him onward into the curves of infinity's all. Thoth emphasizes the importance of walking the path of wisdom, as it is the only way to transcend earthly limitations and ascend to higher states of being. He highlights the inevitability of humanity's journey toward ultimate enlightenment, guiding them toward the infinite expanses of cosmic consciousness. Know ye, O man that all space is ordered. Only by order are you one with the ALL. Order and balance are the law of the cosmos. Follow, and ye shall be one with the All. This instructs humanity to understand that the entirety of space is organized according to a divine order. It is through adhering to this order that individuals can become unified with the universal consciousness. The law of the cosmos is characterized by order and equilibrium, and by aligning oneself with these principles, one can achieve unity with the universal consciousness. He who would follow the pathway of wisdom, open must be to the flower of life, extending his consciousness out of the darkness, flowing through time and space in the all. Thoth emphasizes that those who seek wisdom must be receptive to the essence of life, symbolized by the flower of life. They must expand their consciousness beyond the confines of darkness and traverse through the infinite dimensions of time and space encompassed by the universal consciousness. Deep in the silence, first ye must linger until at last ye are free from desire, free from the longing to speak in the silence. Conquer by silence, the bondage of words. Abstaining from eating until ye have conquered desire for food, that is bondage of soul. Thoth advises individuals to immerse themselves in profound silence, where they can transcend desires and the urge to speak. By conquering the compulsion to express oneself verbally, one can overcome the limitations imposed by words. Similarly, abstaining from eating until the craving for food is conquered signifies mastery over the soul's attachment to physical sustenance. Through these practices, individuals can liberate themselves from the bondage of worldly desires and attain spiritual freedom. Then lie ye down in the darkness. Close ye your eyes from the rays of the light. Thoth advises positioning oneself in darkness and shutting out external light by closing one's eyes. This setting creates an environment conducive to inner exploration and spiritual practice. Center thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. 
he instructs to focus one's inner energy or soul force at the center of consciousness, aiming to liberate it from the constraints of darkness or ignorance. This involves directing one's awareness inward to initiate spiritual awakening and enlightenment. Place in thy mind the image thou desireth. Picture the place thou desireth to see. Thoth suggests visualizing a desired image or location within the mind's eye. By creating a mental image of a desired reality or destination, one can set intentions and direct the course of their spiritual journey. Vibrate back and forth with thy power. Loosen the soul from out of its night. Fiercely must thou shake with all of thy power until at last thy soul shall be free. He advises to oscillate or vibrate internally with one's inner power or spiritual energy. This dynamic movement helps to shake loose the soul from the confines of darkness or spiritual ignorance, facilitating its liberation and ascent towards enlightenment. Thoth emphasizes the intensity and persistence required in this spiritual practice. One must vigorously and resolutely shake or vibrate with all of one's inner strength until the soul is ultimately liberated from its spiritual confinement and achieves freedom. Mighty beyond words is the flame of the cosmic, hanging in planes, unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies, far beyond man. Thoth describes the immense and indescribable nature of the cosmic flame, a symbol of divine power and energy existing in planes beyond human comprehension. This flame operates in perfect balance and harmony according to cosmic order, resonating with celestial music and harmonies beyond human perception. Speaking with music, singing with color, flame from the beginning of eternity's all. He elaborates on how the cosmic flame communicates through music and color, symbolizing its dynamic and multifaceted nature. This flame has existed since the dawn of eternity, representing the eternal essence of existence. Spark of the flame art thou, zero my children, burning with color and living with music. List to the voice, and thou shalt be free. Thoth addresses humanity as sparks of the cosmic flame, implying that humans possess a divine essence akin to the cosmic flame. Humans are described as beings infused with color and music, symbolizing their connection to the cosmic order. Thoth urges humans to listen to the voice of wisdom emanating from the cosmic flame to attain spiritual freedom. Consciousness free is fused with the cosmic, one with the order and law of the all. Thoth emphasizes the liberation of consciousness, indicating that when consciousness is free from bondage, it becomes united with the cosmic order and law. This unity with the cosmic order brings about a profound sense of oneness with the universe and its divine principles. Knew ye not man? that out of the darkness, light shall flame forth, a symbol of all. This reminds humanity that from darkness, light will emerge, symbolizing the universal principle of illumination and enlightenment. Pray ye this prayer for attaining of wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to the all. He instructs individuals to pray for wisdom and for the manifestation of light throughout the universe. Mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness, magnet of fire that is one with the all. Thoth addresses the divine spirit of light that permeates the cosmos, asking for unity and alignment with this divine essence. He seeks to elevate his own spiritual flame from the darkness, recognizing it as part of the universal energy. Lift up my soul, thou mighty and potent. Child of the light, turn not away. Draw me in power to melt in thy furnace one with all things and all things in one, the fire of the life strain and one with the brain. He continues his prayer, asking the divine spirit to uplift his soul and merge it with the universal fire of life. Thoth seeks to become unified with all existence, recognizing the interconnectedness of all things within the universal consciousness. When ye have freed thy soul from its bondage, know that for ye the darkness is gone. Thoth indicates that once individuals liberate their souls from worldly constraints, darkness loses its hold over them. Ever through space, ye may seek wisdom, bound not by fetters forged in the flesh. Onward and upward into the morning, free flash, zero soul, to the realms of light. He suggests that once freed from physical limitations, individuals can seek wisdom boundlessly throughout the cosmos. Thoth encourages the soul to ascend toward enlightenment moving freely toward the realms of light and spiritual awakening. 
Move thou in order, move thou in harmony, freely shalt move with the children of light. He advises individuals to move with order and harmony, aligning themselves with the universal flow and thereby moving in harmony with other enlightened beings. Seek ye and know ye, my key of wisdom. Thus, zero man, ye shall surely be free. Finally, Thoth urges individuals to seek wisdom diligently, asserting that through this pursuit, true freedom will be attained. End of Tablet 4 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 5. Oft dream I of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Eon on eon thou existed in beauty, as shining through the darkness of night. This line suggests that Thoth frequently dreams or reflects upon Atlantis, his legendary homeland that became lost in the distant past. He recalls that it existed for many ages, eon on eon and describes it as a beacon of beauty and brilliance that stood out even in the metaphorical darkness of the past. Mighty in power, ruling the earth-born, lord of the earth in Atlantis' day. This line suggests that Atlantis was a powerful civilization that exerted authority over its inhabitants, the earth-born, and was dominant as the ruler of the earth in its time. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through Suntal, keeper of the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis day. This sentence further emphasizes the greatness of Atlantis, portraying it as a kingdom that held sway over other nations, possessed profound wisdom, and embodied enlightenment, light through Suntal. It also mentions a figure referred to as, the master of Unal, who likely held significant spiritual or leadership authority within Atlantis. Master, he, from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men. Here, the passage introduces a mysterious figure described as, the master, who is said to be from a realm or cycle beyond human comprehension. Despite this transcendence, the master is depicted as living among humanity, inhabiting physical bodies like an ordinary person. Not as the earth born, he from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. This line reinforces the idea that the master is not an ordinary human being, not as the earth born but originates from a realm or dimension beyond human understanding. The phrase, son of a cycle, may suggest that the master is connected to or emanates from a higher cosmic cycle and is spiritually or intellectually advanced beyond ordinary humans. Know ye, O man, that Horlet the master was never one with the children of men. This line informs the reader that Horlet referred to as, the master, was distinct from ordinary humans, the children of men. It suggests that Horlet was of a different nature or origin, perhaps possessing greater wisdom or spiritual insight. Far in the past time when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Here, the passage describes Horlet as appearing during the early days of Atlantis when it was rising to prominence. He is depicted as someone who possessed the key of wisdom, and shared spiritual enlightenment, the way of light, with the people of Atlantis showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men. This line emphasizes Horlet's role as a teacher or guide who revealed to everyone the path toward spiritual growth and enlightenment, symbolized by, the light. He helped individuals attain higher states of consciousness and understanding. Mastering darkness, leading the man's soul, upward to heights that were one with the light. Here, it suggests that Horlet could overcome darkness or ignorance, guiding the human soul, man's soul, towards spiritual elevation and unity with the divine or enlightened state, the light. Divided the kingdoms, he into sections. Ten were they, ruled by children of men. This line indicates that Horlet divided the territories or realms of Atlantis into ten sections, each governed by rulers who were ordinary humans, children of men. This division suggests a structured organization within Atlantis. Upon another, built he a temple, built but not by the children of men. The passage mentions that Horlet constructed a temple in one of the sections of Atlantis, but it was not built by ordinary humans. This temple likely holds significance beyond the physical realm, perhaps serving as a center for spiritual or esoteric practices. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Wytolan into the forms he built with his mind. This line describes the creation process initiated by the figure referred to as, Horlet. Ether, 
often refers to a mystical or elemental substance from which all things originate. Here, Horlet called forth a substance from the ether and shaped it into forms using the power of Waitolan, likely a reference to a deity or cosmic force, and his own mental abilities. Mile upon mile it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might. Black, yet not black, but dark like the space-time, deep in its heart the essence of light. This sentence suggests that the creation formed from the ether expanded across the island, growing in size and strength over vast distances. But, the description becomes more abstract, referring to the color of the creation as black, but also noting that it is not truly black. Instead, it is described as dark, like space-time, perhaps indicating a mysterious or otherworldly quality. Despite its darkness, it contains within it the essence of light, suggesting an inherent spiritual or luminous aspect. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller, called from the formless into a form. This line describes the rapid growth and formation of the temple, which emerges swiftly as if called forth by a divine command, the word of the dweller. The dweller likely refers to a deity or higher being who imbues the temple with form and substance. Built he then, within it, great chambers, filled them from forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth by his mind. This passage describes how Horlet constructs various chambers within the temple, presumably for specific purposes. These chambers are filled with forms and wisdom summoned from the ether and the mind of the Creator. This indicates that the temple serves as a repository of both physical and spiritual knowledge, shaped by divine will and human intellect. Formless was he within his temple, yet was he formed in the image of man. This line suggests that although Horlet resided within the temple, he was formless in essence yet took on a human-like form. This form could be perceived as similar to that of humans despite his formlessness. Dwelling among them yet not of them, strange and far different was he from the children of men. Here, it describes how, despite residing among humans, them, Horlet was fundamentally different from them. He was strange and distant, indicating a certain degree of otherness or divine nature that set him apart from ordinary humans. Chose. He then came from among the people, three of whom became his gateway. Chose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. This part describes how Horlet selected three individuals from among the people to serve as intermediaries or messengers, his gateway, between himself and Atlantis. These three individuals were chosen from the highest ranks or positions within Atlantis to establish connections and convey messages. Messengers they, who carried his counsel, to the kings of the children of men. The chosen three acted as messengers, conveying the wisdom or guidance of the figure to the rulers, kings, of Atlantis, who were considered the leaders among the people. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom, teachers, they, to the children of men. This line describes how Horlet selected additional individuals and imparted wisdom to them, transforming them into teachers who would share this knowledge with the rest of humanity, the children of men. Placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as teachers of light to men. Finally, the passage mentions that Horlet situated these newly appointed teachers on the island of Undal, where they would serve as beacons of enlightenment and guidance, sharing the teachings of light and wisdom with humanity. Each of those who were thus chosen, taught must he be for years 5 and 10. This line explains that those selected must undergo a period of teaching lasting 15 years. This education is necessary for them to acquire the understanding required to bring enlightenment to humanity. Only thus could he have the understanding to bring light to the children of men. Here, it's emphasized that the extended period of teaching is essential for the chosen individuals to gain the necessary comprehension and wisdom to effectively bring enlightenment, light, to humanity. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of man. This sentence suggests that the temple, previously mentioned, was established as a result of the teachings and preparations undergone by the chosen individuals. It becomes a place where the figure, referred to as the master of man, could reside and impart wisdom. I, Thoth, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Thoth, the speaker of this passage, introduces himself and explains his lifelong pursuit of wisdom. He has searched for knowledge both in times of obscurity, darkness, and illumination, light. 
Long in my youth, I traveled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain. Until after much striving, one of the three, to me, brought the light. Thoth describes a period of his youth during which he embarked on a journey, continuously seeking to acquire new knowledge and understanding. Despite his persistent efforts, Thoth mentions that it was only after much striving that one of the chosen messengers, referred to as, one of the three, brought enlightenment to him. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from darkness into the light. The chosen messenger conveyed to Thoth the instructions or guidance, commands, of the dweller, likely a divine entity, which led him out of ignorance, darkness, and into enlightenment, the light. Brought he me, before the dweller, deep in the temple before the great fire. Thoth recounts how the messenger brought him into the presence of the dweller, presumably within the temple, in front of a significant symbol or source of spiritual power, the great fire. There on the great throne, beheld I, the dweller, clothed with the light and flashing with fire. Thoth describes seeing the dweller, likely a powerful spiritual entity or deity, seated on a magnificent throne. The dweller is depicted as emanating radiant light and fiery energy. Down I knelt before that great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Thoth describes humbly kneeling before the dweller, feeling a profound sense of enlightenment and spiritual energy, the light, coursing through him in waves. Heard I then the voice of the dweller, O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to the light. Thoth recounts hearing the voice of the dweller, which invites darkness to come into the light, acknowledging the seeker's long journey toward enlightenment. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. The dweller's voice speaks of liberation for those who break free from their spiritual or mental constraints, promising freedom from darkness and ignorance. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen, closer approached the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument thou of the light from beyond. This line acknowledges the progress made by seekers towards enlightenment, moving closer to their ultimate spiritual goal. The dweller offers Thoth a place of residence and purpose, welcoming him as one of its children. Thoth is tasked with preserving knowledge acquired through wisdom and serving as a conduit for divine illumination. Ready be thou made to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom though the ages of darkness that shall come fast on the children of men. Thoth is instructed to be prepared to fulfill his role and preserve wisdom, especially during times of darkness and spiritual challenges that humanity will face. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom. Secrets and mysteries unto thee shall unveil. Thoth is invited to dwell in the presence of the dweller, where he will have access to boundless wisdom and understanding, with the promise of uncovering hidden truths and mysteries. Then answered I, the master of cycles, saying, O light, that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom that I might be a teacher of men. Thoth responds to the master, identifying himself as the master of cycles. He requests wisdom from the light, which is symbolic of divine enlightenment so that he can fulfill his role as a teacher and guide for humanity. Give thou thy light that I may be free. Spoke then to me again, the master. Age after age shall ye live through your wisdom. Thoth further requests illumination from the light, seeking spiritual freedom and liberation through its wisdom. The master responds to Thoth's plea, indicating that Thoth will continue to live across ages, guided by the wisdom he seeks and receives from the light. I, when o'er Atlantis, the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come when e'er thou shalt call. The master assures Thoth that even when Atlantis is submerged beneath the waves and the light appears hidden in darkness, it will remain accessible to Thoth whenever he calls upon it. Go thee now and learn greater wisdom. Thoth is instructed to embark on a journey to acquire even greater wisdom, suggesting that his quest for enlightenment is ongoing and that there is always more to learn. Grow thou through light to infinities all. The master urges Thoth to expand and evolve spiritually through his connection to the light ultimately reaching a state of unity with the infinite and eternal aspects of existence. Long then dwelt I in the temple of the dweller until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains, followed I then the pathway to light. Thoth describes spending a significant amount of time in the temple of the dweller, 
where he immersed himself in spiritual practices and teachings until he achieved unity with the divine light, symbolizing enlightenment. Thoth then recounts embarking on a journey to higher realms or dimensions beyond earth, where he pursued further enlightenment and illumination. Deep into earth's heart, I followed the pathway, learning the secrets, below as above. Learning the pathway to the halls of Amenti. Learning the law that balances the world. Here, Thoth describes delving deep into the earth, exploring its mysteries, and uncovering knowledge that reflects universal principles, below as above. He learns about the halls of Amenti, which are believed to be a place of spiritual knowledge and judgment, and discovers the cosmic laws that govern the balance of the world. To earth's hidden chambers pierced I by my wisdom, deep through the earth's crust, into the pathway, hidden for ages from the children of men. Thoth explains how his wisdom allowed him to access hidden chambers within the earth, penetrating through its surface and uncovering pathways that had been concealed from humanity for generations. Unveiled before me, ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge, found that all is part of an ALL, great and yet greater than all that we know. Through his explorations and discoveries, Thoth gains increasingly profound wisdom, culminating in the realization that everything is interconnected and part of a greater whole beyond human comprehension. Searched I infinity's heart through the ages. Deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Thoth describes his ongoing quest to understand the depths of infinity across time. Despite his continuous exploration, he continues to encounter more mysteries and depths yet to be fully understood. Now, as I look back through the ages, know that wisdom is boundless, ever growing greater throughout the ages, one with infinities greater than all. Thoth reflects on his understanding of wisdom, realizing that it is limitless and continuously expanding over time. He acknowledges that wisdom is interconnected with the infinite, transcending any individual or specific era. Light there was in ancient Atlantis. Yes, darkness, too, was hidden in all fell from the light into the darkness, some who had risen to heights among men. Thoth acknowledges the presence of both light and darkness within ancient Atlantis. This suggests that while there was enlightenment and knowledge, there were also darker aspects or forces at play. Thoth then describes how specific individuals in Atlantis who had achieved prominence or enlightenment fell from grace and succumbed to darkness. Proud they became because of their knowledge, proud were they of their place among men. These individuals became prideful due to their wisdom and elevated status in society, leading to their downfall. Deep delved they into the forbidden, opened the gateway that led to below. Thoth explains that these prideful individuals delved deeply into forbidden knowledge, perhaps exploring realms or practices that were beyond their understanding or meant to be left untouched. Sought they to gain ever more knowledge but seeking to bring it up from below. Despite warnings or prohibitions, these individuals sought to acquire even greater knowledge, perhaps by tapping into hidden or forbidden sources, ultimately leading to negative consequences. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. Thoth asserts that anyone who delves into realms of darkness or lower planes of existence must maintain balance within themselves. Without this equilibrium, they risk being ensnared by the absence of spiritual enlightenment or light. Opened, they then, by their knowledge, pathways forbidden to man. Thoth describes how these individuals, driven by their desire for knowledge and power, unlocked forbidden pathways or gateways that were not meant for humanity to access. But, in his temple, all-seeing, the dweller, lay in his Agwanti, which through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Thoth refers to the dweller, who possesses all-seeing awareness, residing in his temple. Meanwhile, the dweller's soul travels freely through Atlantis, indicating a profound connection to the land and its people. Saw he the Atlanteans, by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. The dweller observes the Atlanteans, utilizing their magical abilities, as they open a gateway that will ultimately result in a catastrophic event or calamity befalling the earth. Fast fled his soul then, back to his body. Up he arose from his Agwanti. Upon witnessing the impending disaster, the dweller swiftly returns his soul to his physical body and emerges from his state of profound spiritual contemplation, Agwanti. Called he the three mighty messengers. Gave the commands that shattered the world. The dweller summons the three mighty messengers, and issues command that will lead to cataclysmic events, 
perhaps in an attempt to mitigate or prevent the impending disaster caused by the Atlanteans' actions. Deep beneath Earth's crust to the halls of Amenti, swiftly descended the dweller. Called he then on the powers of the seven lords wielded, changed the Earth's balance. Thoth describes how the dweller swiftly descends deep beneath the Earth's surface to the halls of Amenti, a significant and mystical location associated with spiritual knowledge and cosmic balance. The dweller calls upon the powers of the seven lords, likely referring to celestial or elemental forces, and alters the balance of the earth. This indicates a significant and deliberate action taken by the dweller to address the impending crisis. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves. Shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. As a result of the dweller's intervention and the shift in the earth's balance, Atlantis sinks beneath the ocean's waves, signaling the cataclysmic end of the civilization. The Dweller destroys the gateway or portal that had been opened by the Atlanteans, closing off access to the forbidden realms below and preventing further catastrophe. All of the islands were shattered except Unal and part of the island of the Sons of the Dweller. The destruction caused by the sinking of Atlantis affects all the islands in the vicinity, except for Unal and a portion of the island inhabited by the descendants of the Dweller. These areas are preserved for a specific purpose. Preserved he them to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of man. The dweller preserves Unal and part of the island as places of enlightenment and guidance for future generations. These areas are intended to serve as beacons of wisdom and illumination for humanity, especially for those who are less spiritually advanced. Called he then, I Thoth, before him gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O Thoth, all of your wisdom. Take all your records. Take all your magic. Thoth recounts being summoned before the dweller, who gives him instructions on what he must do next. Thoth is then instructed to gather all of his accumulated wisdom, records, and magical knowledge. Go thou forth preserving the records until in time light grows among men. Thoth is directed to go forth and preserve his records and wisdom until a future time when enlightenment becomes more widespread among humanity. Light shalt thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men. Thoth is assured that he will embody the essence of light throughout the ages. Even though his presence may be hidden, it will be discovered by those who are spiritually enlightened. Over all earth, give we ye power, free thou to give or take it away. Thoth is granted power over the earth, with the ability to bestow or retract this power as he sees fit. Gather thou now, the sons of Atlantis. Take them and flee to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Chem. Thoth is instructed to gather the survivors of Atlantis and lead them to safety, specifically to a group of people who reside in rock caves. Thoth is directed to travel to the land of the children of Chem likely referring to ancient Egypt, where he and the survivors of Atlantis are to seek refuge and begin anew. Then gathered I the sons of Atlantis. Into the spaceship, I brought all my records, brought the records of sunken Atlantis. Thoth describes assembling the survivors of Atlantis, likely those who were chosen to accompany him on their journey to safety. Thoth states that he gathered all his records and the records of Atlantis, possibly preserving the knowledge and history of their civilization. Gathered in all of my powers, instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then, we rose on wings of the morning. Thoth collected all his magical abilities and tools, preparing for their departure. Thoth and the survivors then ascend, likely aboard their spacecraft, at the break of dawn or in the early morning. High we arose above the temple, leaving behind the three and dweller, deep in the halls, neath the temple. They ascend above the temple leaving behind the dweller and the three individuals who were mentioned earlier as being present in the temple's depths. Down beneath the waves sank the great temple, closing the pathway to the lords of the cycles. The temple sinks beneath the waves, sealing off the pathway to the lords of the cycles, likely referring to spiritual entities or cosmic forces associated with cyclic patterns. Yet ever to him who has known, open shall be the path to Amenti. Thoth suggests that for those who possess true understanding or enlightenment, the path to the halls of Amenti will remain accessible despite the temple's submersion. In summary, Thoth recounts how he gathered the survivors of Atlantis, preserved their records and magical abilities, 
and ascended with them aboard a spacecraft. As they departed, the temple sank beneath the waves, closing off access to certain spiritual realms, but Thoth suggests that the path to higher knowledge remains open to those who seek it with true understanding. Fast fled, we then, on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Kem. There, by my power, I conquered and ruled them. Raised I to light, the children of Kem. Thoth describes their swift departure, likening it to flying on the wings of the morning and their arrival in the land of the children of Kem, which is likely ancient Egypt. Thoth asserts that he used his magical abilities to conquer and govern the people of Kem. He claims to have brought enlightenment or spiritual awakening to them, guiding them towards the light. Deep beneath the rocks, I buried my spaceship, waiting for the time when a man might be free. Over the spaceship, erected a marker in the form of a lion yet like unto man. Thoth describes burying his spaceship beneath the earth, hidden beneath rocks, and waiting for a time when humanity would be ready for its rediscovery. Thoth explains that he placed a marker, resembling a lion but with human-like qualities, above the buried spaceship to indicate its location. There beneath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Thoth concludes by stating that his spaceship remains hidden beneath the earth, ready to be unearthed and utilized when it becomes necessary in the future. Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. This forewarns humanity that in the distant future, invaders will emerge from the depths, suggesting a threat from unknown forces or entities. Then awake, ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Thoth calls upon those who possess wisdom to awaken and bring forth his ship, implying that with the aid of his technology, they can easily conquer the invaders. Deep beneath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Thoth reveals that beneath the symbolic image lies a secret and instructs seekers to search within the pyramid he constructed. Thoth explains that each element within the pyramid is interconnected, serving as keystones and gateways that lead to higher understanding or enlightenment. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek, and the doorway to life shall be thine. Thoth urges seekers to follow the key or clues he has left behind, promising that by doing so, they will discover the pathway to true life or spiritual enlightenment. Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. Use thou the key of the seven, and open to thee the pathway will fall. Thoth directs seekers to explore deep within his pyramid, specifically in a passage that culminates in a wall. He instructs them to use the key of the seven to unlock the pathway forward. Now unto thee, I have given my wisdom. Now unto thee, I have given my way. Follow the pathway. Solve thou my secrets. Unto thee, I have shown the way. Thoth declares that he has bestowed his wisdom and knowledge upon those who seek it. He encourages seekers to follow the path he has revealed, solve the mysteries he has left behind, and assure them that he has provided the guidance they need. In summary, Thoth offers guidance and instruction to those who possess wisdom, directing them to uncover his secrets hidden within the pyramid he built. He emphasizes the importance of following clues and utilizing the key of the seven to unlock the pathway to enlightenment. End of Tablet 5 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 6 Hark ye, zero man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark to the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long, long ago, in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Thoth calls upon humanity to listen and pay attention to the ancient wisdom of magic and the knowledge of forgotten powers. He also refers to a conflict that originated in the early days of humanity, symbolizing the eternal struggle between darkness, representing ignorance, negativity, and chaos, and light, symbolizing knowledge, positivity, and order. Men, then as now, were filled with both darkness and light, and while in some darkness held sway, in others light filled the soul. I, age old is this warfare, the eternal struggle between darkness and light. Thoth observes that throughout history, humans have harbored both positive and negative qualities within them. Some individuals are dominated by darkness, while others are guided by light. He emphasizes the timeless nature of this conflict, portraying it as an eternal struggle that persists through the ages. 
Fiercely as it fought all through the ages, using strange powers hidden to man. Thoth describes how this ongoing battle is fiercely fought over time, often employing mysterious and esoteric powers that are concealed from ordinary human understanding. Adepts have there been filled with the blackness, struggling always against the light, but others there are who, filled with brightness, have ever conquered the darkness of night. Thoth acknowledges the existence of adepts or individuals who have attained advanced knowledge but are consumed by darkness, perpetually battling against the forces of light. Conversely, others are filled with brightness and consistently triumph over the darkness. Where e'er ye may be in all ages and planes, surely ye shall know of the battle with night. He suggests that regardless of where individuals find themselves in various dimensions and epochs, they will inevitably encounter the ongoing struggle between darkness and light. Long ages ago, the sons of the morning, descending, found the world filled with night. Thoth describes a distant past when enlightened beings, metaphorically referred to as sons of the morning, descended to earth and discovered it engulfed in darkness. There in that past time began the struggle, the age-old battle of darkness and light. He points out that it was during this historical period that the timeless conflict between darkness and light commenced, marking the beginning of an enduring battle. Many in that time were so filled with darkness that only feebly flamed the light from the night. Thoth reflects on how many individuals during that era were overwhelmed by darkness, to the extent that the light within them could only flicker weakly amid the prevailing darkness. Some there were masters of darkness, who sought to fill all with their darkness and sought to draw others into their night. Thoth describes individuals who had mastered the forces of darkness and actively sought to spread this darkness to others, attempting to engulf everything in their realm of darkness. Fiercely withstood they, the masters of brightness, fiercely fought they from the darkness of night. In contrast to the masters of darkness, some were masters of brightness, individuals who fiercely opposed the spread of darkness and fought against it, even from within the darkness itself. Sought they ever to tighten the fetters, the chains that bind man to the darkness of night. The masters of darkness continuously sought to strengthen the chains and constraints that bound humanity to the realm of darkness, striving to maintain control over individuals and keep them immersed in darkness. Used they always the dark magic, brought into man by the power of darkness, magic that enshrouded man's soul with darkness. These masters of darkness employed dark magic, which had been introduced to humanity through the power of darkness itself. This magic served to cloak individual souls in darkness, further entrenching them in the realm of night and preventing them from reaching enlightenment. Banded together in as order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonists they to the children of men. Thoth describes a group of beings, referred to as the brothers of darkness, who have organized themselves over many ages. They are depicted as adversaries to humanity, opposing the progression and enlightenment of human beings. Walked they always secret and hidden, found yet not found by the children of men. These brothers of darkness operated covertly and remained hidden from the awareness of humanity. Despite their influence and presence, they eluded the direct perception of ordinary people. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light in the darkness of night. Silently, secretly, used they their power, enslaving and binding the souls of men. Their activities were consistently conducted in darkness, both literal and metaphorical, symbolizing their avoidance of illumination and enlightenment. The brothers of darkness exerted their influence silently and clandestinely, employing their powers to enslave and control the souls of humanity, thereby hindering their spiritual progress. Unseen they come, and unseen they go. Man in his ignorance calls them from below. These beings operated invisibly, entering and exiting without detection. This implies that due to humanity's ignorance or lack of understanding, people often attribute their actions to natural or mundane causes, unaware of the true nature of these hidden forces. Dark is the way the dark brothers travel, dark with the darkness not of the night, traveling or earth they walk through man's dreams. Thoth describes the mode of operation of the Dark Brothers, indicating that their activities are shrouded in a darkness that transcends the mere absence of light. They traverse the earth, influencing humanity through dreams and subconscious realms. Power have they gained from the darkness around them to call other dwellers from out of their plane in ways that are dark and unseen by man. These beings derive their strength and abilities from the surrounding darkness, 
enabling them to summon and manipulate entities from their own realm in covert and mysterious ways, undetected by humans. Into man's mind space reach the Dark Brothers. Around it, they close the veil of their night. The Dark Brothers infiltrate the mental space of individuals, surrounding it with their dark influence, effectively enveloping the individual's consciousness with their malevolent presence. There through its lifetime that soul dwells in bondage, bound by the fetters of the veil of the night. When under the influence of the Dark Brothers, the affected soul remains in a state of bondage throughout its lifetime, constrained by the oppressive forces represented by the metaphorical veil of darkness. Mighty are they in the forbidden knowledge, forbidden because it is one with the night. Thoth emphasizes the formidable power wielded by the Dark Brothers, derived from their possession of forbidden knowledge that aligns with the darkness they represent. This knowledge is considered forbidden due to its association with malevolent forces and practices. Hark ye, zero man, and list to my warning, be ye free from the bondage of night. Thoth is urging humanity to pay attention and heed his warning. He advises people to liberate themselves from the influence and control of darkness. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Keep thy face ever turned toward the light. He cautions against yielding one's soul to the dark brothers, urging individuals to maintain their focus on the path illuminated by the light, symbolizing enlightenment and spiritual purity. Know ye not, zero man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of the night? Thoth suggests that the source of human suffering often originates from being ensnared in the darkness, metaphorically represented as the veil of the night, which obscures clarity and truth. I, man, heed ye my warning. Strive ever upward, turn your soul toward the light. He reiterates the importance of heeding his advice, urging humanity to continuously aspire towards higher spiritual realms and to orient their souls towards the light, symbolizing enlightenment and spiritual growth. For well know they that those who have traveled far towards the sun on their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind with darkness the children of light. Thoth warns that individuals who have progressed significantly along the path of enlightenment possess immense spiritual power. However, he cautions that this power can also attract the attention of dark forces capable of ensnaring even those who are spiritually enlightened. List ye, zero man, to he who comes to you. But weigh in the balance if his words be of light. Thoth advises individuals to listen to those who approach them with teachings or guidance but also to carefully assess whether the message aligns with the principles of enlightenment and truth. For many, there are those who walk in dark brightness and yet are not the children of light. He warns that some may appear to emanate a radiant or charismatic aura, dark brightness, but their teachings may not originate from genuine enlightenment or spiritual purity. Easy it is to follow their pathway, easy to follow the path that they lead. But yes, O oh man, heed ye my warning, light comes only to him who strives. Thoth cautions that it may be tempting to follow these individuals due to the apparent ease or allure of their path. He emphasizes that true enlightenment and spiritual illumination are attained through effort and dedication. Hard is the pathway that leads to the wisdom, hard is the pathway that leads to the light. This underscores the challenges inherent in the journey toward wisdom and enlightenment. Many shall ye find, the stones in your pathway, many the mountains to climb toward the light. He acknowledges the obstacles and difficulties, symbolized by, stones, and, mountains, that individuals encounter on their spiritual journey. Yet know ye, zero man, to him that overcometh, free will he be of the pathway of light. Follow ye, not the dark brothers ever. Always be ye a child of the light. Despite the challenges, Thoth assures that those who persevere and overcome obstacles will ultimately achieve freedom and enlightenment. He admonishes against following the teachings or influence of dark forces and urges individuals to align themselves with the light. For know ye, zero men, in the end, light must conquer and darkness and night be banished from light. Thoth concludes by affirming the ultimate triumph of light over darkness emphasizing the inevitability of enlightenment prevailing over ignorance and darkness. Listen, zero man, and heed ye this wisdom. Even as darkness, so is the light. Thoth emphasizes the duality of existence, suggesting that just as there is darkness, there is also light. When darkness is banished, and all veils are rendered, out there shall flash from the darkness, the light. 
he describes a transformative moment where darkness is dispelled, and the light emerges from it, symbolizing enlightenment and truth. Even as the Dark Brothers exist among men, so there exists the Brothers of Light. Antagonists they of the Brothers of Darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Thoth introduces the concept of opposing forces. The Dark Brothers, who represent ignorance and bondage, and the Brothers of Light, who strive to liberate humanity from darkness and ignorance. Powers have they, mighty and potent. Knowing the law, the planets obey. Work they ever in harmony and order, freeing the man's soul from its bondage of night. He describes the abilities of the Brothers of Light, highlighting their mastery over cosmic laws and their work to bring harmony and liberation to human souls. Secret and hidden, walk they also. Known not are they to the children of men. Yet know that ever they walk with thee, showing the way to the children of men. Thoth reveals that the Brothers of Light operate discreetly and are unknown to most humans, but they still guide and assist humanity on its journey towards enlightenment. Ever have they fought the Dark Brothers, conquered and conquering time without end. Yet always light shall in the end be master, driving away the darkness of night. He explains that the Brothers of Light have engaged in an eternal struggle against the forces of darkness, consistently prevailing over them. Thoth concludes by affirming the ultimate victory of light over darkness, symbolizing the triumph of enlightenment and truth in the cosmic order. I, man, know ye this knowing, always beside thee walk the children of light. Masters they of the sun power, ever unseen yet the guardians of men. Thoth reveals that the children of light, beings of enlightenment and wisdom, are constantly present alongside humanity. He describes the children of light as masters of the power of the sun, unseen by most but serving as protectors and guides for humanity. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the light. Free are they of dark amenti, free of the halls where life reigns supreme. Thoth explains that the pathway to enlightenment offered by the children of light is accessible to anyone willing to embrace the light. He indicates that the children of light are liberated from the realm of darkness and the constraints of earthly life. Sons are they and lords of the morning, children of light to shine among men. Thoth portrays the children of light as radiant beings, akin to celestial bodies, destined to illuminate and inspire humanity. Like man, are they, and yet are they unlike? Never divided were they in the past. He suggests that although similar to humans, the children of light possess unique qualities, and they have always remained unified. One have they been in oneness eternal, throughout all space since the beginning of time. Given to man have they secrets that shall guard and protect him from all harm. Thoth emphasizes the eternal unity and oneness of the children of light, who have existed since the dawn of creation and across the expanse of the cosmos. Thoth suggests that the children of light have entrusted humanity with secrets capable of safeguarding individuals from harm. He who would travel the path of a master, free must he be from the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless, conquer must he the phantom of fear. Those aspiring to mastery must liberate themselves from the darkness and ignorance that obscure their path. Mastery involves overcoming abstract obstacles and the intangible manifestations of fear. Knowing, must he gain of all the secrets, travel the pathway that leads through the darkness, yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. One must acquire knowledge of these secrets and navigate through the darkness while maintaining focus on the ultimate goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway, yet press on to the light of the sun. Despite encountering significant challenges, the aspirant must persistently strive toward enlightenment. Hear ye, O man! The sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. This highlights the sun as a symbol representing the ultimate enlightenment awaiting the seeker. Now to thee give I the secrets. How to meet the dark power, meet and conquer the fear from the night. This is about imparting the secrets for confronting and overcoming the dark forces and fears that obstruct the path to enlightenment. Only by knowing can ye conquer. Only by knowing can ye have light. He emphasizes that true conquest and illumination come through knowledge and understanding. Now I give unto thee the knowledge, known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this, the wisdom I give thee. Master, thou shalt be of the brothers of night. 
This presents the reader with the knowledge that the masters possess, which has the power to overcome all fears associated with darkness. He encourages us to utilize this wisdom provided, suggesting that through its application, one can attain mastery over the forces of darkness. When unto thee there comes a feeling, drawing thee nearer to the dark gate, examine thine heart and find if the feeling thou hast has come from within. Thoth advises introspection when one feels drawn towards darkness, urging the individual to discern whether such inclinations originate internally. If thou shalt find the darkness thine own thoughts, banish them forth from place in thy mind. If the source of the inclination towards darkness is identified as internal, Thoth recommends expelling these thoughts from the mind. Send through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and regular second, repeating time after time until free. To counteract these dark thoughts, Thoth suggests generating a wave of vibration through the body, initially irregular, then becoming regular through repetition until one is liberated. Start the wave force in thy brain center. Direct it in waves from thine head to thy foot. He instructs the individual to initiate this wave force from the brain center and direct it downwards through the body, facilitating the expulsion of dark influences. But if thou findest thine heart is not darkened, be sure that a force is directed to thee. If, upon examination, one realizes that their heart is not clouded by darkness, they should recognize that an external force is being directed towards them. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only by wisdom can thou hope to be free. Thoth emphasizes that understanding the nature of this external force is crucial to overcoming it, and freedom can only be achieved through wisdom. Knowledge brings wisdom, and wisdom is power. Attain, and ye shall have power or all. He highlights the relationship between knowledge, wisdom, and power, suggesting that acquiring knowledge leads to wisdom, which ultimately grants mastery over all things. Seek ye first a place bound with darkness. Place ye a circle around about thee. Stand erect in the midst of the circle. Thoth advises seeking out a location enveloped in darkness and creating a circle around oneself, standing upright within its bounds. Use thou this formula, and thou shalt be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. He provides a specific method, referred to as a formula, for liberation, instructing the individual to raise their hands towards the dark space above them. Close thou thine eyes and draw in the light. Thoth advises closing one's eyes and intentionally drawing in the light, likely as a symbolic act to counteract the surrounding darkness and invoke illumination and clarity. Fill thou my body with spirit of light. This is a call or invocation for the spirit of light to enter the individual's body, symbolizing the infusion of divine illumination and enlightenment. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness. The reference to the flower suggests a source of radiant energy or divine essence that transcends the darkness, symbolizing the inherent luminosity within the cosmos. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name, I the seven, three, four, five and six, seven, eight, nine. This evokes the image of celestial halls where powerful cosmic entities, referred to as the seven lords, exert their influence and authority. Thoth enumerates the seven lords by their numerical sequence, implying a specific order or hierarchy among them. By their names, I call them to aid me, free me, and save me from the darkness of night, Antanas, Quirtas, Chiatal, and Goyana, Werdal, Sembeta, Ardal. Here, Thoth calls upon each of the seven lords individually by name, seeking their assistance in freeing the individual from the darkness and bestowing upon them the light. By their names, I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. Thoth reiterates his plea to the seven lords, imploring them to liberate the individual from the grip of darkness and to imbue them with the radiant brilliance of light, signifying spiritual liberation and enlightenment. Know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the fetters that bind ye, cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. Thoth emphasizes that by following the prescribed ritual and invocation, one can liberate oneself from the chains of darkness imposed by the brothers of night, achieving spiritual freedom and enlightenment. See ye not that the names have the power to free by vibration the fetters that bind? Use them at need to free thou thine brother so he, too, may come forth from the night. Thoth explains the significance of the names he provided, 
suggesting that they possess inherent vibrational power capable of breaking the chains of darkness. He encourages the individual to use these names to liberate themselves and others from spiritual bondage. Thou, O oh man, art thy brother's helper. Let him not lie in the bondage of night. Thoth emphasizes the interconnectedness of humanity, urging individuals to assist their fellow beings in breaking free from the darkness and attaining enlightenment. Now unto thee, give I my magic. Take it and dwell on the pathway of light. Thoth offers his mystical knowledge and wisdom to the individual, inviting them to embrace the journey toward enlightenment and spiritual growth. Light unto thee, life unto thee, sun may thou be on the cycle above. Thoth concludes by bestowing blessings upon the individual, wishing them illumination, vitality, and a radiant existence aligned with the cosmic cycles of light. End of Tablet 6 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 7 Hark ye, zero man, and listen to my voice. Open thy mind space and drink of my wisdom. Dark is the pathway of life that ye travel. Many the pitfalls that lie in thy way. Thoth calls upon the listener to heed his words and open their mind to receive his teachings. He invites them to absorb his wisdom and insights. He also acknowledges the challenges and obstacles that individuals encounter on their life journey. He emphasizes the darkness and difficulties inherent in life's path. Seek ye ever to gain greater wisdom. Attain, and it shall be light on thy way. Thoth encourages the continuous pursuit of wisdom, suggesting that acquiring greater knowledge and understanding will illuminate the path ahead, making it easier to navigate. Open thy soul, O man, to the cosmic and let it flow in as one with thy soul. He advises the individual to open themselves to the cosmic forces and align their soul with the universal essence. By doing so, they can harmonize with the cosmic order and gain clarity. Light is eternal, and darkness is fleeting. Seek ye ever, zero man, for the light. Thoth emphasizes the eternal nature of light and the transient nature of darkness. He urges the listener to always strive for enlightenment and to seek the light which represents truth, knowledge, and spiritual clarity. Know ye that ever as light fills thy being, darkness for thee shall soon disappear. Thoth reassures the listener that as they embody the light and wisdom, darkness will fade away from their life. He emphasizes the transformative power of enlightenment in dispelling darkness and bringing clarity and understanding. Open thy soul to the brothers of brightness. Let them enter and fill thee with light. Thoth advises the listener to welcome the influences of enlightened beings or spiritual guides, referred to as the brothers of brightness, into their soul. By doing so, they can be infused with spiritual illumination and enlightenment. Lift up thine eyes to the light of the cosmos. Keep thou ever thy face to the goal. He encourages the individual to direct their attention toward the divine light emanating from the cosmos. They should maintain their focus on their spiritual aspirations or goals, remaining steadfast in their pursuit of enlightenment. Only by gaining the light of all wisdom art thou one with the infinite goal. Thoth emphasizes that true unity with the infinite cosmic purpose can only be achieved through the acquisition of comprehensive wisdom and spiritual understanding. It is through enlightenment that one aligns with the overarching purpose of existence. Seek ye ever the oneness eternal. Seek ye ever the light of the goal. He urges the listener to continuously seek unity with the eternal oneness of the universe and to strive toward the spiritual enlightenment symbolized by the divine light. This pursuit should be constant and unwavering. Light is infinite, and light is finite, separate only by darkness in man. This highlights the duality of light and darkness within human consciousness. While light is infinite and boundless, it can be obscured by the darkness of ignorance or negativity present within individuals. Seek ye to rend the veil of the darkness. Bring thou together the light into one. He advises the listener to transcend the limitations of darkness by metaphorically tearing apart the veil of ignorance and negativity. By unifying their consciousness with the divine light, they can achieve spiritual wholeness and enlightenment. Hear ye, O man! Listen to my voice singing the song of light and of life. This invites the listener to pay attention to his message, which resonates with the themes of light and life. His words carry the essence of enlightenment and vitality. Throughout all space, light is prevalent, 
encompassing all with its banners of flame. He asserts that light pervades the entirety of the cosmos, symbolizing divine presence and enlightenment. It extends everywhere, enveloping all existence with its radiant energy. Seek ye forever in the veil of the darkness, somewhere ye shall surely find light. This encourages perpetual seeking for illumination, even in the darkest or most obscure places. Thoth suggests that light can be discovered amidst the darkness, waiting to be unveiled by those who earnestly seek it. Hidden and buried, lost to man's knowledge, deep in the finite, the infinite exists. He points out that the infinite and divine essence is often concealed and unrecognized by humanity, buried beneath the surface of finite existence. Despite its apparent obscurity, the infinite exists within the finite realm. Lost, but existing, flowing through all things, living in all is the infinite brain. Thoth describes the omnipresence of infinite intelligence, which permeates and animates all aspects of creation. This divine intelligence, often overlooked or misunderstood, is inherent in all existence. In all space, there is only one wisdom. Though seeming divided, it is one in the one. He emphasizes the unity and singularity of wisdom across the cosmos despite appearances of division or diversity. All manifestations of wisdom ultimately stem from the same divine source. All that exists comes forth from the light, and the light comes forth from the all. Thoth concludes by asserting that all existence emanates from the primordial light, which originates from the ultimate source of all creation, often referred to as the ALL. Everything created is based upon order. Law rules the space where the infinite dwells. Thoth emphasizes the foundational role of order and law in the creation and functioning of the universe. He suggests that the infinite cosmos operates according to precise rules and principles that govern its structure and behavior. Forth from equilibrium came the great cycles, moving in harmony toward infinity's end. He describes how the great cycles of existence emerge from a state of equilibrium, progressing harmoniously toward the ultimate destination of infinity. This implies that the cycles of life and existence are in constant motion towards an eternal and infinite reality. Know ye, zero man, that far in the space-time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Thoth warns the listener that even the concept of infinity, which seems immutable and eternal, will eventually undergo transformation in the vast expanse of space and time. This highlights the dynamic nature of existence, where even the most fundamental aspects can evolve and change. Hear ye enlist to the voice of wisdom. Know that all is of all evermore. He urges the listener to pay attention to the wisdom being imparted, emphasizing the interconnectedness and unity of all things within the cosmos. This suggests that everything is interconnected and part of a larger whole, existing in a perpetual state of interrelation. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find ever more light on the way. Thoth encourages the pursuit of wisdom over time, suggesting that through continuous seeking and learning, one can gain deeper insights and understanding. This implies that the journey towards enlightenment is ongoing and that there is always more wisdom to be discovered. I, thou shalt find that ever receding, thy goal shall elude thee from day unto day. He cautions that despite the pursuit of wisdom and enlightenment, the ultimate goal may seem elusive and ever receding. This highlights the challenging and dynamic nature of the spiritual journey, where the goal may seem to shift or remain just out of reach. Long time ago, in the halls of Amenti, I, Thoth, stood before the lords of the cycles. Thoth recounts a significant event from his past where he found himself in the halls of Amenti, a mystical and sacred place, standing before powerful beings known as the lords of the cycles. This suggests a profound encounter or experience with divine or cosmic entities. Mighty, they in their aspects of power. Mighty, they in the wisdom unveiled. He describes the lords of the cycles as beings of immense power and wisdom, possessing insights and knowledge that transcend ordinary understanding. This emphasizes the profound nature of these entities and their significance in the cosmic order. Led by the dweller, first did I see them. But afterward, free was I of their presence, free to enter their conclave at will. Thoth explains that initially, he encountered these beings under the guidance or influence of a higher entity referred to as the Dweller. 
This indicates that his first encounter with the Lords of the Cycles was facilitated or initiated by another divine being or force. Despite initially being led by another entity, Thoth eventually gained the freedom to approach and enter the presence of the Lords of the Cycles independently. This suggests a progression in his spiritual development or stature, granting him direct access to these divine beings without intermediary assistance. Oft did I journey down the dark pathway unto the hall where the light ever glows. Thoth describes frequent visits or journeys he made down a dark pathway leading to a hall where an eternal light radiates. This imagery symbolizes his pursuit of spiritual enlightenment and the quest for higher knowledge, suggesting that he repeatedly sought wisdom and illumination in the presence of divine beings or within sacred spaces. Learned eye of the masters of cycles, wisdom brought from the cycles above us, knowledge brought from infinities all. Thoth indicates that he acquired knowledge and wisdom from the masters of cycles, who possess insights derived from higher realms or dimensions beyond human understanding. This wisdom is drawn from the infinite source of cosmic knowledge. Many the questions I asked of the lords of the cycles. Great was the wisdom they gave unto me. Thoth sought understanding by posing numerous questions to the lords of the cycles, who responded with profound and extensive wisdom. This suggests a dialogue or exchange between Thoth and these divine entities, with Thoth being the seeker of knowledge. Now unto thee, I give of this wisdom, drawn from the flame of infinity's fire. Having received enlightenment from the masters, Thoth now shares this wisdom with others. He metaphorically describes this wisdom as emanating from the eternal flame of cosmic knowledge, implying its timeless and universal nature. Deep in the dark halls sit the seven, units of consciousness from cycles above. Manifest they in this cycle as guide of man to the knowledge of all. Thoth describes the seven masters as beings of consciousness originating from higher cycles or dimensions. Despite dwelling in the dark halls, they serve as guides for humanity, leading individuals toward the attainment of universal knowledge and understanding. Seven are they, mighty in power, speaking these words through me to men. The seven masters possess great power and authority. Thoth suggests that he acts as a conduit or messenger through whom these divine beings convey their teachings and insights to humanity. Time after time, stood I before them listening to words that came not with sound. Thoth recounts his experiences of being in the presence of the seven masters repeatedly, listening to their teachings. The communication with these divine entities transcends ordinary speech, suggesting a form of telepathic or spiritual exchange of knowledge. Thoth's message in this passage can be interpreted as follows. Once said they unto me, O man, wouldst thou gain wisdom? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. The masters instruct Thoth that to acquire wisdom, one must seek it within the essence or core of the flame. This could symbolize the innermost essence or truth that lies within oneself or within the universal source of knowledge. Wouldst thou gain knowledge of power? Seek ye it in the heart of the flame. Similarly, the masters advise Thoth to seek knowledge of power within the same source, suggesting that true power and understanding are found within the most profound aspects of existence. Wouldst be one with the heart of the flame? Seek then within thine own hidden flame. To become unified or aligned with the essence of the flame, one must look within oneself, tapping into one's own inner flame or spiritual essence. This implies a journey of self-discovery and alignment with one's true nature. Many the times spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom not of the world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom brought from above. Thoth acknowledges the repeated teachings he received from the masters, which imparted wisdom that transcends mundane knowledge. These teachings illuminated new paths toward enlightenment and offered insights from higher realms or dimensions. Giving knowledge of operation, learning of law, the order of all. The masters provided Thoth with practical knowledge of how to operate within the cosmic order, understanding the universal laws that govern existence. This knowledge encompasses the fundamental principles and dynamics of the universe, guiding Thoth in his journey of spiritual growth and understanding. Spoke to me again the seven, saying, From far beyond time are we come, O man. Traveled we from beyond the space-time, I, from the place of infinity's end. The seven masters inform Thoth that they originate from a realm beyond the constraints of time and space, beyond the limits of the known universe. 
their existence transcends conventional notions of temporal and spatial boundaries. When ye and all of thy brethren were formless, formed forth were we from the order of all. Not as men are we once thought, we, too, were as men. They explain that while Thoth and his brethren were still formless, they were already in existence, emerging from the primordial order of the universe, which they refer to as the All. This suggests that the seven masters have a timeless and primordial nature. The masters clarify that although they are not currently in human form, they once assumed human-like manifestations. This indicates that their nature and existence transcend the limitations of mortal existence. Out of the great void were we formed forth in order and by law. They describe their origin as emerging from the great void, the source of all creation, according to a predetermined order and governed by universal laws. This highlights the structured and purposeful nature of their existence. For know ye that that which is formed truly is formless, having form only to thine eyes. The masters impart to Thoth the understanding that true existence transcends physical form, existing beyond the perception of mortal senses. They emphasize the illusory nature of form and the importance of seeing beyond superficial appearances. And again, unto me spoke the seven, saying, Child of the light, O Thoth, art thou, free to travel the bright path upward until at last all ones become one. Finally, the seven affirm Thoth's identity as a child of the light, indicating his connection to the spiritual essence and his freedom to progress along the path of enlightenment. They suggest that his journey will lead him toward unity with the ultimate source of all existence, where individuality merges into oneness. Fourth were we formed after our order, three, four, five and six, seven, eight, nine. Here, Thoth reveals the numerical sequence of the cycles from which the seven masters originate. Each cycle is represented by a number, from three to nine, signifying their unique attributes and roles within the cosmic order. Know ye that these are the number of cycles that we descend from unto man, each having here a duty to fulfill, each having here a force to control. Thoth explains that the seven masters descend from specific cycles, each associated with a numerical designation. This descent implies a connection to the various levels of existence and consciousness experienced by humanity. Within each cycle, the seven masters have distinct responsibilities and exert influence over specific forces or aspects of existence. This highlights their active role in guiding and shaping cosmic phenomena. Yet are we, one, with the soul of our cycle. Yet are we, two, seeking a goal. Despite their individual duties and powers, the seven masters are unified as one collective entity within the framework of their respective cycles. This unity underscores the interconnectedness and harmonious functioning of the cosmic order. Thoth reveals that the seven masters, despite their elevated status, are also on a journey of evolution and growth. They, too, have aspirations and aims that extend beyond their current state of being. Far beyond man's conception, infinity extends into a greater than all. Thoth describes the incomprehensible vastness of infinity which transcends human understanding and encompasses a reality beyond the confines of the known universe. There, in a time that is yet not a time, we shall all become one with a greater than all. He speaks of a transcendent state where all individual beings, including the seven masters, merge into a unified whole beyond conventional notions of time and space. Time and space are moving in circles. Know ye their law, and ye, too, shall be free. Thoth emphasizes the cyclical nature of time and space, suggesting that understanding their inherent laws grants liberation and freedom from their constraints. I, free shall ye be to move through the cycles, past the guardians that dwell at the door. By comprehending the laws governing time and space, individuals can navigate through the cycles of existence and transcend the guardians, symbolic of obstacles, that bar the way to higher levels of consciousness and enlightenment. Then to me spoke he of nine saying, Eons and eons have I existed, knowing not life, and tasting not death. Thoth recounts the words of the entity associated with the number nine, indicating an existence spanning countless ages without experiencing life or death in the conventional sense. For know ye, O man, that far in the future, life and death shall be one with the all. Thoth reveals a future state where life and death merge into a unified whole, 
transcending duality and becoming harmoniously integrated within the cosmic oneness. Each so perfected by balancing the other that neither exists in the oneness of all. In this unified state, life and death attain perfection through their mutual balance, ceasing to exist as separate phenomena within the boundless unity of the all. In men of this cycle, the life force is rampant, but life in its growth becomes one with the all. This describes the current state of humanity, where the life force is vibrant and prevalent. However, as life evolves and matures, it ultimately merges with the cosmic oneness. Here, I manifest in this your cycle, but yet am I there in your future of time. The entity associated with Nine explains its simultaneous presence in the current cycle of existence and in a future time beyond the constraints of conventional temporal perception. Yet to me, time exists not, for in my world, time exists not, for formless are we. Time holds no relevance for beings like the entity of Nine, as they exist in a formless state beyond the limitations of temporal progression. They inhabit a realm where time is a non-factor. Life have we not but yet have existence, fuller and greater and freer than thee. Despite lacking conventional life as understood by humans, beings like the entity of Nine possess a deeper, richer, and more liberated form of existence, transcending the limitations of embodied life. Man is a flame bound to a mountain, but we in our cycle shall ever be free. Thoth compares humanity to a flame tethered to a mountain, suggesting a state of limitation or constraint. In contrast, beings like Thoth, existing in a different cycle of existence, enjoy perpetual freedom. Know ye, O man, that when ye have progressed into the cycles that lengthen above, life itself will pass to the darkness, and only the essence of soul shall remain. This foretells a future progression for humanity into higher cycles of existence, where life as it is currently known will fade into obscurity. Only the essence of the soul, stripped of earthly trappings, will endure. Then to me spoke the Lord of the Eight saying, All that ye know is but part of little. Not as yet have ye touched on the great. Another entity, associated with the number eight, emphasizes the limited nature of human understanding. Despite humanity's accumulated knowledge, it represents only a fraction of the vast cosmic truths awaiting discovery. Far out in space where light reigns supreme, came I into the light. Formed was I also, but not as ye are. The entity associated with eight describes its origins in a realm where light is paramount. Like humanity, it also possessed a form, albeit one distinct from human form, upon entering this realm of light. Body of light was my formless form formed. Know I not life and know I not death, yet master am I of all that exists. Thoth describes his existence as a body of light, a formless state beyond the boundaries of life and death. Despite lacking conventional life or death experiences, he claims mastery over all existence. Seek ye to find the path through the barriers. Travel the road that leads to the light. Thoth encourages the pursuit of a path that transcends barriers, leading towards enlightenment or illumination symbolized by the light. This suggests a journey of spiritual growth and understanding. Spoke again to me the Nine saying, Seek ye to find the path to beyond. Continuing the discourse, another entity associated with the number nine advises seeking a path to transcendence, implying a quest for spiritual elevation beyond the confines of conventional existence. Not impossible is it to grow to a consciousness above. For when two have become one and one has become the all, know ye the barrier has lifted, and ye are made free of the road. The nine entity suggests that ascending to higher consciousness levels is achievable. It describes a state where duality merges into unity, symbolizing transcendence. When this unity is achieved, barriers dissipate, and one attains freedom from the limitations of the journey. Thus, through ages, I listened, learning the way to the all. Thoth reflects on his journey of enlightenment, spanning across ages, where he listened and learned the path leading to the ultimate unity with the all. Now lift I my thought to the all thing. List ye and hear when it calls. He directs his consciousness towards the concept of the all, urging others to listen and heed its call, indicating a profound connection with the universal essence. O light, all pervading, one with all and all with one, flow thou to me through the channel. Thoth invokes the omnipresent light, which is interconnected with everything, 
to flow into his being through a channel of connection or alignment. Enter thou so that I may be free. Make me one with the All Soul, shining from the blackness of night. He seeks unity with the All Soul, expressing a desire to transcend the darkness of ignorance or separation and become illuminated with the light. Free let me be of all space-time, free from the veil of the night. I, a child of the light, command, free from the darkness to be. Thoth asserts his innate connection with the light and commands liberation from the constraints of space, time, and the metaphorical veil of darkness, symbolizing ignorance or illusion. Formless am I to the light soul, formless yet shining with light. Thoth acknowledges his formless nature in comparison to the essence of the light soul but asserts his inherent luminosity or enlightenment. He recognizes that to merge with the light soul, he must transcend physical form and egoic identity. No I the bonds of the darkness must shatter and fall before light. He understands that the shackles of darkness, representing ignorance or limitation, must dissolve in the presence of divine illumination or enlightenment. Now give I this wisdom. Free may ye be, O man, living in light and in brightness. Thoth presents his teachings, emphasizing the potential for liberation and enlightenment for humanity, urging them to live in the radiance of spiritual illumination. Turn not thy face from the light. Thy soul dwells in realms of brightness. Ye are a child of the light. He advises against turning away from spiritual enlightenment, reminding individuals that their essence resides in luminous realms and that they are inherently connected to the divine light. Turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Find thou the light soul within. Thoth encourages introspection and inner exploration rather than seeking external validation or fulfillment. This prompts individuals to discover the divine essence within themselves, symbolized as the light soul. Know that thou art the master. All else is brought from within. He asserts the sovereignty of the individual's inner being, suggesting that true mastery and creative power originate from within, indicating the importance of self-awareness and self-realization. Grow thou to realms of brightness. Hold thou thy thought on the light. This encourages spiritual growth and evolution toward higher states of consciousness, urging individuals to focus their thoughts and intentions on the divine light, which leads to greater enlightenment and spiritual expansion. Know thou art one with the cosmos, a flame and a child of the light. He emphasizes the inherent unity and interconnectedness of all beings with the cosmos, describing individuals as both radiant flames and children of the divine light implying their divine origin and potential for spiritual growth and illumination. Now to thee give I warning, let not thy thought turn away. Thoth offers caution, advising against allowing one's thoughts to stray from the path of enlightenment and spiritual growth. Know that the brightness flows through thy body for I. He reminds individuals that the divine brightness, symbolizing spiritual illumination, is ever-present within them, suggesting that they are inherently connected to the divine light. Turn not to the dark brightness that comes from the Brothers of Black. Thoth warns against being swayed by the allure of darkness or negativity emanating from malevolent forces, referred to as the Brothers of Black, urging individuals to resist their influence. But keep thine eyes ever lifted, thy soul in tune with the light. He advises individuals to maintain a vigilant focus on spiritual enlightenment and to keep their souls aligned with the divine light, suggesting that this alignment serves as a safeguard against darkness. Take ye this wisdom and heed it. Listen to my voice and obey. Thoth encourages individuals to take his wisdom seriously and to pay attention to his guidance, urging them to follow his teachings obediently. Follow the pathway to brightness, and thou shalt be one with the way. He assures individuals that by following the path of spiritual enlightenment and aligning themselves with the divine light, they will achieve unity with the cosmic order and experience spiritual fulfillment. End of Tablet 7. Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 8. Unto thee, zero man, have I given my knowledge. Unto thee have I given of light. Hear ye now and receive my wisdom brought from space planes above and beyond. Thoth declares that he has bestowed his knowledge and enlightenment upon humanity, offering them access to divine wisdom and illumination. He urges people to listen attentively and receive the wisdom he brings from realms beyond earthly dimensions, emphasizing the transcendental nature of his teachings.
Not as man am I for free have I become of dimensions and planes. Thoth describes his own state of being, asserting that he transcends the limitations of human existence and has achieved freedom across various dimensions and planes of existence. In each, take I on a new body. In each, I change in my form. He explains that in each dimension or plane of existence, he assumes a new bodily form, undergoing transformations to adapt to different realms. Know I now that the formless is all there is of form. Thoth reveals his understanding that the essence of form is inherently formless, suggesting that true existence transcends physical appearance and material manifestation. Great is the wisdom of the seven. Mighty are they from beyond. Manifest they through their power, filled by force from beyond. He acknowledges the greatness and power of the seven, likely referring to higher beings or cosmic entities, indicating that they manifest their wisdom and influence from realms beyond human comprehension, drawing upon divine forces for their existence and actions. Hear ye these words of wisdom. Hear ye and make them thine own. He urges the listener to pay attention and internalize the wisdom he is about to impart. Find in them the formless. Find ye the key to beyond. Thoth suggests that within his words lies knowledge that transcends physical form and holds the key to accessing higher realms of existence. Mystery is but hidden knowledge. No, and ye shall unveil. He explains that what appears mysterious or incomprehensible is simply knowledge that is concealed or not yet understood. By seeking understanding, one can reveal these mysteries. Find the deep buried wisdom and be master of darkness and light. Deep are the mysteries around thee, hidden the secrets of old. Thoth encourages the listener to seek hidden wisdom, suggesting that by mastering this wisdom, one can transcend the dichotomy of darkness and light. He emphasizes the depth and secrecy of the mysteries that surround the listener, indicating that ancient secrets are waiting to be discovered. Search through the keys of my wisdom. Surely shall ye find the way. The gateway to power is secret, but he who attains shall receive. Thoth advises the listener to search through the wisdom he provides, asserting that they will inevitably find the path to enlightenment. He suggests that true power lies in hidden knowledge, and those who attain it will be rewarded. Look to the light. Oh, my brother! Open, and ye shall receive. Thoth encourages the listener to focus on the light, metaphorically representing enlightenment and assures them that by being open to it, they will receive its benefits. Press on through the valley of darkness. Overcome the dweller of the night. He advises perseverance through times of darkness and overcoming obstacles represented by the dweller of the night, which could symbolize ignorance or spiritual challenges. Keep ever thine eyes to the light plane, and thou shalt be one with the light. Thoth emphasizes the importance of focusing on enlightenment and spiritual growth, suggesting that by doing so, one can become unified with the divine light. Man is in the process of changing to forms that are not of this world. Grows he in time to the formless, a plane on the cycle above. Thoth suggests that humanity is undergoing a transformation toward states of existence beyond the physical realm. He explains that humans evolve over time toward formless states of existence, ascending to higher planes of reality beyond the material world. Know ye, ye must become formless before ye are one with the light. List ye, O man, to my voice, telling of the pathways to light, showing the way of attainment when ye shall be one with the light. Thoth emphasizes that one must transcend physical form and attain a formless state before achieving unity with divine enlightenment. He urges the listener to pay attention to his guidance, which reveals the paths toward spiritual enlightenment and unity with divine light. Search ye the mysteries of earth's heart. Learn of the law that exists, holding the stars in their balance by the force of the primordial mist. Seek ye the flame of the earth's life. Bathe in the glare of its flame. Thoth advises exploring the mysteries of the earth and understanding the cosmic laws that govern the universe, maintaining balance and order. He encourages seeking the essence of life on earth, symbolized by its flame, and immersing oneself in its radiance. Follow the three-cornered pathway until thou, too, art aflame. Thoth instructs following a specific pathway until one becomes like the flame of earth's life, suggesting a transformation into a radiant and illuminated state. 
Speak thou in words without voice to those who dwell down below. He advises communicating silently or through subtle means with those who are spiritually less awakened. Enter the blue litten temple and bathe in the fire of all life. No, O oh man, thou art complex, a being of earth and of fire. Thoth suggests entering a sacred space illuminated in blue light and immersing oneself in the divine energy present there. He reminds humanity of its multifaceted nature, comprising both earthly and celestial elements. Let thy flame shine out brightly. Be thou only the fire. This encourages individuals to let their inner divine flame shine brightly and to identify solely with their divine essence. Wisdom is hidden in darkness. When lit by the flame of the soul, find thou the wisdom and be light born, a son of the light without form. He explains that profound wisdom is often concealed in darkness but can be illuminated by the inner flame of the soul, transforming one into a radiant being of light. Seek the ever more wisdom. Find it in the heart of the flame. Know that only by striving can light pour into thy brain. Thoth advises the continual pursuit of wisdom, which can be found within the depths of the soul's inner flame. He emphasizes that enlightenment is attained through diligent effort and striving, allowing divine light to illuminate one's consciousness. Now have I spoken with wisdom. Listen to my voice and obey. Tear open the veils of the darkness. Shine a light on the way. Thoth concludes by affirming the wisdom shared and urges the listener to heed his guidance, dispelling darkness and illuminating the path ahead with divine light. Speak I of ancient Atlantis, speak of the days of the kingdom of shadows, speak of the coming of the children of shadows. Thoth introduces the topic of ancient Atlantis and the kingdom of shadows, referring to a time when shadowy beings arrived in Atlantis. Out of the great deep were they called by the wisdom of earthmen, called for the purpose of gaining great power. He explains that these shadowy beings were summoned from the depths by humans seeking great power and knowledge. Far in the past, before Atlantis existed, men, there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic, calling up beings from the great deep below us. Thoth describes a time before the existence of Atlantis when humans practiced dark magic and summoned beings from the depths below the earth. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration, existing unseen by the children of earthmen. He explains that these beings entered the earthly cycle, existing in a formless state and vibrating at a different frequency, making them invisible to humans. Only through blood could they have formed being. Only through man could they live in the world. This reveals that these shadowy beings could only take form and exist in the world through the use of human blood indicating a dark and malevolent nature. In ages past were they conquered by the masters, driven below to the place whence they came. But some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. He explains that in ancient times, these shadowy beings were defeated and banished by powerful masters and sent back to the depths from where they originated. Despite the banishment of most, some of these beings managed to evade capture and remained hidden in obscure dimensions and realms beyond human knowledge. Lived they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. I, when the blood was offered, forth came they to dwell among men. Thoth reveals that some of these beings dwelled in Atlantis, existing as elusive shadows, occasionally manifesting among humans. He explains that these beings would emerge from their hidden realms to interact with humans, particularly when offerings of blood were made, suggesting a malevolent connection between them and certain human rituals or practices. In the form of man moved they amongst us, but only to sight where they as are men. Serpent-headed when the glamour was lifted but appearing to man as men among men. He reveals that these beings could take on the appearance of humans and walk among humans undetected, appearing just like ordinary men to the naked eye. However, their proper form was serpent-headed, but this aspect was concealed by a magical illusion or glamour, allowing them to blend in seamlessly with human society. Crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men. They infiltrated important councils and gatherings, assuming forms identical to those of men, thereby gaining influence and power among human societies. Slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, taking their form and ruling or man. Using their dark arts and deceptive abilities, 
They assassinated leaders of kingdoms, assumed their identities, and took control over human civilizations. Only by magic could they be discovered. Only by sound could their faces be seen. Their true nature and identity could only be revealed through the use of magic, and their serpent-like faces could only be seen when specific sound frequencies were employed. Sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place. Their ultimate goal was to undermine humanity, destroy human societies, and usurp control over civilization, seeking dominion over humans from their realm of shadows. But, know ye, the masters were mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, able to send him back to his place. Thoth explains that the masters possessed extraordinary magical abilities, enabling them to unveil the true nature of the serpent-like beings and banish them to their realm. Came they to man and taught him the secret, the word that only a man can pronounce. The masters shared their knowledge with humanity, teaching them a powerful incantation or spell that could reveal and repel the serpent creatures. Swift, then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from place among men. Yet, beware, the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at times to the world. Using the secret word, the masters swiftly exposed the proper form of the serpent beings and expelled them from human society. Thoth warns that despite their expulsion, the serpent creatures still exist in a realm accessible to the world, suggesting that they remain a lurking threat. Unseen they walk among thee in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the semblance of men. These beings can still move unnoticed among humans, especially in areas where certain rituals or ceremonies have taken place. Over time, these creatures will once again assume human-like forms, potentially posing a renewed danger to humanity. Called may they be by the master who knows the white or the black, but only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh. Thoth suggests that those knowledgeable in both light and dark arts can summon these beings, but only those aligned with the light can effectively control and restrain them while in physical form. Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear. For only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. He advises against delving into dark realms as they harbor malevolent forces. Only those who have mastered the light can overcome the fear and darkness within these realms. Know ye, O my brother, that fear is a great obstacle. Be master of all in the brightness, the shadow will soon disappear. Thoth emphasizes the importance of overcoming fear, portraying it as a significant obstacle. By mastering oneself and embracing the light, one can dispel the shadows of fear and darkness. Hear ye and heed my wisdom, the voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light only will appear. He urges the listener to heed his counsel, emphasizing that the guidance from the light is unmistakable. By avoiding dark paths and embracing the light, one will only encounter illumination and clarity. List ye, O man, to the depth of my wisdom. Speak I of knowledge hidden from man. Thoth invites the listener to pay close attention to the profound wisdom he is about to impart, knowledge that has been concealed from ordinary understanding. Far have I been on my journey through space-time, even to the end of the space of this cycle. Found I there the great barrier, holding man from leaving this cycle. He describes his extensive travels through the dimensions of space-time, reaching the furthest limits of this particular cycle or epoch. Thoth encountered a formidable barrier that prevented individuals from transcending or departing from the confines of this cycle of existence. I glimpsed the hounds of the barrier, laying in wait for he who would pass them. He caught sight of the guardians or sentinels stationed at this barrier, depicted metaphorically as hounds, ready to intercept any entity attempting to surpass it. In that space where time exists not, faintly, I sensed the guardians of cycles. Thoth perceives these guardians in a dimension where time is irrelevant or non-existent, suggesting that they operate beyond conventional temporal constraints. Move they only through angles. Free are they not of the curved dimensions. He describes how these guardians navigate exclusively through angular dimensions, suggesting a mode of movement that transcends conventional spatial dimensions. Strange and terrible are the hounds of the barrier. Follow they consciousness to the limits of space. Think not to escape by entering your body, for follow they fast the soul through angles. 
The hounds of the barrier are depicted as mysterious and fearsome beings that pursue consciousness to the furthest reaches of space. Thoth warns against attempting to evade the hounds by retreating into one's physical body, as they can swiftly track and pursue the soul through nonlinear dimensions. Only the circle will give ye protection, safe from the claws of the dweller in angles. He advises that the only refuge from the hounds is within a protective circle, which shields one from the grasp of the dweller in angles, another entity associated with the barrier. Once, in a time past, I approached the great barrier and saw on the shores where time exists not, the formless forms of the hounds of the barrier. Thoth recounts his own experience nearing the great barrier and witnessing the formless shapes of the hounds on the boundary where time ceases to have meaning. I, hiding in the mist beyond time, I found them, and they, scenting me afar off, raised themselves and gave the great bell cry that can be heard from cycle to cycle and moved through space toward my soul. He describes how the hounds, upon detecting his presence, emitted a resounding cry that reverberated across cycles and space, converging towards his soul with the intent to intercept him. Fled I then fast before them, back from time's unthinkable end. But even after, I pursued them, moving in strange angles not known to man. Thoth describes his swift retreat upon encountering the hounds, fleeing from the boundary where time ceases to have meaning. Despite his attempt to escape, the hounds persistently pursued him, moving through unconventional angles and dimensions unfamiliar to humans. I, on the grey shore of time-space's end found I the hounds of the barrier, ravening for the soul who attempts the beyond. Fled I through circles back to my body. Thoth discovered the hounds waiting on the border between time and space, poised to intercept any soul venturing into the realms beyond. Thoth fled back to his physical body, seeking refuge within its protective confines. Fled, and fast after me they followed. I, after me, the devourers followed, seeking through angles to devour my soul. Despite his return to his body, the hounds continued their pursuit, relentlessly seeking to consume his soul as he navigated through the protective circles and angles. I, know ye man, that the soul who dares the barrier may be held in bondage by the hounds from beyond time. Dot, dot, quote. Thoth warns that a soul daring to cross the barrier risks being ensnared and held captive by the hounds, beings existing outside of conventional time. Quote, dot. Held till this cycle is all completed and left behind when the consciousness leaves. Such a soul may remain in bondage until the completion of the current cycle, only to be released when the consciousness departs from the cycle entirely. Entered I my body. Created the circles that know not angles created the form that from my form was formed. Made my body into a circle and lost the pursuers in the circles of time. Thoth recounts how he re-entered his physical body and constructed protective circles that defied the angles traversed by the hounds, creating a form that mirrored his physical self. By transforming his body into a circular form, Thoth eluded the pursuing hounds, finding sanctuary within the circles of time. But, even yet, when free from my body, Cautious ever must I be not to move through angles, else my soul might never be free. Thoth emphasizes the ongoing need for caution, warning that even when separated from his physical body, he must avoid traversing through angles to ensure the liberation of his soul. Know ye, the hounds of the barrier move only through angles and never through curves of space. Only by moving through curves can ye escape them, for in angles they will pursue thee. This elucidates that the hounds operate solely within angles of space and are unable to traverse curved pathways. He advises that escape from the hounds is possible only by navigating through curved spaces, as they are relentless in their pursuit within angular dimensions. Zero man, heed ye my warning. Seek not to break open the gate to beyond. Few there are who have succeeded in passing the barrier to the greater light that shines beyond. Thoth solemnly warns against attempting to breach the gate leading to realms beyond the barrier, emphasizing the dangers involved. He highlights the rarity of individuals who have successfully crossed the barrier to access the profound illumination that exists beyond. For know ye, ever the dwellers, seek such souls to hold in their thrall. Thoth cautions that the dwellers beyond the barrier perpetually seek to ensnare and control souls that venture into their domain, underscoring the gravity of the threat posed by these entities. Listen, O oh man, and heed ye my warning. 
seek ye to move not in angles but curves. Thoth advises against traversing through angular pathways and encourages movement along curved trajectories instead, which are safer from the pursuit of the hounds. And if while free from thy body, thou hearest the sound like the bay of a hound ringing clear and bell-like through thy being, flee back to thy body through circles, penetrate not the mist before. He warns that if one hears the distinct sound resembling the bay of a hound while in a disembodied state, they should swiftly return to their physical form using circular pathways and avoid venturing further into the mist. When thou hast entered the form thou hast dwelt in, use thou the cross and the circle combined. This instructs the individual to utilize both the symbol of the cross and the circle upon returning to their physical body as a means of protection and empowerment. Open thy mouth and use thou thy voice. Utter the word, and thou shalt be free. He advises the individual to vocalize a specific word or incantation upon re-entering their body, which will grant them freedom and liberation from any potential threat. Only the one who of light has the fullest can hope to pass by the guards of the way. And then must he move through strange curves and angles that are formed in direction not known to man. This underscores that only those who possess the fullest illumination of light can successfully navigate past the guardians of the way. Additionally, he mentions that even then, one must traverse through peculiar curves and angles that defy conventional human understanding. List ye, O man, and heed ye my warning. Attempt not to pass the guards in the way. Rather should ye seek to gain of thine own light and make thyself ready to pass on the way. Thoth advises against attempting to bypass or confront the guardians directly. Instead, he suggests a more prudent approach. He recommends focusing on cultivating one's inner light and preparing oneself for the journey ahead, indicating that inner readiness is crucial for progress. Light is thine ultimate end, O oh my brother. Thoth emphasizes that the ultimate destination and goal for every individual is to attain light, symbolizing enlightenment and spiritual ascension. Seek and find ever the light on thy way. He encourages continual seeking and discovery of light along one's spiritual path suggesting that the journey toward enlightenment is ongoing and transformative. End of Tablet 8 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 9 List ye, O man, hear ye my voice, teaching of wisdom and light in this cycle, teaching ye how to banish the darkness, teaching ye how to bring light in thy life. Thoth urges individuals to pay attention and listen to his guidance, which pertains to the acquisition of wisdom and the manifestation of light in their lives. He emphasizes the importance of dispelling darkness and embracing illumination. Seek ye, O man, to find the great pathway that leads to eternal life as a son. Draw ye away from the veil of the darkness. Seek to become a light in the world. He encourages seekers to embark on a quest to discover the profound path that leads to everlasting life, symbolized by becoming a radiant sun. Thoth further advises individuals to distance themselves from the obscurity of darkness and aspire to embody light, becoming beacons of illumination amidst the shadows. Make of thyself a vessel for light, a focus for the sun of this space. He advises individuals to transform themselves into vessels capable of containing light, acting as focal points for the radiant energy emanating from the cosmic sun within their surroundings. Lift thou thine eyes to the cosmos. Lift thou thine eyes to the light. He urges people to direct their gaze towards the vastness of the universe and the radiant light that permeates it, symbolizing spiritual enlightenment and cosmic wisdom. Speak in the words of the dweller, the chant that calls down the light. This encourages individuals to use the language of the divine, invoking sacred chants or mantras that attract and harness the power of light. Sing thou the song of freedom. Sing thou the song of the soul. He suggests that individuals express their innermost essence and aspirations through song, resonating with the melodies of liberation and spiritual essence. Create the high vibration that will make thee one with the whole. Blend all thyself with the cosmos. Grow into one with the light. Thoth advises individuals to cultivate a state of elevated consciousness and resonance, aligning themselves with the harmonious vibrations of the universe to achieve unity with the cosmic whole. He also emphasizes the importance of integrating one's being with the cosmic essence and evolving toward unity with the divine light. Be thou a channel of order, a pathway of law to the world. 
This encourages individuals to serve as conduits for cosmic order and spiritual law, facilitating the transmission of divine principles and wisdom to the world. Thy light, O man, is the great light, shining through the shadow of flesh. Free must thou rise from the darkness before thou art one with the light. He reminds individuals that their inner light is inherently powerful and transcendent, capable of shining through the veils of material existence. However, true unity with the divine light can only be achieved by liberating oneself from the shadows of ignorance and limitation. Shadows of darkness surround thee. Life fills thee with its flow. But no, O oh man, thou must arise and forth from thy body go far to the plains that surround thee and yet are one with thee, too. Thoth acknowledges the pervasive presence of darkness and the dynamic energy of life that permeates existence. He further urges individuals to transcend the limitations of physical reality and explore the higher planes of consciousness that coexist with and are interconnected to the material realm. Look all around thee, O oh man. See thine own light reflected. I, even in the darkness around thee, thine own light pours forth through the veil. He encourages individuals to recognize the intrinsic luminosity of their being, emphasizing that even amidst darkness, their inner light shines through. Seek thou for wisdom always. Let not thine body betray. Keep in the path of the light wave. Shun thou the darkened way. Thoth advises individuals to continuously seek wisdom and spiritual enlightenment, remaining steadfast in their alignment with the path of light and avoiding the pitfalls of darkness and ignorance. Know thee that wisdom is lasting, existing since the all soul began, creating harmony from chaos by the law that exists in the way. He emphasizes the eternal nature of wisdom, which has existed since the inception of the universal soul, bringing order and harmony out of chaos through the immutable laws of the cosmos. List ye, O man, to the teaching of wisdom. List to the voice that speaks of the past time. I, I shall tell thee knowledge forgotten. Tell ye of wisdom hidden in past time, lost in the midst of darkness around me. Thoth urges individuals to pay attention and heed the teachings of ancient wisdom, which illuminate knowledge from times long past. He promises to reveal forgotten knowledge and wisdom that has been obscured by the veil of time and ignorance, offering insights hidden within the depths of history. Know ye, man, ye are the ultimate of all things. This reminds humanity of their inherent greatness and potential, emphasizing that humans possess the ultimate essence among all beings. Only the knowledge of this is forgotten, lost when man was cast into bondage, bound and fettered by the chains of the darkness. He explains that the awareness of humanity's supreme nature has been lost over time, obscured by the chains of ignorance and spiritual bondage, leading to forgetfulness of their true essence. Long, long ago, I cast off my body. Thoth recalls a distant past when he shed his physical form, indicating a transition to a state of pure spirit. Wandered I free through the vastness of ether, circled the angles that hold man in bondage. He describes his liberated state, roaming freely through the expansive realms of the ether, traversing the cosmic dimensions that constrain humanity. Know ye, O oh man, ye are only a spirit. The body is nothing. The soul is all. Thoth emphasizes the primacy of the spirit over the physical body, asserting that true essence resides in the soul, which transcends the limitations of corporeal existence. Let not your body be a fetter. Cast off the darkness and travel in light. He urges individuals not to allow their physical form to restrict their spiritual journey, encouraging them to embrace enlightenment and ascend into the realms of light. Cast off your body, O oh man, and be free, truly a light that is one with the light. Thoth implores humanity to liberate themselves from the shackles of materiality, envisioning a state of pure illumination where the individual merges with the universal light. When ye are free from the fetters of darkness and travel in space as a son of the light, then ye shall know that space is not boundless but truly bounded by angles and curves. He suggests that true freedom from darkness enables one to perceive the structure of space, understanding that it is not infinite but defined by geometric dimensions. Know ye, O oh man, that all that exists is only an aspect of greater things yet to come. This hints at the interconnectedness of existence, implying that the visible world is but a facet of a grander reality yet to be fully realized. 
Matter is fluid and flows like a stream, constantly changing from one thing to another. He elucidates the dynamic nature of matter, likening it to a flowing stream that undergoes perpetual transformation, illustrating the inherent flux and impermanence of physical existence. All through the ages has knowledge existed, never been changed, though buried in darkness, never been lost, though forgotten by man. Thoth asserts that knowledge has always existed throughout time, remaining unchanged despite being obscured or forgotten by humanity. Know ye that throughout the space that ye dwell in are others as great as your own, interlaced through the heart of your matter yet separate in the space of their own. He reveals the existence of other realms or dimensions coexisting within the same space as our own, intricately connected to our reality yet distinct in their spatial arrangements. Once in a time long forgotten, I, Thoth, opened the doorway, penetrated into other spaces, and learned of the secrets concealed. Thoth recounts a past event where he personally accessed these other dimensions, discovering hidden secrets and knowledge concealed within their depths. Deep in the essence of matter are many mysteries concealed. He suggests that within the fundamental nature of matter lie numerous enigmatic truths and mysteries waiting to be uncovered and understood. Nine are the interlocked dimensions, and nine are the cycles of space. Nine are the diffusions of consciousness, and nine are the worlds within worlds. Thoth describes nine interconnected dimensions and nine corresponding cycles of space, indicating a complex structure to the fabric of reality. He further elaborates that consciousness is dispersed across nine levels, each containing nested worlds within them, suggesting layers of existence beyond our immediate perception. I, nine are the lords and the cycles that come from above and below. Thoth emphasizes the significance of the number nine, which represents both the governing forces, lords, and the cyclical nature of existence originating from higher and lower dimensions. Space is filled with concealed ones, for space is divided by time. He suggests that space is populated with concealed entities or beings, implying that the division of space by time creates opportunities for concealment or hidden presence. Seek ye the key to the time space, and ye shall unlock the gate. Thoth advises seeking an understanding of the relationship between time and space, suggesting that such knowledge holds the key to unlocking deeper truths or access to hidden realms. Know ye that throughout the time space, consciousness surely exists. Though from our knowledge it is hidden, yet still it forever exists. He asserts the existence of consciousness throughout time and space, regardless of whether it is readily perceptible or concealed from our understanding, emphasizing its eternal nature. The key to worlds within thee are found only within. For man is the gateway of mystery and the key that is one within one. Seek ye within the circle. Use the word I shall give. Thoth emphasizes that access to the inner world lies within oneself, as humans serve as the gateway to mysteries and possess the key to unlocking profound truths within their own being. He advises seeking within the inner circle of one's being and employing a specific word or concept that he will provide, suggesting a method for unlocking inner realms. Open the gateway within thee, and sure thou, too, shalt live. Man, ye think that ye liveth, but know it is life within death. Thoth assures that by opening the internal gateway, one can truly experience life in its fullest sense, indicating that actual existence transcends physical boundaries. He contrasts the limited perception of life experienced within the physical body with the deeper understanding that true life exists within the realm beyond physical death. For as sure as ye are bound to your body, for you know life exists. This underscores the idea that life bound solely to the physical body lacks actual vitality or freedom. Only the soul is space-free, has a life that is really a life. All else is only a bondage, a fetter from which to be free. He highlights the soul as the entity that transcends physical limitations and experiences true life. In contrast, everything else, including the physical body, is viewed as a form of bondage that restricts the soul's true essence. Think not that man is earth-born, though come from the earth he may be. He suggests that despite being born into earthly existence, humans possess a spiritual origin beyond the physical realm. Man is a light-born spirit. But, without knowing, he can never be free. Thoth emphasizes that humanity originates from a realm of light and spirit, but without self-awareness and spiritual understanding, true freedom cannot be attained. 
darkness fetters the soul. Only the one who is seeking may ever hope to be free. Shadows around thee are falling. Darkness fills all the spaces. He warns that spiritual ignorance and darkness bind the soul, and only those who actively seek enlightenment can break free from these constraints. Thoth describes the pervasive influence of darkness and ignorance in the world, symbolized by shadows and filling all spaces. Shine forth, zero light of the man's soul. Fill thou the darkness of space. He urges individuals to awaken their inner light and radiate it to dispel the darkness and ignorance that surround them. Ye are a son of the great light. Remember, and ye shall be free. This reminds humans of their inherent connection to the divine light, encouraging them to remember this truth to attain liberation. Stay not thou in the shadows. Spring forth from the darkness of night. He advises against remaining in the shadows of ignorance and urges individuals to emerge into the light of knowledge and understanding. Light, let thy soul be, zero sun born, filled with glory of light, freed from the bonds of darkness, a soul that is one with the light. Thoth concludes by envisioning the soul liberated from darkness, shining with the glory of light, and unified with the divine essence, symbolizing ultimate freedom and enlightenment. Thou art the key to all wisdom. Within thee is all time and space. Live not in bondage to darkness. Free thou thy light form from night. He emphasizes that individuals hold the potential to access infinite wisdom within themselves as they embody all dimensions of time and space. Thoth advises against being enslaved by ignorance and darkness, urging individuals to liberate their spiritual essence from the shadows of ignorance. Great light that fills all the cosmos flow thou fully to man. Make of his body a light torch that shall never be quenched among men. He invokes the universal light to permeate humanity fully, transforming their physical bodies into eternal beacons of light that inspire others. Long in the past, sought I wisdom, knowledge not known to man. Far to the past, I traveled into the space where time began. Thoth recounts his personal quest for wisdom seeking knowledge beyond human understanding. He describes journeying back to the origins of time and space in search of profound knowledge. Sought I ever new knowledge to add to the wisdom I know. Yet only, I found, did the future hold the key to the wisdom I sought. Thoth's quest for wisdom was continuous, driven by a desire to expand his understanding further. Ultimately, he discovered that the future held the answers he sought implying that enlightenment and more profound wisdom are inherent in the unfolding of time and events rather than dwelling solely in the past. Down to the halls of Amenti I journeyed, the greater knowledge to seek. Asked of the lords of the cycles, the way to the wisdom I sought. Thoth describes his purposeful descent into the halls of Amenti, a sacred place where profound wisdom is sought. He seeks guidance from the powerful beings known as the lords of the cycles, inquiring about the origin of all existence. Asked the lords this question, where is the source of all? Answered, in mighty tones, the voice of the Lord of the Nine, free thou thy soul from thy body and come forth with me to the light. This poses a fundamental question about the ultimate source and origin of existence to the lords of the cycles. The Lord of the Nine responds with a powerful and resounding voice, instructing Thoth to free his soul from his physical body and join them in the realm of light to find the answer. Fourth I came from my body, a glittering flame in the night. Stood I before the lords, bathed in the fire of life. Thoth obeys the command and separates his consciousness from his physical form, manifesting as a radiant and luminous presence. In his liberated state, Thoth stands before the lords of the cycles, enveloped in the divine energy and vitality of existence. Seized was I then by a force, great beyond knowledge of man. He experiences a profound and overwhelming force, transcending human understanding, which propels him into the abyss through realms unknown to mortal consciousness. Saw I molding of order from the chaos and angles of night. Thoth observes the emergence of order and structure from the primordial chaos and darkness, witnessing the transformation of formless chaos into organized patterns. Saw I the light spring from order and heard the voice of the light. He witnesses the birth of light from the established order and perceives the divine voice emanating from this light, symbolizing illumination and wisdom. 
saw I the flame of the abyss, casting forth order and light. Thoth beholds the fiery essence of the abyss, from which both order and light emanate, symbolizing the creative power that brings harmony and enlightenment. Saw order spring out of chaos. Saw the light giving forth life. He observes the inherent order arising from chaos and recognizes how light, as a symbol of enlightenment and vitality, brings forth life and existence. Then heard I the voice. Hear thou and understand. The flame is the source of all things, containing all things in potentiality. Thoth hears a divine voice imparting profound wisdom, explaining that the flame represents the ultimate source of all existence, containing within it the potential for all manifestations. The order that sent forth light is the Word, and from the Word comes life and the existence of all. The voice further elucidates that the order which generates light is equivalent to the divine Word, from which all life and existence originate. And again spoke the voice saying, The life in thee is the Word. Find thou the life within thee, and have powers to use of the Word. Continuing its discourse, the voice reveals that the essence of life within each individual is synonymous with the divine Word, granting those who discover it the power to wield the creative force inherent in the Word. Long I watched the light flame, pouring forth from the essence of fire, realizing that life is but order and that man is one with the fire. Thoth describes his contemplation of the radiant flame emanating from the essence of fire, leading him to understand that life is synonymous with divine order and that humanity shares a fundamental connection with the fiery essence. Back I came to my body. Stood again with the nine. Listened to the voice of the cycles, vibrate with powers they spoke. Thoth returns to his physical form after his spiritual journey and revelations in the presence of the divine. He resumes his presence among the nine the divine entities representing the cycles of existence, and listens as their voices resonate with profound authority and wisdom. Know ye, zero thoth, that life is but the word of the fire. The life force ye seek before thee is but the word in the world as a fire. The voice of the cycles addresses thoth directly, affirming that life itself is the manifestation of the divine word inherent within the fiery essence. It is revealed that the life force Thoth seeks is none other than the divine word expressed in the world as the fiery essence, emphasizing the inherent creative power and vitality within all existence. Seek ye the path to the word, and powers shall surely be thine. Thoth is encouraged to seek the path leading to the divine word, as doing so will grant him access to profound powers and enlightenment. Then asked I of the nine, O Lord, show me the path. Give me the path to the wisdom. Show me the way to the word. Thoth humbly seeks guidance from the divine entities, asking for the path to wisdom and enlightenment, as well as the way to access the divine word. Answered me then, the Lord of the Nine, through order, ye shall find the way. The Lord of the Nine responds, stating that the path to wisdom and the divine word lies through the principle of order. Saw ye not that the word came from chaos? Saw ye not that light came from the fire? The Lord reminds Thoth of the universal principle that order and creation emerge from chaos, drawing parallels between the creation of the divine word and the emergence of light from fire. Look in thy life for disorder. Balance and order thy life. Quell all the chaos of emotions, and thou shalt have order in life. Thoth is advised to examine his life for disorder and emotional chaos and to strive for balance and order as achieving inner harmony will lead to order in life. Order brought forth from chaos will bring thee the word of the source, will give thee the power of cycles, and make of thy soul a force that free will extend through the ages, a perfected sun from the source. The Lord explains that by cultivating order from chaos, Thoth will attain access to the divine word, gain mastery over the cycles of existence, and transform his soul into a powerful force that will endure through the ages, emanating divine light and wisdom. Listened I to the voice and deep sank the words in my heart. Thoth attentively listened to the divine counsel and internalized the wisdom imparted, allowing the words to deeply resonate within him. Forever have I sought for order that I might draw on the word. Thoth acknowledges his enduring quest for order, recognizing its importance in accessing the divine word and unlocking its power. Know ye that he who attains it must ever in order be. 
Thoth emphasizes the essential connection between attaining the word and maintaining order in one's life, suggesting that orderliness is a prerequisite for accessing the divine power. For use of the word through disorder has never and can never be. Thoth highlights the impossibility of harnessing the power of the word while in a state of disorder or chaos, emphasizing the necessity of orderliness in utilizing its potency. Take ye these words, O man. As part of thy life, let them be. Thoth implores mankind to heed and integrate these teachings into their lives, recognizing their significance in spiritual growth and enlightenment. Seek thee to conquer disorder, and one with the word thou shalt be. Thoth concludes by urging individuals to strive for mastery over disorder, emphasizing that by doing so, they will align themselves with the divine word and its transformative power. Put forth thy effort in gaining light on the pathway of life. Thoth advises individuals to exert themselves in seeking enlightenment and understanding as they traverse the journey of life. Seek to be one with the sun state. Seek to be solely the light. Here, Thoth encourages the pursuit of unity with the sun state, which symbolizes the highest level of spiritual illumination and enlightenment. He further suggests striving to embody and radiate light in all aspects of one's being, indicating a transformation towards spiritual purity and enlightenment. Hold thou thy thought on the oneness of light with the body of man. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining a focused awareness of the unity of light with the human form, suggesting a harmonious integration of spiritual and physical existence. Know that all is order from chaos born into light. This imparts a profound understanding of the cosmic principle that order emerges from chaos, ultimately leading to enlightenment and the manifestation of light. End of Tablet 9 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 10. List ye, O man. Take of my wisdom. Learn of the deep hidden mysteries of space. Thoth calls upon humanity to pay attention and absorb the knowledge he is about to impart. He also urges individuals to explore and understand the profound and concealed secrets of the cosmos. Learn of the thought that grew in the abyss, bringing order and harmony in space. He introduces the concept of a primordial thought that emerged from the abyss, fostering order and harmony in the vast expanse of space. Know ye, O man, that all that exists has been only because of the law. Know ye the law, and ye shall be free, never be bound by the fetters of night. Thoth emphasizes the fundamental role of universal laws in sustaining existence and order. He suggests that understanding and aligning with these laws liberates individuals from the constraints of ignorance and darkness. Far, through strange spaces, have I journeyed into the depth of the abyss of time, learning strange and yet stranger mysteries, until in the end all was revealed. Thoth describes his own journey through mysterious realms and epics, acquiring knowledge until he attained complete understanding. Know ye that mystery is only mystery when it is knowledge unknown to man. He clarifies that what is mysterious to humans is merely knowledge yet to be discovered or understood. When you have plumbed the heart of all mystery, knowledge, and wisdom will surely be thine. He suggests that delving deep into the core of mysteries will ultimately lead to the acquisition of knowledge and wisdom. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret whereby ye may be free of this space. This advises seekers to understand the concept of time as it holds the key to transcending limitations imposed by the physical realm. Long have I, Thoth, sought wisdom. I, and shall seek to eternity's end for no I that ever before receding shall move the goal I seek to attain. He reflects on his own endless quest for wisdom, acknowledging that the pursuit of knowledge is perpetual and that the goal of enlightenment continually evolves. Even the lords of the cycles know that not yet have they reached the goal for with all of their wisdom, they know that truth ever grows. Thoth highlights that even the highest beings, the lords of the cycles, recognize that they have not fully achieved their ultimate goal, as the pursuit of truth is infinite and continuously expanding. Once, in a past time, I spoke to the dweller. Asked of the mystery of time and space. Asked him the question that surged in my being, saying, O oh Master, what is time? Thoth recalls a previous interaction with the dweller, during which he sought understanding about the nature of time and space. Thoth posed a question about time, expressing his inner curiosity and seeking enlightenment from the dweller. Then to me spoke he, the master. Know ye, 
O Thoth, in the beginning, there was void and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless nothingness. And into the nothingness came a thought, purposeful, all-pervading, and it filled the void. The dweller responds by explaining that initially, there was only an empty void devoid of time and space, a state of absolute nothingness. The dweller describes how a profound and omnipresent thought emerged within the void, imbuing it with purpose and pervading every aspect of existence. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex of vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. In this state, there was no physical matter, only an omnipotent force characterized by movement and vibrations generated by the purposeful thought that permeated the void. And I questioned the master, saying, Was this thought eternal? And answered me the dweller, saying, In the beginning, there was eternal thought, and for thought to be eternal, time must exist. Thoth seeks clarification from the dweller, asking whether the initial thought was eternal. The dweller responds, affirming that the initial thought was indeed eternal, and to support infinite thought, time must also exist. So into the all-pervading thought grew the law of time. I. Time which exists through all space, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement that is eternally in a state of fixation. The dweller explains that from the omnipresent thought emerged the concept of time, which permeates all space and exists in a continuous, unchanging rhythm. Time changes not, but all things change in time. Time is the force that holds events separately, each in its proper place. Time is not in motion, but ye move through time as your consciousness moves from one event to another. Time itself remains constant, but it serves as the framework within which events unfold and change. It ensures that events are distinct and occur in their appropriate sequence. While time itself does not move, individuals traverse through time as their consciousness transitions from one moment to the next. I, by time ye exist, all in all, an eternal one existence. Know ye that even though in time ye are separate, yet still are one and all times existent. Despite experiencing separate moments in time, individuals collectively exist within an eternal oneness, transcending temporal distinctions. Ceased then the voice of the dweller, and departed I to ponder on time. For knew I that in these words lay wisdom and a way to explore the mysteries of time. Thoth concludes by reflecting on the wisdom imparted by the dweller's words, recognizing their profound significance in unraveling the mysteries of time, prompting him to further contemplate its nature and implications. Often did I ponder the words of the dweller. Then sought I to solve the mystery of time. Thoth frequently contemplated the teachings of the dweller and embarked on a journey to unravel the enigma of time. Found I that time moves through strange angles. Yet only by curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to the time space. Thoth discovered that time progresses in unconventional patterns, not adhering to straightforward paths. He further realized that he could unlock the secrets of time space only by navigating through curved trajectories. Found I that only by moving upward and yet again by moving to right ward could I be free from the time of this movement. He understood that freedom from the constraints of time required ascending and then proceeding in a rightward direction. Fourth, I came from out of my body, moved in the movements that changed me in time. Strange were the sights I saw in my journeys, many the mysteries that opened to view. Thoth describes his departure from his physical body and his immersion into movements that altered his perception of time. During his explorations, Thoth encountered peculiar phenomena and uncovered numerous mysteries. I, saw I man's beginning, learned from the past that nothing is new. In his journey through time, Thoth witnessed the origins of humanity, realizing that the events of the past often repeat themselves, highlighting the cyclical nature of existence. Seek ye, zero man, to learn the pathway that leads through the spaces that are formed forth in time. This encourages mankind to seek knowledge of the path that traverses the dimensions of time. Forget not, zero man, with all of thy seeking that light is the goal ye shall seek to attain. Search ye ever for light on thy pathway, and ever for thee the goal shall endure. Thoth emphasizes that amidst all endeavors, the ultimate objective is to attain light. He advises the continuous pursuit of light along life's journey, ensuring that the goal remains steadfast. Let not thine heart turn ever to darkness. 
Light let thine soul be, a sun on the way. Thoth warns against allowing the heart to succumb to darkness or negativity. He further urges individuals to let their souls radiate with light, illuminating their path like a sun. Know ye that in the eternal brightness, ye shall ever find thy soul hid in the light, never fettered by bondage to darkness, ever it shines forth a sun of the light. He assures that within the eternal brilliance of light, the soul remains sheltered, untouched by the confines of darkness, perpetually shining as a beacon of light. I no, though hidden in darkness, your soul, a spark of the true flame, exists. Be ye one with the greatest of all lights. Thoth emphasizes that despite being concealed by darkness, the soul retains a spark of the true divine essence. He advises unity with the ultimate source of light, aligning oneself with the highest divine illumination. Find at the source the end of thy goal. Light is life, for without the great light, nothing can ever exist. Thoth suggests seeking the ultimate origin, the culmination of one's spiritual journey. He asserts that light is synonymous with life itself fundamental to existence. Know ye, that in all formed matter, the heart of light always exists. This reveals that within all material forms, the essence of light persists, regardless of external appearances. I, even though bound in the darkness, inherent light always exists. He affirms that even amidst darkness and limitation, an intrinsic light remains present, awaiting acknowledgement and realization. Once I stood in the halls of Amenti and heard the voice of the lords of Amenti, saying in tones that rang through the silence, words of power, mighty and potent. Thoth describes standing in the sacred halls and hearing the commanding voices of the divine rulers, resonating with powerful words that reverberated through the stillness, conveying immense authority. Chanted they the song of the cycles, the words that opened the path to beyond. The lords of Amenti recited a sacred chant or incantation that revealed the intricate patterns of the cosmic cycles, unlocking the pathway to transcendence and higher realms. I, I saw the great path opened and looked for an instant into the beyond. Thoth affirms witnessing the unveiling of a vast pathway that led to realms beyond ordinary perception, granting him a fleeting glimpse into the boundless expanse of the universe. Saw I the movements of the cycles, vast as the thought of the source could convey. He observed the intricate movements and patterns of the cosmic cycles, vast and profound, echoing the limitless expansiveness of the divine consciousness from which they originated. Knew I then that even infinity is moving on to some unthinkable end. Thoth understood that even the concept of infinity is subject to change or progression toward an unimaginable conclusion. Saw I that the cosmos is order and part of a movement that extends to all space, a part of an order of orders, constantly moving in a harmony of space. He perceived that the universe operates within a framework of order, participating in a vast and harmonious movement that encompasses all of space. Saw I the wheeling of cycles like vast circles across the sky. Knew I then that all that has being is growing to meet yet other being in a far-off grouping of space and of time. Thoth observed the cyclical nature of existence, likening it to the rotation of immense circles stretching across the celestial expanse. He further realized that everything in existence is evolving and progressing to intersect with other forms of being in distant regions of space and time. Knew I then that in words are power to open the planes that are hidden from man. I, that even in words lies hidden the key that will open above and below. Thoth understood the inherent potency of words, recognizing their ability to unlock hidden dimensions and realms beyond the ordinary perception of humanity. He affirmed that within words lies the concealed key capable of unveiling realms both higher and lower, transcending the limitations of conventional understanding. Hark ye now, man, this word I leave with thee. Use it, and ye shall find power in its sound. Yet must ye understand that man is of light and light is of man. Thoth introduces the word, Zin Uru, and suggests that its invocation carries potent power when spoken. He emphasizes the intrinsic connection between humanity and light, suggesting that the essence of man is intertwined with luminosity. List ye, zero man, and hear a mystery stranger than all that lies beneath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all space is filled by worlds within worlds, aye, one within the other yet separate by law. 
This invites the listener to pay attention and receive knowledge of a mystery that surpasses all conventional understanding. Furthermore, it reveals the existence of multiple realms nested within each other, governed by distinct laws, yet occupying the same space. Once, in my search for deep buried wisdom, I opened the door that barred them from man. Called I from other planes of being, one who was fairer than the daughters of men. Thoth recounts an instance when he breached a barrier separating other beings from humanity, driven by his quest for hidden knowledge. He summoned a being from higher dimensions, possessing beauty surpassing that of human women, to manifest as a guiding light in the world of mortals. Used I the drum of the serpent. Wore I the robe of the purple and gold. Thoth describes his ceremonial attire, indicating the use of a specific drum associated with serpentine symbolism and wearing a robe adorned with purple and gold, colors often linked to royalty and spiritual significance. Placed on my head, I, the crown of silver. Around me, the circle of cinnabar shone. He adorned himself with a silver crown and was surrounded by the shining circle of cinnabar, indicating his ceremonial regalia and the setting's ambiance. Raised I my arms and cried the invocation that opens the path to the plains beyond, cried to the lords of the signs in their houses. Thoth performed a gesture of invocation, lifting his arms, and uttered a ritualistic chant aimed at accessing other planes of existence, calling upon the celestial entities known as the lords of the signs. Lords of the two horizons, watchers of the treble gates, stand ye one at the right and one at the left as the star rises to his throne and rules over his sign. He addresses the celestial beings, invoking their presence and positioning them symbolically in relation to cosmic alignments. I, thou dark prince of Arulu, open the gates of the dim, hidden land and release her whom ye keep imprisoned. Thoth calls upon a dark prince, possibly a supernatural entity, to unlock the gates of a concealed realm and liberate an individual held captive therein. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, dark lords and shining ones and by their secret names, names which I know and can pronounce, hear ye and obey my will. Thoth calls upon both dark lords and shining ones, invoking their attention by uttering their secret names, indicating his familiarity and authority in commanding them to heed his will. Lit I then with flame my circle and called her in the space planes beyond. He describes the ritual act of lighting a circle with flame, a symbolic act of spiritual purification and protection before summoning the entity from the higher dimensions beyond earthly existence. Daughter of Light returned from Arulu. Seven times and seven times have I passed through the fire. Food have I not eaten. Water have I not drunk. Thoth addresses the entity as the Daughter of Light and commands her to return from the realm of Arulu. He emphasizes his endurance and spiritual purification, having undergone trials symbolized by passing through fire without sustenance. I call thee from Arulu, from the realm of Ekershegel, I summon thee, Lady of Light. He reiterates his command, summoning the entity from the specific realm of Arulu, mentioning the realm of Ekershegel, and referring to her as the Lady of Light, indicating her divine nature or spiritual essence. Then before me rose the dark figures, I, the figures of the lords of Arulu. Parted they before me, and forth came the Lady of Light. Thoth describes the manifestation of the dark figures, the lords of Arulu, who previously held the Lady of Light captive. The dark figures yield to Thoth's authority, allowing the Lady of Light to approach and be liberated from their influence. Free was she now from the lords of the night, free to live in the light of the earth sun, free to live as a child of light. With her liberation, the Lady of Light is now free from the influence of the dark lords and can exist in the earthly realm basking in the light of the sun and embodying her divine nature. Hear ye and listen, zero my children. Magic is knowledge, and only is law. Be not afraid of the power within thee, for it follows law as the stars in the sky. Thoth imparts wisdom to his listeners, emphasizing that magic is intertwined with knowledge and governed by universal laws. He encourages them not to fear their inherent power, as it is subject to the same rules that govern the cosmos. Know ye that to he without knowledge, wisdom is magic and not of the law. But know ye that ever ye by your knowledge can approach closer to a place in the sun. This underscores the importance of knowledge in understanding the true nature of magic and its alignment with universal laws. He suggests that through acquiring knowledge, 
individuals can ascend spiritually and draw closer to enlightenment, symbolized by a place in the sun. List ye, my children, follow my teaching. Be ye ever seeker of light. Thoth calls upon his listeners to pay attention and heed his teachings. He encourages them to continuously seek enlightenment and wisdom. Shine in the world of men all around thee, a light on the path that shall shine among men. Follow ye and learn of my magic. Thoth advises them to embody their enlightenment and become beacons of light, guiding others on the path to spiritual growth. He invites them to follow him and learn the mysteries of his magic, likely referring to spiritual and esoteric knowledge. Know that all force is thine if thou wilt. Fear not the path that leads thee to knowledge, but rather shun ye the dark road. Thoth reassures them that they possess the power to shape their reality if they choose to harness it. He advises against fearing the pursuit of knowledge but warns against following paths that lead to ignorance or spiritual darkness. Light is thine, O man, for the taking. Cast off the fetters, and thou shalt be free. Thoth asserts that enlightenment and spiritual liberation are accessible to humanity. He advises individuals to release themselves from the constraints that hold them back, suggesting that freedom comes from overcoming limitations. Know ye that thy soul is living in bondage fettered by fear that holds ye in thrall. This highlights the idea that the soul is often constrained by fear, preventing individuals from realizing their true potential. Open thy eyes and see the great sunlight. Be not afraid for all is thine own. He encourages people to awaken to the divine light within themselves and not to fear, as everything ultimately belongs to them. Fear is the lord of dark Arulu to he who has never faced the dark fear. Thoth explains that fear dominates those who have never confronted and overcome their deepest fears. I know that fear has existence created by those who are bound by their fears. He suggests that fear is a construct of those who are themselves controlled by fear. Shake off thy bondage, O children, and walk in the light of the glorious day. Thoth urges individuals to liberate themselves from their fears and embrace the light of truth and enlightenment. Never turn thy thoughts to the darkness, and surely ye shall be one with the light. He advises against dwelling on negative thoughts or succumbing to darkness, emphasizing the importance of aligning oneself with the light of spiritual truth and wisdom. Man is only what he believeth, a brother of darkness or a child of the light. This emphasizes the power of belief in shaping one's identity and experience. It further suggests that individuals can perceive themselves either as aligned with darkness or as embodiments of light, depending on their beliefs. Come thou into the light, my children. Walk in the pathway that leads to the sun. He invites individuals to embrace the light and follow the path of enlightenment and spiritual growth, which leads to ultimate truth and understanding. Hark ye now and listen to the wisdom. Use thou the word I have given unto thee. Thoth urges his audience to pay attention and heed the wisdom he imparts. He encourages them to utilize the teachings and guidance he provides. Use it, and surely thou shalt find power and wisdom and light to walk in the way. He assures that by applying the teachings and using the given word, individuals will gain power, wisdom, and illumination to navigate their spiritual journey effectively. Seek thee and find the key I have given and ever shalt thou be a child of the light. Thoth encourages seekers to actively search for and discover the key to enlightenment that he has provided. He promises that by doing so, they will perpetually embody the essence of light and truth. End of Tablet 10 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 11 Hear ye and list ye, O children of Chem, to the words that I give that shall bring ye to the light. Thoth begins by calling upon the people of Kem, ancient Egypt, to pay attention and listen closely to the words he is about to impart, which he claims will guide them toward enlightenment or spiritual illumination. Ye know, O men, that I knew your fathers, I, your fathers, a long time ago. Deathless have I been through all the ages, living among ye since your knowledge began. Thoth reminds the people that he has been present among them for generations having known their ancestors in a distant past. He asserts his immortality, claiming to have existed throughout countless ages and to have been present among humanity since the beginning of their knowledge or civilization. Leading ye upward to the light of the great soul have I ever striven, drawing ye from out of the darkness of night. 
Thoth explains his purpose and mission, to guide humanity toward spiritual enlightenment and the illumination of the great soul. He claims to have continuously endeavored to lead people out of spiritual darkness and towards the light of higher consciousness. Know ye, O people amongst whom I walk, that I, Thoth, have all of the knowledge and all of the wisdom known to man since the ancient days. Thoth asserts to the people he interacts with that he possesses all knowledge and wisdom known to humanity since ancient times. He also further establishes his authority as a keeper and transmitter of profound knowledge. Keeper have I been of the secrets of the great race, holder of the key that leads into life. Here, Thoth claims to have safeguarded the secrets of a significant lineage or civilization, serving as the keeper of knowledge that unlocks the pathway to true existence or enlightenment. Bringer up have I been to ye, O my children, even from the darkness of the ancient of days. Thoth describes his role as a guide or mentor to the people he addresses, leading them out of spiritual darkness and ignorance, even from the distant past. List ye now to the words of my wisdom. List ye now to the message I bring. Thoth urges the people to pay attention and listen closely to the wisdom he is about to impart, emphasizing the importance of his message. Hear ye now the words I give thee, and ye shall be raised from the darkness to light. Thoth promises that by listening to his words, the people will be elevated from spiritual darkness to enlightenment, guided toward the light of higher consciousness. Far in the past, when first I came to thee, found I thee in caves of rocks. Lifted I thee by my power and wisdom until thou didst shine as men among men. Thoth recalls encountering humanity in primitive conditions, dwelling in caves made of rocks. He further describes how he used his power and wisdom to elevate humanity from a primitive state to a more advanced level, allowing them to stand as equals among their fellow humans. I, found I thee without any knowing. Only a little were ye raised beyond beasts. Thoth acknowledges that when he first encountered humanity, they lacked knowledge and were scarcely more advanced than animals. Fanned I ever the spark of thy consciousness until at last, ye flamed as men. Thoth explains how he nurtured and cultivated the budding consciousness of humanity until they reached a level of intellectual and spiritual development comparable to modern humans. Now shall I speak to thee knowledge ancient beyond the thought of thy race. Thoth indicates his intention to impart ancient knowledge to humanity that surpasses their current understanding or capabilities. Know ye that we of the great race had and have knowledge that is more than man's. Thoth asserts that his own race, the great race, possesses knowledge and wisdom that exceeds that of humanity. Wisdom we gain from the star-born races, wisdom, and knowledge far beyond man's. Thoth reveals that his race acquired wisdom from civilizations originating from the stars, granting them insights and knowledge beyond what humanity has attained. Down to us had descended the masters of wisdom as far beyond us as I am from thee. Thoth explains that his race received teachings and guidance from beings of even greater wisdom, who were vastly superior to them, much like how he is superior to humanity. List ye now while I give ye wisdom. Use it, and free thou shalt be. Thoth urges humanity to listen attentively to the wisdom he is about to impart, suggesting that by using this knowledge, they will attain freedom or liberation. Know ye that in the pyramid I built are the keys that shall show ye the way into life. I, draw ye a line from the great image I built to the apex of the pyramid, built as a gateway. Thoth informs the listeners that within the pyramid he constructed, there are keys or clues that will reveal the path to true existence or enlightenment. Thoth instructs us to draw a line from a significant image he created within the pyramid to the apex or top of the pyramid, which is designed as a gateway or entrance. Draw ye another opposite in the same angle and direction. Dig ye and find that which I have hidden. Thoth further instructs them to draw another line opposite to the first one, maintaining the same angle and direction. He further directs us to dig or excavate the area where the lines intersect. There shall ye find the underground entrance to the secrets hidden before ye were men. Thoth reveals that by following his instructions and excavating the indicated spot, they will discover an underground entrance leading to ancient secrets that existed long before humanity's existence. Tell ye I now of the mystery of cycles that move in movements that are strange to the finite, for infinite are they beyond the knowledge of man. Thoth introduces the concept of cycles, emphasizing their enigmatic nature, 
which transcends human comprehension due to their infinite complexity. Know ye that there are nine of the cycles, I, nine above and fourteen below, moving in harmony to the place of joining that shall exist in the future of time. He specifies that there are nine cycles above and fourteen below, implying a hierarchical structure, all converging towards a future point of union or convergence. Know ye that the lords of the cycles are units of consciousness sent from the others to unify this with the all. Thoth elucidates that the lords of the cycles, entities of consciousness, are tasked with the unification of the individual cycles with the overarching cosmic totality. Highest are they of the consciousness of all the cycles, working in harmony with the law. He emphasizes the elevated status of these lords of the cycles, possessing supreme consciousness and operating in accordance with universal laws governing cosmic order. Know they that in time all will be perfected, having none above and none below, but all one in a perfected infinity, a harmony of all in the oneness of all. Thoth concludes by asserting that eventually, all cycles will attain perfection, reaching a state where there are no superior or inferior positions but rather a unified harmony within the boundless expanse of infinity. In essence, Thoth's discourse unveils the intricate dynamics of cosmic cycles, elucidating their hierarchical structure, purpose, and eventual culmination in a harmonious unity within the infinite expanse of existence. Deep beneath Earth's surface in the halls of Amenti sit the seven, the lords of the cycles, I, and another, the lord from below. Thoth describes the location of the halls of Amenti, situated deep beneath the Earth's surface, where the seven lords of the cycles reside. Additionally, he mentions another entity, referred to as the lord from below, suggesting the presence of cosmic forces both above and below. Yet know thee that in infinity there is neither above nor below. He clarifies that in the infinite expanse of infinity, the concepts of above and below are relevant, as everything exists in a unified totality without hierarchical distinctions. But ever there is and ever shall be oneness of all when all is complete. Thoth asserts the eternal presence and eventual attainment of oneness within the all, emphasizing a state of completeness and unity once all aspects of existence reach their fulfillment. Oft have I stood before the lords of the all. Thoth reveals his personal experience of standing in the presence of the Lords of the All, indicating his access to profound cosmic wisdom and guidance. Oft at the fount of their wisdom have drunken and filled both my body and soul with their light. He further elaborates on his interactions with the Lords of the All, describing how he has metaphorically drunk from the source of their wisdom, absorbing their divine light into both his physical body and soul, implying spiritual enlightenment and nourishment. Spake they to me and told me of cycles and the law that gives them the means to exist. Thoth recounts how the lords of the nine communicated with him, imparting knowledge about cosmic cycles and the fundamental law that governs their existence. I spake to me the lord of the nine saying, O oh, Thoth, great are ye among earth's children, but mysteries exist of which ye know not. Thoth relays the words of the Lord of the Nine, acknowledging his greatness among humanity but also pointing out that there are mysteries beyond his current understanding. Ye know that ye came from a space-time below this and know ye shall travel to a space-time beyond. The Lord of the Nine reminds Thoth of his origins from a previous space-time and indicates that he will journey to another space-time in the future. But little ye know of the mysteries within them, little ye know of the wisdom beyond. Despite Thoth's knowledge of his past and future existence, the Lord of the Nine suggests that there are more profound mysteries and wisdom yet to be uncovered within these cosmic cycles. Know ye that ye as a whole in this consciousness are only a cell in the process of growth. The Lord of the Nine emphasizes that Thoth, along with humanity as a whole, is but a small part of a larger process of cosmic evolution and growth. The consciousness below thee is ever expanding in different ways from those known to thee. I, it, though in space-time below thee, is ever growing in ways that are different from those that were part of the ways of thine own. Thoth suggests that consciousness existing in realms or dimensions below human consciousness is continually evolving in ways that differ from those experienced by humans. He then reiterates that despite being in a lower dimension or space-time, this consciousness continues to develop in ways distinct from the human experience. For know that it grows as a result of thy growth but not in the same way that thou didst grow. The growth that thou had and have in the present have brought into being a cause and effect. 
Thoth explains that the growth of consciousness below humans is influenced by human development, but it unfolds differently. Human growth and development create a causal relationship that affects the growth of consciousness in lower dimensions. No consciousness follows the path of those before it, else all would be repetition and vain. Each consciousness in the cycle it exists in follows its own path to the ultimate goal. Thoth emphasizes that each consciousness follows its unique path of evolution. Otherwise, existence would be repetitive and devoid of purpose. He asserts that every consciousness, within its respective cycle of existence, progresses along its individual journey toward an ultimate objective or destiny. Each plays its part in the plan of the cosmos. Each plays its part in the ultimate end. This underscores that every consciousness contributes to the grand scheme of the universe and plays a role in the ultimate culmination of existence. The farther the cycle, the greater its knowledge and ability to blend the law of the whole. He concludes by stating that as cycles progress, consciousness gains greater wisdom and becomes more adept at aligning with the universal laws governing existence. Know ye, that ye in the cycles below us are working the minor parts of the law, while we of the cycle that extends to infinity take of the striving and build greater law. Thoth begins by emphasizing the hierarchical nature of the cosmic cycles, explaining that consciousness in lower cycles operates on a smaller scale, dealing with minor aspects of universal laws. In contrast, consciousness in higher cycles, like his own, engages in grander endeavors, contributing to the development and expansion of profound cosmic laws. Each has his own part to play in the cycles. Each has his work to complete in his way. He underscores the idea that every level of consciousness has a unique role to fulfill within the cosmic scheme. Each entity, whether in lower or higher cycles, has specific tasks and responsibilities tailored to its level of awareness and capacity. The cycle below thee is yet not below thee but only formed for a need that exists. Thoth clarifies that although the lower cycles may seem inferior, they are not inherently lesser but rather fulfill a necessary purpose within the cosmic order. Each cycle serves a distinct function, contributing to the overall harmony and balance of the universe. For know ye that the fountain of wisdom that sends forth the cycles is eternally seeking new powers to gain. Here, Thoth reveals the driving force behind the creation and perpetuation of cosmic cycles, the eternal quest for wisdom and growth. The source of these cycles continuously seeks to expand its knowledge and capabilities, driving the evolution of consciousness across the cosmos. Ye know that knowledge is gained only by practice, and wisdom comes forth only from knowledge, and thus are the cycles created by law. Thoth concludes by highlighting the fundamental principles governing the development of consciousness. Knowledge is acquired through experience, and wisdom emerges from this knowledge. The cycles exist as a manifestation of these cosmic laws, serving as vehicles for the evolution and enlightenment of consciousness. Means are they for the gaining of knowledge for the plane of law that is the source of the all. Thoth explains that the various cycles serve as methods or pathways through which knowledge is acquired, ultimately leading towards understanding the fundamental laws that govern the entire universe. The cycle below is not truly below but only different in space and in time. Thoth clarifies that the lower cycles are not inherently inferior but merely different in terms of spatial and temporal aspects compared to higher cycles. The consciousness there is working and testing lesser things than those ye are. He describes how consciousness in lower cycles engages in activities and experiences that are of lesser complexity or significance compared to those encountered by consciousness in higher cycles. And no, just as ye are working on greater, so above ye are those who are also working as ye are on yet other laws. Thoth points out that just as humans work on understanding greater laws within their own cycle, there are beings in higher cycles doing the same, albeit with even more advanced laws. The difference that exists between the cycles is only in the ability to work with the law. He emphasizes that the disparity between cycles lies in the capacity of consciousness to comprehend and utilize the laws that govern existence. We, who have been in cycles beyond thee, are those who first came forth from the source and have in the passage through time-space gained the ability to use laws of the greater that are far beyond the conception of man. Thoth explains that beings in cycles beyond humanity have evolved to a point where they can utilize laws of greater complexity and scope, having originated from the ultimate source and evolved through experiences in time and space. Nothing there is that is really below thee but only a different operation of law. 
He concludes by reaffirming that there is no inherent inferiority in lower cycles. Instead, they represent a different manifestation or operation of universal laws. Look thee above or look thee below, the same shall ye find. For all is but part of the oneness that is at the source of the law. This emphasizes the unity and interconnectedness of all levels of existence, whether higher or lower. He suggests that despite their apparent differences, all aspects of reality are interconnected and stem from the same ultimate source. The consciousness below thee is part thine own as we are a part of thine. He states that the consciousness existing in lower cycles is interconnected with and inseparable from the consciousness in higher cycles, much like how all consciousness is interconnected. Ye, as a child, had not the knowledge that came to ye when ye became a man. Thoth draws a parallel between the growth of consciousness and the development of an individual from childhood to adulthood. He suggests that just as children gain knowledge and understanding as they grow older, consciousness also evolves and gains wisdom over time. Compare ye the cycles to man in his journey from birth unto death, and see in the cycle below thee the child with the knowledge he has, and see ye yourself as the child grown older, advancing in knowledge as time passes on. This encourages us to liken the progression of consciousness through cycles to the stages of human development, where each cycle represents a different stage of growth. This then prompts us to envision the lower cycles as children with limited knowledge, while higher cycles represent individuals who have grown older and acquired more wisdom over time. See ye, we, also, the child grown to manhood with the knowledge and wisdom that came with the years. Thoth includes himself and others in higher cycles as individuals who have matured and gained wisdom through the passage of time and experience. So also, O Thoth, are the cycles of consciousness, children in different stages of growth, yet all from the one source, the wisdom, and all to the wisdom returning again. He concludes by reiterating that the cycles of consciousness, like individuals, progress through stages of growth and development all originating from the same ultimate source of wisdom and returning to it again in a continuous cycle of evolution. Ceased then he from speaking and sat in the silence that comes to the lords. Thoth describes a pause in the conversation, where the speaker, presumably a higher being or deity, stops talking and enters a contemplative silence typical of enlightened beings. Then again spake he unto me, saying, O Thoth, long have we sat in a menti, guarding the flame of life in the halls. The speaker resumes speaking, addressing Thoth directly. They mention their prolonged presence in Amenti, a mythical realm often associated with the afterlife or the underworld, where they have been tasked with safeguarding the essence of life. Yet no, we are still part of our cycles with our vision reaching unto them and beyond. Despite their custodial role in Amenti, the speaker asserts their continued involvement in the cosmic cycles, suggesting that their awareness extends both to the cycles themselves and beyond their immediate responsibilities. I know we that of all, nothing else matters except the growth we can gain with our soul. The speaker emphasizes the paramount importance of spiritual growth, asserting that nothing else holds significance compared to the advancement of the soul. Know we the flesh is fleeting. The things men count great are nothing to us. They highlight the impermanence of physical existence and the insignificance of material possessions or achievements in the grand scheme of spiritual evolution. The things we seek are not of the body but are only the perfected state of the soul. The speaker emphasizes their focus on spiritual development and the attainment of a perfected state of consciousness rather than pursuing worldly desires or ambitions. When ye as men can learn that nothing but the progress of soul can count in the end, then truly ye are free from all bondage free to work in a harmony of law. They conclude by suggesting that true freedom and liberation from worldly constraints come only when individuals prioritize the advancement of their souls above all else, enabling them to align with the laws of the universe and work in harmony with them. No, zero man, ye should aim at perfection, for only thus can ye attain to the goal. Thoth advises humanity to strive for perfection, recognizing it as the ultimate objective to be pursued in life as it is essential for reaching one's goals or fulfilling one's purpose. Though ye should know that nothing is perfect, yet it should be thy aim and thy goal. He acknowledges the inherent imperfection of the world but suggests that striving for perfection should still be a primary focus and aspiration for individuals. Ceased again the voice of the nine, and into my consciousness, the words had sunk. 
Thoth describes the cessation of communication from the nine, presumably divine or enlightened beings, indicating that their message has deeply impacted his consciousness. Now, seek I ever more wisdom that I may be perfect in law with the all. He expresses his renewed determination to pursue wisdom continuously, aiming to align himself perfectly with the universal laws that govern existence. Soon go I down to the halls of Amenti to live neath the cold flower of life. Thoth announces his forthcoming journey to the halls of Amenti, a realm often associated with the afterlife or spiritual enlightenment, where he will reside and continue his pursuit of wisdom. Ye whom I have taught shall never more see me. Yet live I forever in the wisdom I taught. He informs his students that they will no longer have physical contact with him, but his teachings and wisdom will endure indefinitely. All that man is is because of his wisdom. All that he shall be is the result of his cause. Thoth concludes by emphasizing the profound influence of wisdom on human existence, suggesting that individuals' present and future states are determined by their level of wisdom and the causes they have set in motion. List ye now to my voice and become greater than common man. Lift thine eyes upward, let light fill thy being, be thou ever children of light. Thoth urges his audience to pay attention to his words and strive for greatness beyond the ordinary. He advises them to look upwards metaphorically, seeking spiritual enlightenment and allowing light, symbolic of wisdom and higher consciousness, to permeate their entire being. He encourages them to embody the essence of light and goodness. Only by effort shall ye grow upward to the plane where light is the all of the all. Be ye the master of all that surrounds thee. Never be mastered by the effects of thy life. Thoth emphasizes the necessity of effort and diligence in spiritual growth, suggesting that only through dedicated striving can one ascend to a higher level of consciousness where light represents the ultimate reality. He advises his listeners to exert control over their circumstances and surroundings rather than being controlled or influenced by external factors. This implies the importance of self-mastery and autonomy. Create then ever more perfect causes, and in time shalt thou be a son of the light. Thoth encourages the creation of positive and virtuous actions, causes, which will eventually lead to the attainment of a radiant and enlightened state, symbolized by being a son of the light. Free. Let thine soul soar ever upward, free from the bondage and fetters of night. He advocates for the liberation of the soul from darkness and limitations, allowing it to ascend toward greater spiritual heights. Lift thine eyes to the sun in the sky space. For thee, let it be a symbol of life. Thoth suggests that the sun can serve as a symbol of life and vitality, encouraging his audience to perceive it as such and draw inspiration from its energy and radiance. Know that thou art the greater light, perfect in thine own sphere, when thou art free. He reminds them of their inherent potential to embody the qualities of light and perfection, suggesting that true freedom leads to self-realization and enlightenment. Look not ever into the blackness. Lift up thine eyes to the space above. Free let thine light flame upward, and shalt thou be a child of the light. Thoth advises against dwelling on negativity or darkness and encourages his audience to focus on the higher realms of light and spirituality. By doing so, they can embody the essence of light and become children of light themselves. End of Tablet 11 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 12 List ye, zero man, to the words of my wisdom. List to the voice of Thoth, the Atlantean. Thoth urges his audience to pay attention to his words and listen to his wisdom, identifying himself as Thoth, a figure associated with ancient Atlantis known for his knowledge and teachings. Conquered have I the law of time-space. Knowledge have I gained of the future of time. He claims to have mastered the principles governing time and space, asserting his understanding of the future unfolding in time. Know I that man in his movement through space-time shall ever be one with the all. Thoth expresses his belief that human beings, as they navigate through the dimensions of space and time, are interconnected with the universe in its entirety. Know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read. He asserts that the future is accessible to those who possess the ability to perceive and comprehend it, likening it to an open book waiting to be read. All effect shall bring forth its causes as all effects grew from the first cause. 
Thoth suggests that every outcome or consequence is the result of its underlying cause, tracing back to the initial cause or origin. Know ye the future is not fixed or stable but varies as cause brings forth an effect. He explains that the future is not predetermined or unchangeable but is subject to change based on the causes that produce different effects. Look in the cause thou shalt bring into being, and surely thou shalt see that all is effect. Thoth advises his audience to examine the causes they set into motion, emphasizing the interconnectedness of causes and effects and suggesting that understanding the cause will reveal the nature of its corresponding effect. So, zero man. Be sure the effects that you bring forth are ever causes of more perfect effects. Thoth advises humans to ensure that the outcomes they create serve as catalysts for even better outcomes in the future. He emphasizes the importance of generating positive and beneficial effects through one's actions. Know ye the future is never in fixation but follows man's free will as it moves through the movements of time space toward the goal where a new time begins. He explains that the future is not predetermined or fixed but is shaped by human free will as individuals navigate through the dimensions of time and space. The future unfolds dynamically as people exercise their freedom to make choices, leading towards the emergence of new possibilities and eventualities. Man can only read the future through the causes that bring the effects. Thoth asserts that humans can only understand or predict the future by examining the underlying causes that produce particular effects. By understanding causation, individuals gain insight into the direction and potential outcomes of future events. Seek ye within the causation, and surely ye shall find the effects. He encourages his audience to delve into the root causes of phenomena, suggesting that understanding the causes will reveal the corresponding effects. By examining the underlying factors at play, individuals can anticipate and comprehend the consequences that follow. List ye, zero man. While I speak of the future, speak of the effect that follows the cause. Thoth instructs his audience to pay attention as he discusses future events, focusing specifically on the effects that arise from their underlying causes. He directs them to consider the consequences of actions and decisions. Know ye that man in his journey light ward is ever seeking escape from the night that surrounds him, like the shadows that surround the stars in the sky and like the stars in the sky space, he, too, shall shine from the shadows of night. Thoth metaphorically describes humanity's quest for enlightenment, comparing it to stars emerging from the darkness of the night sky. He suggests that, like stars, humans strive to transcend the darkness and illuminate their path with the light of knowledge and wisdom. Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. Thoth suggests that humanity's ultimate destiny is to merge or unite with the universal light symbolizing enlightenment or spiritual fulfillment. I, though his way lies midst the shadows, ever before him glows the great light. He acknowledges that while humans may journey through periods of darkness or challenges, the divine light is always present, guiding and illuminating their path. Dark though the way be yet shall he conquer the shadows that flow around him like night. Thoth assures that despite encountering darkness or difficulties, humans have the capacity to overcome and transcend these challenges, symbolized by conquering the shadows. Far in the future, I see man as light-born, free from the darkness that fetters the soul, living in light without the bounds of the darkness to cover the light that is light of their soul. Thoth envisions a future where humanity is spiritually enlightened, liberated from the constraints of darkness that inhibit the soul, and living fully immersed in divine light without any obstacles to obscure their inner radiance. Know ye, zero man, before ye attain this that many the dark shadows shall fall on your light striving to quench with the shadows of darkness the light of the soul that strives to be free. He warns that on the path toward enlightenment, individuals will encounter numerous challenges and obstacles, represented metaphorically as dark shadows attempting to extinguish or suppress the soul's light. These challenges may come in various forms but serve to test and strengthen the soul's resolve in its quest for liberation. Great is the struggle between light and darkness, age old and yet ever new. Thoth acknowledges the ongoing and timeless conflict between forces symbolized by light and darkness. This struggle is portrayed as both ancient, having persisted throughout history, and perpetually renewed in different contexts or epochs. Yet, no in a time, far in the future, light shall be all, and darkness shall fall. He prophesies that in the distant future, 
light will ultimately prevail, symbolizing the triumph of enlightenment and goodness over ignorance and evil. This suggests a hopeful vision of eventual spiritual evolution and enlightenment for humanity. List ye, O man, to my words of wisdom. Prepare, and ye shall not bind your light. Thoth urges his audience to pay attention to his teachings and advises them to prepare themselves spiritually. By doing so, they can avoid suppressing or obstructing their inner light, suggesting that readiness and spiritual growth are essential for maintaining and expressing one's enlightenment. Man has risen, and man has fallen as ever new waves of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us toward the sun of their goal. Thoth reflects on the cyclical nature of human history, where civilizations and individuals have experienced periods of ascent and decline. He metaphorically describes consciousness as waves flowing from a mysterious and profound source, the great abyss, toward an enlightened destination, the sun. This imagery suggests the continuous journey of humanity toward spiritual enlightenment, marked by cycles of growth and regression. Ye, my children, have risen from a state that was little above the beast until now of all men ye are greatest. Thoth acknowledges the evolution of humanity from a primitive state barely above animals to the current pinnacle of civilization. He refers to his audience as his children, highlighting their growth and development. Yet before thee were others greater than thee. Thoth reminds his audience that there were civilizations or beings preceding them that achieved greater heights of greatness or wisdom. Yet tell I thee as before the others have fallen, so also shall ye come to an end. He warns that just as previous civilizations or beings have declined or perished, so too will their current civilization eventually meet its end. This statement suggests the inevitability of the rise and fall of civilizations. And upon the land where ye dwell now, barbarians shall dwell and in turn rise to light. Thoth predicts that after their civilization falls, less advanced societies or barbarians will inhabit the land. However, he suggests that even these less advanced cultures will eventually progress and ascend towards enlightenment. Forgotten shall be the ancient wisdom, yet ever shall live though hidden from men. This implies that although the wisdom of their civilization may be forgotten or obscured over time, it will continue to exist in some form, perhaps preserved in hidden or esoteric ways, inaccessible to the general populace. I, in the land thou callest Chem, races shall rise, and races shall fall. Forgotten shalt thou be of the children of men. Thoth speaks of the cycles of civilizations in the land known as Chem, ancient Egypt, where different races will ascend and then decline. He suggests that the current inhabitants, likely his audience, will eventually be forgotten by future generations. Yet thou shalt have moved to a star space beyond this, leaving behind this place where thou hast dwelt. He indicates that the current audience will move beyond the earthly realm to a higher dimension or celestial realm leaving behind their terrestrial dwelling place. The soul of man moves ever onward, bound not by any one star, but ever moving to the great goal before him where he is dissolved in the light of the all. Thoth describes the soul's eternal journey, which transcends the confines of individual stars. He suggests that the soul continually progresses towards a grand ultimate goal, where it merges or dissolves into the universal divine light. Know ye that ye shall ever go onward, moved by the law of cause and effect until in the end both become one. He emphasizes the perpetual progression of souls, driven by the law of cause and effect until they eventually reunite with the divine source. Thoth asserts that, ultimately, all distinctions and separations dissolve as souls merge into oneness with the universal consciousness. I, man, after ye have gone, others shall move in the places ye lived. Thoth acknowledges the transience of human existence, stating that after the current generation passes away, new generations will inhabit the same places. Knowledge and wisdom shall all be forgotten, and only a memory of gods shall survive. He predicts that over time, the knowledge and wisdom accumulated by current generations will fade away, leaving behind only vague memories or myths of divine figures. As I to thee am a god by my knowledge, so ye, too, shall be gods of the future because of your knowledge far above theirs. Thoth compares himself to a god in the eyes of his audience due to his vast knowledge. He suggests that the current generation, possessing knowledge surpassing that of future generations, will also be revered as gods by those who come after. Yet know ye that all through the ages, man shall have access to law when he will. 
Thoth reassures his audience that despite the inevitable loss of knowledge over time, humanity will always have access to universal laws or principles when they seek them. Ages to come shall see a revival of wisdom to those who shall inherit thy place on this star. He predicts that future generations will experience a resurgence of wisdom, inheriting the positions and responsibilities of the current generation on earth. They shall, in turn, come into wisdom and learn to banish the darkness by light. Thoth anticipates that future generations will attain wisdom and enlightenment, overcoming ignorance and darkness through the power of light and knowledge. Yet greatly must they strive through the ages to bring unto themselves the freedom of light. He emphasizes the ongoing struggle future generations will face in their quest for spiritual liberation and enlightenment. Then shall there come unto man the great warfare that shall make the earth tremble and shake in its course. This predicts a future conflict or spiritual battle that will profoundly impact humanity and the earth. Aye, then shall the dark brothers open the warfare between light and the night. He warns of a time when forces opposing enlightenment and goodness will actively engage in a cosmic battle against the forces of light and wisdom. When man again shall conquer the ocean and fly in the air on wings like the birds, when he has learned to harness the lightning, then shall the time of warfare begin. Thoth predicts a future era when humanity will achieve technological advancements such as conquering the seas, flying in the skies like birds, and mastering electricity. He suggests that these advancements will coincide with a period of warfare and conflict. Great shall the battle be twixt the forces, great the warfare of darkness and light. He emphasizes the magnitude of the conflict that will ensue, depicting a grand battle between the forces of darkness and light. Nation shall rise against nation using the dark forces to shatter the earth. Thoth foresees nations engaging in warfare, utilizing destructive forces to wreak havoc upon the earth. Weapons of force shall wipe out the earth man until half of the races of men shall be gone. He predicts that advanced weaponry will lead to widespread destruction, resulting in the decimation of half of humanity. Then shall come forth the sons of the morning and give their edict to the children of men, saying, O men, cease from thy striving against thy brother. Only thus can ye come to the light. Cease from thy unbelief, O my brother, and follow the path and know ye are right. Thoth anticipates the intervention of enlightened beings, referred to as the sons of the morning, who will deliver a message urging humanity to cease its conflicts and embrace unity and enlightenment. They emphasize the importance of abandoning strife and disbelief, instead advocating for following the path of righteousness and unity to attain enlightenment. Then shall men cease from their striving, brother against brother and father against son. Thoth envisions a future where conflicts and divisions among humanity will cease, symbolized by the cessation of strife between family members and neighbors. Then shall the ancient home of my people rise from its place, neath the dark ocean waves. He predicts the resurgence of his ancestral homeland, presumably Atlantis, from beneath the depths of the ocean, symbolizing a rebirth or revival of ancient wisdom and civilization. Then shall the age of light be unfolded with all men seeking the light of the goal. Thoth foresees an era characterized by enlightenment and spiritual awakening, where humanity collectively strives for spiritual growth and understanding. Then shall the brothers of light rule the people. Banished shall be the darkness of night. He suggests that enlightened beings, referred to as the brothers of light, will guide and lead humanity, ushering in an era devoid of spiritual darkness and ignorance. I, the children of men shall progress onward and upward to the great goal. Children of light shall they become. Flame of the flame shall their souls ever be. Thoth expresses the idea that humanity will continue to evolve spiritually, transcending earthly limitations to become enlightened beings, forever connected to the divine spark within them. Knowledge and wisdom shall be man's in the great age for he shall approach the eternal flame, the source of all wisdom, the place of beginning, that is yet one with the end of all things. He anticipates that in this enlightened age, humanity will have access to profound knowledge and wisdom, symbolized by their connection to the eternal flame, the ultimate source of wisdom and creation. I, in a time that is yet unborn, all shall be one and one shall be all. Man, a perfect flame of this cosmos, shall move forward to a place in the stars. Thoth envisions a future where unity and oneness prevail, 
where humanity transcends individuality to become unified with the cosmos, symbolizing a profound spiritual evolution. I shall move even from out of this space-time into another beyond the stars. Finally, he suggests that humanity's spiritual evolution will lead them beyond the confines of space and time, offering a transcendence to higher dimensions or realms of existence. Long have ye listened to me, O oh my children, long have ye listened to the wisdom of Thoth. Thoth acknowledges the time spent sharing his wisdom with humanity, emphasizing the duration of his teachings. Now I depart from ye into darkness. Now go I to the halls of Amenti, there to dwell in the future when light shall come again to man. He announces his departure from the mortal realm, symbolized by his journey to the halls of Amenti, where he will await the return of enlightenment to humanity. Yet, know ye, my spirit shall ever be with thee, guiding thy feet in the pathway of light. Thoth reassures that although he physically departs, his spiritual presence will continue to guide humanity toward enlightenment. Guard ye the secrets I leave with thee, and surely my spirit will guard thee through life. He advises humanity to safeguard the wisdom and knowledge he has imparted, promising that his spiritual influence will protect them as they navigate life. Keep thine eyes ever on the pathway to wisdom. Keep the light as thy goal evermore. Thoth emphasizes the importance of continuously seeking wisdom and enlightenment, urging humanity to maintain their focus on spiritual growth. Fetter not thy soul in bondage of darkness, free let it wing in its flight to the stars. He warns against allowing the soul to be trapped by ignorance and darkness, encouraging individuals to liberate their souls and soar toward spiritual heights, symbolized by the stars. Now I depart thee to dwell in Amenti. Be thou my children in this life and the next. Thoth announces his departure to dwell in Amenti, a realm associated with the afterlife or spiritual plane. He addresses his followers as his spiritual children, implying that they should continue to uphold his teachings and wisdom both in their current lives and beyond. The time will come when ye, too, shall be deathless, living from age to age a light among men. Thoth predicts that his followers will attain immortality, becoming eternal beings who shine as beacons of wisdom and enlightenment among humanity. Guard ye the entrance to the halls of Amenti. Guard ye the secrets I have hidden among ye. He instructs his followers to protect the entrance to the halls of Amenti, where sacred knowledge is safeguarded. They are tasked with preserving the secrets entrusted to them. Let not the wisdom be cast to barbarians. Secret shall thou keep it for those who seek light. Thoth warns against allowing the sacred wisdom to fall into the hands of those who are not ready or worthy, emphasizing the importance of keeping it reserved for seekers of enlightenment. Now depart I receive thou my blessing. Take thou my way and follow the light. Thoth concludes by bidding farewell, bestowing his blessing upon his followers, and urging them to follow his teachings and the path of enlightenment. Blend thou thy soul in the great essence. Thoth advises his followers to merge their souls with the universal essence, suggesting a harmonious alignment with the greater cosmic consciousness. 1. With the great light, let thy consciousness be. He encourages them to unite their consciousness with the universal light, indicating a state of spiritual oneness and enlightenment. Call thou on me when thou dost need me. Use my name three times in a row, Cheke, Aralik, Volmalites. Thoth offers his assistance when needed, providing his followers with a method to invoke his presence. He instructs them to call his name three times consecutively as a means of summoning him for guidance or support. End of Tablet 12 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 13 List ye, zero man, hear ye the wisdom. Hear ye the word that shall fill thee with life. Hear ye the word that shall banish the darkness. Hear ye the voice that shall banish the night. Thoth calls upon humanity to pay attention and listen to the wisdom he imparts. He promises that his teachings will bring enlightenment and dispel ignorance and darkness. Mystery and wisdom have I brought to my children, knowledge and power descended from old. He asserts that he has brought profound mysteries and wisdom inherited from ancient times to humanity. These teachings hold excellent knowledge and transformative power. Know ye not that all shall be opened when ye shall find the oneness of all? One shall ye be with the masters of mystery, conquerors of death, and masters of life. 
This emphasizes the importance of realizing the unity of all existence. By understanding this interconnectedness, individuals can attain mastery over life and death, aligning themselves with the enlightened beings who have transcended mortality. I. Ye shall learn of the flower of Amenti, the blossom of life that shines in the halls. In spirit shall you reach that halls of Amenti and bring back the wisdom that liveth in light. He speaks of a profound revelation awaiting those who explore the spiritual realms. By accessing the halls of Amenti, individuals can discover the essence of life and bring back deep wisdom from the realm of enlightenment. Know ye the gateway to power is secret. Know ye the gateway to life is through death. I, through death but not as ye know death, but a death that is life and is fire and is light. Thoth reveals the esoteric knowledge that the path to true power and enlightenment lies in hidden truths and experiences of transformation. He suggests that the journey to spiritual rebirth involves a symbolic death, characterized by a profound awakening and illumination, rather than the conventional notion of physical death. Desire thou to know the deep, hidden secret? Look in thy heart where the knowledge is bound. Know that in thee the secret is hidden, the source of all life and the source of all death. This invites the listener to seek understanding by introspection, suggesting that the profound secret lies within one's own heart. He implies that the source of life and death resides within each individual. List ye, O man, while I tell the secret, reveal unto thee the secret of old. He urges the listener to pay attention as he unveils an ancient secret. Deep in earth's heart lies the flower, the source of the spirit that binds all in its form. Thoth describes a metaphorical flower, located deep within the earth, symbolizing the source of the universal spirit that unifies all existence. For know ye that the earth is living in body as thou art alive in thine own formed form. He emphasizes the earth's vitality, likening it to a living organism similar to humans. The flower of life is as thine own place of spirit and streams through the earth as thine flows through thy form, giving of life to the earth and its children renewing the spirit from form unto form. This is the spirit that is a form of thy body, shaping and molding into its form. Thoth explains that the flower of life represents the essence of spirit, which permeates both the earth and individual beings, sustaining life and facilitating the cyclical renewal of spirit. He concludes by asserting that this universal spirit is the essence that shapes and molds the physical form of all living beings, including humans. Know ye. O oh man, that thy form is dual, balanced in polarity while formed in its form. Thoth explains that human beings possess a dual nature, characterized by the balance of opposing polarities within their physical form. Know that when fast on thee death approaches, it is only because thy balance is shaken. It is only because one pole has been lost. He asserts that when death is imminent, it is due to an imbalance in one's polarity indicating the loss or disruption of equilibrium between opposing forces. Know that thy body, when in perfect balance, may never be touched by the finger of death. I, even accident may only approach when the balance is gone. Thoth emphasizes that maintaining perfect balance prevents the onset of death, suggesting that accidents and misfortunes only occur when equilibrium is disrupted. When ye are in a balanced equilibrium, ye shall live on in time and not taste of death. He reinforces the idea that living in a state of balanced equilibrium ensures longevity and prevents the experience of death. Know that thou art the balanced completion, existing because of thy balance of poles. Thoth emphasizes that individuals achieve completeness and existence through the balance of opposing poles within themselves. As, in thee, one pole is drawn downward, fast from thee goes the balance of life. Then unto thee, Cold death approaches, and change must come to thine unbalanced life. He warns that when one pole dominates and disrupts the balance, death becomes inevitable, signaling the necessity of change to restore equilibrium and stave off death. Know that the secret of life in Amenti is the secret of restoring the balance of poles. All that exists has form and is living because of the spirit of life in its poles. Thoth reveals that the key to life in Amenti, the afterlife or the spiritual realm, lies in restoring the balance of opposing poles within oneself. He asserts that everything in existence, including living beings, derives its vitality and form from the life force present within the poles of its being. 
See ye not that in earth's heart is the balance of all things that exist and have being on its face? Thoth points out that the earth contains the balance necessary for the existence of all things present on its surface. The source of thy spirit is drawn from earth's heart, for in thy form thou art one with the earth. He explains that the source of an individual's spiritual essence originates from the heart of the earth, as humans are intimately connected to the planet. When thou hast learned to hold thine own balance, then shalt thou draw on the balance of earth. Thoth suggests that once an individual achieves inner balance, they can draw upon the equilibrium present within the earth itself. Exist then shalt thou while earth is existing, changing in form, only when earth, too, shalt change, tasting not of death but one with this planet, holding thy form till all pass away. He explains that by attaining balance and aligning with the earth's stability, individuals can endure as long as the earth exists, undergoing transformation alongside it without experiencing death, remaining unified with the planet until the end of all things. List ye, O man, whilst I give the secret so that ye, too, shalt taste not of change. One hour each day shalt thou lie with thine head pointed to the place of the positive pole, north. Thoth prepares to impart a secret that will enable individuals to avoid the effects of aging and maintain stability. He instructs individuals to spend one hour each day lying with their heads facing north, aligning with the positive pole. One hour each day shalt thy head be pointed to the place of the negative pole, south. Thoth further advises spending another hour each day with the head directed towards the south, aligning with the negative pole. Whilst thy head is placed to the northward, hold thou thy consciousness from the chest to the head. And when thy head is placed southward, hold thou thy thought from chest to the feet. He directs individuals to focus their consciousness from the chest area up to the head while facing north. Similarly, he advises shifting focus from the chest down to the feet while facing south. Hold thou in balance once in each seven, and thy balance will retain the whole of its strength. Aye, if thou be old, thy body will freshen, and thy strength will become as a youth's. Thoth emphasizes the importance of maintaining this balance seven times over, ensuring that one's equilibrium remains strong. He assures that following these practices can rejuvenate an aging body, restoring strength akin to that of youth. This is the secret known to the masters by which they hold off the fingers of death. This reveals that this practice is the secret known to wise individuals, masters, who can ward off the effects of aging and death. Neglect not to follow the path I have shown, for when thou hast passed beyond years to a hundred to neglect, it will mean the coming of death. He warns against neglecting these practices, as failure to adhere to them, particularly beyond the age of one hundred, could lead to the onset of death. Hear ye, my words, and follow the pathway. Keep thou thy balance and live on in life. Thoth urges the listener to heed his words and follow the prescribed path to maintain balance in life, suggesting that balance is crucial for continued existence. Hear ye, O man, and listen to my voice. List to the wisdom that gives thee of death. He emphasizes the importance of listening to his voice and understanding the wisdom he imparts regarding death. When at the end of thy work appointed, thou may desire to pass from this life, pass to the plain where the sons of the morning live and have being as children of light. Thoth suggests that when one reaches the end of their predetermined tasks or purpose in life and desires to depart from this world, they should transition to a realm where enlightened beings reside, known as the sons of the morning, who embody light and enlightenment. Pass without pain and pass without sorrow into the plain where is eternal light. He advises that this transition should be peaceful and free from suffering, leading to a realm characterized by eternal light and spiritual enlightenment. First lie at rest with thine head to the eastward. Fold thou thy hands at the source of thy life, solar plexus. Thoth instructs the listener to initially lie down with their head facing eastward, indicating a specific direction. He further advises folding one's hands over the solar plexus, which is considered the energetic center or source of life force in some spiritual traditions. Place thou thy consciousness in the life seat. Whirl it and divide to north and to south. Thoth suggests focusing one's awareness or consciousness on the solar plexus area, connecting with the source of life energy. He indicates a visualization or mental action of dividing one's consciousness into two parts, directing one part toward the north and the other toward the south. 
send thou the one out toward the northward. Send thou the other out to the south. Thoth instructs the listener to send each divided part of their consciousness in opposite directions, one toward the north and the other toward the south. Relax thou thy hold upon thy being. Forth from thy form will thy silver spark fly, upward and onward to the sun of the morning, blending with light, at one with its source. He advises relaxing one's grip or control over their being, allowing a part of their essence or soul, referred to as the silver spark, to ascend upward toward the sun of the morning, merging with the light and becoming unified with its source. There it shall flame till desire shall be created. Then shall return to a place in a form. Thoth explains that the essence or soul will remain in the light until the desire to return to physical form is generated, at which point it will reincarnate into a new body. Know ye, O men, that thus pass the great souls, changing at will from life unto life. He concludes by stating that great souls or enlightened beings transition freely from one life to another, exercising willful control over their incarnations. List ye, O man, drink of my wisdom. Learn ye the secret that is master of time. Thoth is calling upon the listener to pay attention and absorb his teachings, likening it to drinking from a source of wisdom. He further introduces the concept of a secret related to mastering time, suggesting that it holds significant power. Learn ye how those ye call masters are able to remember the lives of the past. Great is the secret yet easy to master, giving to thee the mastery of time. This hints at the ability of enlightened beings, or, masters, to recall their past lives, suggesting that this secret holds the key to such memories. Despite its greatness, Thoth suggests that this secret is easy to learn and will grant the listener mastery over time. When upon thee death fast approaches, fear not but know ye are master of death. He reassures the listener that when death is imminent, they should not fear it but instead understand that they have mastery over death itself. Relax thy body, resist not with tension. Thoth advises the listener to relax their body and not resist with tension when facing death. Place in thy heart the flame of thy soul. He suggests that the listener should focus on the essence or core of their being, represented by the flame of their soul, within their heart. Swiftly, then sweep it to the seat of the triangle. This instructs the listener to quickly move their focus or consciousness from the heart to a specific point referred to as the seat of the triangle. Hold for a moment, then move to the goal. He advises holding this focus for a moment before moving it to the ultimate objective. This, thy goal, is the place between thine eyebrows, the place where the memory of life must hold sway. Thoth identifies the goal as the point between the eyebrows, often associated with the third eye, in spiritual traditions, where memory of past lives is said to reside. Hold thou thy flame here in thy brain seat until the fingers of death grasp thy soul. He instructs the listener to maintain their focus at this point until the moment of death. Then, as thou pass through the state of transition, surely the memories of life shall pass, too. Thoth suggests that as the listener transitions through the process of death, their memories of past lives will also pass before them. Then shalt the past be as one with the present. Then shall the memory of all be retained. He indicates that at this moment, the past lives will merge with the present, and the listener will retain memories of all their past experiences. Free shalt thou be from all retrogression. The things of the past shall live in today. Thoth concludes by suggesting that the listener will be liberated from regression, and their past experiences will continue to enrich their present life. Man, ye have heard the voice of my wisdom. Follow, and ye shall live through the ages as I Thoth acknowledges that the listener has heard and received his wise teachings. He also encourages the listener to follow his guidance, suggesting that by doing so, they will attain a timeless existence akin to his own. This implies achieving a state of enlightenment or eternal life through adherence to Thoth's wisdom. End of Tablet 13 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 14 List ye, O man, to the deep hidden wisdom lost to the world since the time of the dwellers lost and forgotten by men of this age. This is urging mankind to pay attention to the profound knowledge that has been obscured over time and forgotten by the people of the current era. Know ye this earth is but a portal, guarded by powers unknown to man. He explains that the earth serves as a gateway or portal to other realms, 
and it is protected by mysterious forces beyond human understanding. Yet, the Dark Lords hide the entrance that leads to the heaven-born land. Thoth introduces the concept of Dark Lords who conceal the entrance to heavenly realms or higher dimensions, preventing access to those who are not of the light. Know ye, the way to the sphere of Arulu is guarded by barriers opened only to light-born man. He explicitly mentions Arulu, a heavenly sphere or dimension, indicating that access to such realms is only granted to those who possess a certain level of spiritual enlightenment or purity referred to here as light-born individuals. Upon earth, I am the holder of the keys to the gates of the sacred land. Command I, by the powers beyond me, to leave the keys to the world of man. Thoth claims to possess the keys or access to the spiritual realm, symbolizing his authority over sacred knowledge and enlightenment. He further suggests that he is instructed by higher powers to pass on the keys or sacred knowledge to humanity before his departure. Before I depart, I give ye the secrets of how ye may rise from the bondage of darkness, cast off the fetters of flesh that have bound ye, rise from the darkness into the light. Thoth reveals that he imparts the secrets of spiritual liberation, guiding humanity to transcend the limitations of material existence and attain enlightenment. Know ye, the soul must be cleansed of its darkness, ere ye may enter the portals of light. He emphasizes the importance of spiritual purification as a prerequisite for accessing higher spiritual realms. Thus, I established among ye the mysteries so that the secrets may always be found. I, though man may fall into darkness, the light will always shine as a guide. Thoth explains that he established mystical teachings and practices to ensure that the secrets of spiritual enlightenment would endure and be accessible to seekers throughout time. He assures that despite humanity's propensity to stray from the path of enlightenment, the light of spiritual truth will always be available as a guiding beacon. Hidden in darkness, veiled in symbols, always the way to the portal will be found. Man in the future will deny the mysteries but always the way the seeker will find. Thoth suggests that even when spiritual truths are obscured or obscured by symbolism, the path to spiritual enlightenment will remain discoverable. He also predicts that in the future, some may reject or deny the existence of mystical truths, but the sincere seeker will always find a way to uncover them. Now I command ye to maintain my secrets, giving only to those ye have tested, so that the pure may not be corrupted, so that the power of truth may prevail. Thoth commands his followers to safeguard his secrets and teachings, only sharing them with those who have been tested and proven worthy. This is to prevent corruption and ensure that the power of truth remains intact. List ye now to the unveiling of mystery. List to the symbols of mystery I give. Make of it a religion for only thus will its essence remain. He directs his followers to pay attention to the revelation of hidden knowledge and the symbols he presents. He suggests that they should form a religion around this knowledge to preserve its essence. Regions there are two between this life and the Great One traveled by the souls who depart from this earth. Duat, the home of the powers of illusion. Seket Hetspet, the house of the gods. Thoth describes two regions that souls traverse after departing from earth. Duat, the realm of illusionary powers, and Seket Hetspet, the domain of the gods. Osiris, the symbol of the guard of the portal, who turns back the souls of unworthy men. He mentions Osiris, a symbolic figure who guards the portal and prevents unworthy souls from passing through. Beyond lies the sphere of the heaven-born powers, Arulu, the land where the great ones have passed. There, when my work among men has been finished, will I join the great ones of my ancient home. Thoth speaks of Arulu as the realm where divine beings reside, a place where the great ones, including himself, have journeyed. He also expresses his intention to return to Arulu once his mission among humanity is complete, where he will reunite with the other divine beings of his ancient homeland. Seven are the mansions of the House of the Mighty. Three guards the portal of each house from the darkness, fifteen are the ways that lead to Duat. Thoth describes the structure of the realms beyond Earth, indicating that there are seven main domains, each guarded by three sentinels, with fifteen pathways leading to Duat, the realm of illusion. Twelve are the houses of the Lords of Illusion, facing four ways, each of them different. He mentions twelve abodes ruled by the Lords of Illusion, each oriented in a distinct direction. Forty and two are the great powers, judging the dead who seek the portal. 
four are the sons of Horus, two are the guards of east and west. Isis, the mother who pleads for her children, queen of the moon, reflecting the sun. Thoth speaks of forty-two great powers responsible for judging the deceased who seek passage through the portal. He further mentions four sons of Horus and two guards, Isis being the mother figure who advocates for her children and reflects the sun's light as the moon. Ba is the essence, living forever. Ka is the shadow that man knows as life. Ba cometh not until Ka is incarnate. These are mysteries to preserve through the ages. Keys are they of life and of death. Thoth explains the concepts of Ba and Ka, where Ba represents the eternal essence, and Ka symbolizes the life force that becomes incarnate. He emphasizes the importance of preserving these mysteries as they hold the keys to life and death. Hear ye now the mystery of mysteries. Learn of the circle beginningless and the endless form of he who is one and in all. Thoth introduces the ultimate mystery of the circle, symbolizing the eternal and omnipresent nature of the divine. Listen and hear it, go forth and apply it, thus will ye travel the way that I go. He urges his followers to listen and understand this mystery, as it will guide them along the same path he follows. Mystery and mystery, yet clear to the light born, the secret of all I now will reveal. I will declare a secret to the initiated, but let the door be wholly shut against the profane. Thoth declares that while the mystery may seem complex, it is clear to those born of light. He promises to reveal the ultimate secret but emphasizes that it should only be shared with the initiated, keeping it hidden from the profane. Three is the mystery, come from the Great One. Here, and light on thee will dawn. Thoth introduces a profound mystery derived from the ultimate source, promising enlightenment to those who listen. In the primeval dwell three unities. Other than these, none can exist. These are the equilibrium, source of creation, one God, one truth, one point of freedom. He explains that in the primordial realm, three fundamental unities exist, God, truth, and freedom, which serve as the balance and source of all creation. Three come forth from the three of the balance, all life, all good, all power. Three are the qualities of God in his light home infinite power, infinite wisdom, infinite love. Thoth describes how three aspects emerge from the balance, life, goodness, and power, indicating essential elements that stem from the equilibrium. He also identifies three qualities of God residing in the realm of light, boundless power, wisdom, and love, highlighting attributes of the divine essence. Three are the powers given to the masters, to transmute evil, assist good, use discrimination. Three are the things inevitable for God to perform. Manifest power, wisdom, and love. Thoth reveals three powers bestowed upon the masters. The ability to transform evil, aid good, and exercise discernment, suggesting their roles in guiding and shaping existence. He concludes by stating three inevitable actions of God. Demonstrating power, wisdom, and love. Implying essential functions of the divine essence in the universe. Three are the powers creating all things. Divine love possessed of perfect knowledge. Divine wisdom knowing all possible means. Divine power possessed by the joint will of divine love and wisdom. Thoth describes three powers responsible for the creation of all things. Divine love, characterized by perfect knowledge. Divine wisdom, understanding all possible methods. And divine power, arising from the combined will of divine love and wisdom. Three are the circles, states, of existence. The circle of light where dwells nothing but God, and only God can traverse it. The circle of chaos where all things by nature arise from death. The circle of awareness where all things spring from life. He outlines three states of existence. The circle of light, accessible only to God and devoid of anything but the divine essence. The circle of chaos, where all things originate from death and disorder. And the circle of awareness, where life emerges, and everything else springs from death existence. All things animate are of three states of existence, chaos or death, liberty in humanity and felicity of heaven. Thoth concludes by stating that all living beings experience three states of existence, chaos or death, representing disorder and demise, liberty in humanity, signifying the freedom of human life, and felicity of heaven, denoting the happiness and fulfillment found in the divine realm. 
Three necessities control all things, beginning in the great deep, the circle of chaos, plenitude in heaven. Three are the paths of the soul, man, liberty, light. Thoth asserts that three fundamental aspects govern all existence, the origin in the great deep, the realm of chaos where creation arises, and the state of abundance and fulfillment in heaven. He delineates three paths that the soul can take, the path of human experience, the path of freedom or liberation, and the path of enlightenment or spiritual illumination. Three are the hindrances. Lack of endeavor to obtain knowledge, non-attachment to God, attachment to evil. In man, the three are manifest. Thoth identifies three obstacles that hinder spiritual progress, the failure to seek knowledge diligently, detachment from the divine, and attachment to malevolent forces. These hindrances are evident within humanity. Three are the kings of power within. Three are the chambers of the mysteries, found yet not found in the body of man. He speaks of three potent forces within humans that exert influence over them and three hidden chambers of esoteric knowledge that exist within the human body both discovered and undiscovered. Hear ye now of he who is liberated, freed from the bondage of life into light. Knowing the source of all worlds shall be open. I, even the gates of Arulu shall not be barred. Yet heed, O man, who wouldst enter heaven. If ye be not worthy, better it be to fall into the fire. Know ye the celestials pass through the pure flame. At every revolution of the heavens, they bathe in the fountains of light. Thoth speaks of the liberated soul, free from the cycle of life and death, able to access the source of all existence. He warns that only those worthy and pure enter heaven, as the celestial beings undergo purification in the pure flame during each cycle of the heavens. List ye, zero man, to this mystery. Long in the past before ye were man born, I dwelled in ancient Atlantis. Thoth invites the listener to pay attention to a profound mystery from ancient times when he resided in the legendary civilization of Atlantis. There in the temple, I drank of the wisdom, poured as a fountain of light from the dweller. In the temple of Atlantis, Thoth gained profound wisdom, symbolized as a fountain of light emanating from a divine presence known as the dweller. Give the key to ascend to the presence of light in the great world. Thoth implores to provide the key to ascending to the presence of light in the divine realm. Stood I before the Holy One enthroned in the flower of fire. Veiled was he by the lightning of darkness, else my soul by the glory have been shattered. Thoth describes standing before the divine presence, veiled by the intense radiance that could overwhelm one's soul. Forth from the feet of his throne like the diamond, rolled forth four rivers of flame from his footstool rolled through the channels of clouds to the man-world. He depicts four streams of fiery energy emanating from the divine throne and flowing into the earthly realm. Filled was the hall with spirits of heaven. The wonder of wonders was the starry palace. The hall was filled with celestial beings, and the divine palace was a marvel beyond comprehension. Above the sky, like a rainbow of fire and sunlight, were formed the spirits. Sang they the glories of the Holy One. Celestial spirits appeared in the sky, radiating light and singing praises to the Divine Presence. Then from the midst of the fire came a voice, Behold the glory of the first cause. A voice emerged from the midst of the Divine Fire, proclaiming the glory of the ultimate Creator. I beheld that light, high above all darkness, reflected in my own being. Thoth beheld the Divine Light, transcending all darkness, and saw its reflection within himself. I attained, as it were, to the God of all gods, the Spirit Sun, the Sovereign of the Sun Spheres. Thoth describes achieving a state akin to the Divine, becoming connected to the highest spiritual authority, the ruler of the Sun Realms. Again came the voice, There is one, even the first, who hath no beginning, who hath no end, who hath made all things, who govern all, who is good, who is just, who illumines, who sustains. The Divine Voice reaffirms the existence of an eternal, omnipotent, and benevolent Creator who is the source of all things and the sustainer of the universe. Then from the throne, there poured a great radiance, surrounding and lifting my soul by its power. A brilliant radiance emanates from the Divine Throne, enveloping Thoth's soul and elevating him with its immense power. Swiftly I moved through the spaces of heaven, 
shown was I the mystery of mysteries, shown the secret heart of the cosmos. Thoth experiences a rapid journey through celestial realms, where he is granted insight into profound mysteries and the core essence of the universe. Carried was I to the land of Arulu, stood before the lords in their houses. Thoth is transported to the realm of Arulu, where he encounters the divine lords who govern cosmic order from their respective domains. Opened they the doorway so I might glimpse the primeval chaos. The divine lords grant Thoth access to a vision of the primordial chaos, the formless abyss from which creation emerged. Shuddered my soul to the vision of horror, shrank back my soul from the ocean of darkness. Thoth's soul recoils in fear from the terrifying vision of the chaotic abyss, overwhelmed by its immense darkness and formlessness. Then saw I the need for the barriers, saw the need for the lords of Arulu. Only they, with their infinite balance, could stand in the way of the pouring chaos. Only they could guard God's creation. Thoth realizes the vital role of the divine lords of Arulu in maintaining cosmic order and preventing the overwhelming chaos from engulfing creation. Their perfect balance is necessary to safeguard the universe and uphold the divine plan. Then did I pass, round the circle of eight. Saw all the souls who had conquered the darkness. Saw the splendor of light where they dwelled. Thoth observes a gathering of enlightened souls who have transcended darkness and now reside in a realm of radiant splendor. I longed to take my place in their circle, but I also longed for the way I had chosen when I stood in the halls of Amenti and made my choice to the work I would do. Thoth feels a desire to join the enlightened beings in their circle, yet he also recalls the path he chose when he made a commitment to his earthly duties in the halls of Amenti. Passed I from the halls of Arulu down to the earth space where my body lay. Arose I from the earth where I rested. Stood I before the dweller. Thoth descends from the divine realm of Arulu back to the earthly plane where his physical body is located. His soul now returns to his physical body, and he stands before the dweller, a divine entity or guardian. Gave my pledge to renounce my great right until my work on earth was completed until the age of darkness is past. Thoth reaffirms his commitment to postpone his divine privileges or rights until he fulfills his earthly responsibilities and until the era of darkness comes to an end. List ye, zero man, to the words I shall give ye. In them shall ye find the essence of life. Thoth instructs the listener to pay attention to the words he is about to impart, as they contain the fundamental essence of existence. Before I return to the halls of Amenti, taught shall ye be the secrets of secrets, how ye, too, may arise to the light. Thoth promises to reveal profound secrets before he departs to the halls of Amenti secrets that will guide the listener on the path to enlightenment. Preserve them and guard them, hide them in symbols, so the profane will laugh and renounce. Thoth advises the listener to safeguard the secrets and conceal them using symbolic language, ensuring that those who are not spiritually ready will dismiss them as trivial or incomprehensible. In every land, form ye the mysteries. Make the way hard for the seeker to tread. Thus will the weak and the wavering be rejected. Thoth suggests establishing mystical teachings in various cultures, making the journey to enlightenment challenging to deter those lacking determination or sincerity. Thus will the secrets be hidden and guarded, held till the time when the wheel shall be turned. By making the path to enlightenment difficult, the secrets will remain protected until the time is ripe for their revelation. Through the dark ages, waiting and watching, my spirit shall remain in the deep hidden land. Thoth assures that his spiritual essence will persist during times of obscurity, vigilantly awaiting the emergence of those ready to receive enlightenment. When one has passed all the trials of the outer, summon ye me by the key that ye hold. This indicates that when an individual successfully overcomes external challenges, they can call upon him using a specific key or method. Then will I, the initiator, answer, come from the halls of the gods in Amenti. Then will I receive the initiate, give him the words of power. Thoth pledges to respond as the initiator, emerging from the divine realms of Amenti to aid the seeker in their spiritual journey. Thoth then promises to welcome the initiate and impart potent words of wisdom and empowerment. Hark ye, remember, these words of warning. Bring not to me one lacking in wisdom, and pure in heart or weak in his purpose. Thoth warns the listener not to bring individuals who lack wisdom, purity of heart, 
or strong determination to seek enlightenment. Else I will withdraw from ye your power to summon me from the place of my sleeping. Thoth cautions that failure to heed the warning will result in him withdrawing the ability to be summoned from his resting place. Go forth and conquer the element of darkness. Exalt in thy nature thine essence of light. This encourages the listener to overcome darkness and elevate their inner light, emphasizing the importance of spiritual growth and enlightenment. Now go ye forth and summon thy brothers so that I may impart the wisdom to light thy path when my presence is gone. Thoth instructs the listener to gather their companions, indicating that he will impart wisdom to illuminate their path once he departs. Come to the chamber beneath my temple. Eat no food until three days have passed. There will I give thee the essence of wisdom so that with power ye may shine amongst men. Thoth directs the listener to a specific location in his temple and advises them not to eat for three days before their arrival. Thoth then promises to impart profound wisdom to the listener, enabling them to wield great power and influence among humanity. There will I give unto thee the secrets so that ye, too, may rise to the heavens, God men in truth as in essence, ye be. Thoth pledges to reveal secrets that will enable the listener to ascend to divine status, becoming godlike beings in both truth and essence. Depart now and leave me while I summon those ye know of but as yet know not. Thoth then instructs the listener to depart while he summons other individuals who are not yet known to them but will soon be revealed. End of Tablet 14 Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, Tablet 15 Now ye assemble, my children, waiting to hear the secret of secrets which shall give ye the power to unfold the God-man, give ye the way to eternal life. Thoth gathers his followers, indicating they are about to learn a profound secret that will empower them to unlock their divine potential and attain eternal life. Plainly shall I speak of the unveiled mysteries. No dark sayings shall I give unto thee. Thoth assures his listeners that he will speak plainly and directly about the mysteries he is about to reveal without resorting to obscure or cryptic language. Open thine ears now, my children. Hear and obey the words that I give. Thoth urges his followers to pay close attention and obey the teachings he is about to impart. First, I shall speak of the fetters of darkness which bind ye in chains to the sphere of the earth. Thoth announces that he will begin by discussing the metaphorical chains of darkness that keep humanity bound to the material realm of earthly existence. Darkness and light are both of one nature, different only in seeming, for each arose from the source of all. Thoth explains that darkness and light are fundamentally the same, originating from the same ultimate source, but they appear different due to their various manifestations. Darkness is disorder. Light is order. Darkness transmuted is light of the light. Thoth elucidates that darkness represents chaos and disorder, while light symbolizes order and harmony. He also reveals that the transformation of darkness into light is the ultimate purpose of existence. This, my children, your purpose in being. Transmutation of darkness to light. Thoth concludes by stating that the transmutation of darkness into light is the fundamental purpose of human existence implying that this transformation leads to spiritual enlightenment and liberation. Hear ye now of the mystery of nature, the relations of life to the earth where it dwells. Thoth introduces the topic of the interconnectedness between life and the earth, hinting at the hidden secrets of nature he is about to reveal. Know ye, ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Thoth explains that human beings consist of three aspects, the physical body, the astral body, related to emotions and desires, and the mental body, related to thoughts and intellect, all unified as one being. Three are the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all, as above, so below. Thoth suggests that each aspect of human nature has three primary qualities or attributes, totaling nine qualities altogether, reflecting the principle of correspondence between the macrocosm, the universe, and the microcosm, the individual. In the physical are these channels, the blood which moves in vortical motion, reacting on the heart to continue its beating. Thoth describes the physical aspect of human nature, highlighting the channels through which life force flows, including the blood circulating in vortical motion and its interaction with the heart to sustain its rhythmic beating. Magnetism which moves through the nerve paths, carrier of energies to all cells and tissues. Thoth mentions another channel of life force, magnetism 
which travels through the nerve pathways, delivering energy to all cells and tissues of the body. Akasa which flows through channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels. Thoth refers to Akasa, a subtle yet physical element that flows through channels, playing a vital role in completing the energetic pathways within the body. Each of the three attuned with each other, each affecting the life of the body, Thoth emphasizes the interconnectedness and harmony between the physical, magnetic, and akasic channels, as they collectively influence the vitality and well-being of the body. Form they the skeletal framework through which the subtle ether flows. Thoth explains that these channels form the framework of the body through which the subtle ether, life force, flows, indicating their importance in sustaining life. In their mastery lies the secret of life in the body. Thoth suggests that understanding and mastering these channels and energies is the key to unlocking the secret of life within the body. Relinquished only by the will of the adept, when his purpose in living is done. This implies that only advanced practitioners, or adepts, can consciously control these channels and energies, and they may choose to relinquish them when they have fulfilled their life's purpose. Three are the natures of the astral. The mediator is between above and below, not of the physical, not of the spiritual, but able to move above and below. Thoth describes the astral aspect of human nature, which serves as a mediator between the physical and spiritual realms, possessing qualities distinct from both but capable of traversing both realms. Three are the natures of mind, carrier it of the will of the Great One. Arbitrator of cause and effect in thy life. Thoth outlines the mental aspect of human nature, which carries the divine will and acts as an arbiter of cause and effect in one's life, implying that the mind plays a crucial role in shaping one's destiny. Thus is formed the threefold being, directed from above by the power of four. Thoth explains that the human being is composed of three aspects, physical, astral, and mental, directed by the power of four, which likely refers to the spiritual aspect or a higher divine influence. Above and beyond man's threefold nature lies the realm of the spiritual self. Four is it in qualities, shining in each of the planes of existence, but thirteen in one, the mystical number. Thoth introduces the concept of the spiritual self, which transcends the three aspects of human nature and possesses four qualities across various planes of existence, culminating in the mystical number thirteen, symbolizing unity and completion. Based on the qualities of man are the brothers. Each shall direct the unfoldment of being, each shall channels be of the Great One. Thoth suggests that the spiritual self or higher aspects of human nature serve as guides or channels for the divine, directing the evolution and unfoldment of human consciousness. On earth, man is in bondage, bound by space and time to the earth plane. Thoth acknowledges the limitations imposed on humanity by the physical realm, including the constraints of space and time. Encircling each planet, a wave of vibration binds him to his plane of unfoldment. Thoth describes how the vibrational frequencies surrounding each planet constrain individuals to their respective planes of existence, implying that human beings are subject to the energetic influences of their environment. Yet within man is the key to releasement, within man may freedom be found. Thoth concludes with a message of hope, suggesting that despite earthly limitations, Humanity possesses the inherent potential for liberation and freedom from bondage, hinting at the inner resources and spiritual power within each individual. When ye have released the self from the body, rise to the outermost bounds of your earth plane. Thoth advises on the process of astral projection, suggesting that one should detach from the physical body and ascend beyond the earthly realm. Speak ye the word Dor e Lilla. Then, for a time, your light will be lifted free may ye pass the barriers of space. Thoth provides a specific incantation or mantra, Dor e Lilla, to aid in the journey, indicating that it will temporarily elevate one's consciousness, enabling passage through spatial barriers. For a time of half of the sun, six hours, free may ye pass the barriers of earth plane, see and know those who are beyond thee. Thoth explains that the effect of the incantation lasts for six hours, during which time one can traverse the earthly plane freely and gain knowledge of higher realms and beings. Yea, to the highest worlds may ye pass. See your own possible heights of unfoldment, know all earthly futures of soul. Thoth emphasizes that during this astral journey, individuals can ascend to the highest realms, gain insights into their spiritual potential, 
and perceive the future trajectory of their soul's evolution. Bound are ye in your body, but by the power ye may be free. This is the secret whereby bondage shall be replaced by freedom for thee. Thoth concludes by affirming that although individuals are initially bound by their physical bodies, they possess the power to transcend this limitation through spiritual practice and astral projection, ultimately achieving freedom from earthly constraints. Calm let thy mind be. At rest be thy body, conscious only of freedom from flesh. Thoth instructs to achieve a state of calmness and relaxation, freeing the mind from all thoughts and the body from tension, focusing solely on the desire for liberation from physical constraints. Center thy being on the goal of thy longing. Think over and over that thou wouldst be free. Thoth advises repeatedly concentrating on the longing for freedom, making it the central focus of one's consciousness and aspirations. Think of this word, la'am i el gan, over and over in thy mind, let it sound. Drift with the sound to the place of thy longing. Thoth introduces a sacred word or mantra, la'am i el gan, and encourages its continuous repetition in the mind, allowing sound to guide one's consciousness toward the desired destination. Free from the bondage of flesh by thy will. Thoth emphasizes the role of individual willpower in achieving freedom from the physical body highlighting the importance of mental determination and focus. Hear ye while I give the greatest of secrets, how ye may enter the halls of Amenti, enter the place of the immortals as I did, stand before the lords in their places. Thoth prepares to reveal the profound secret of accessing the halls of Amenti, the realm of immortality, where one can stand before the divine lords. Lie ye down in rest of thy body. Calm thy mind so no thought disturbs thee. Thoth advises assuming a relaxed position, ensuring the body is at rest, and quieting the mind completely, allowing no disruptive thoughts to intrude. Pure must ye be in mind and in purpose, else only failure will come unto thee. This underscores the necessity of purity of intention and clarity of mind, warning that any impurity or wavering purpose will lead to failure. Vision amenti as I have told in my tablets. Long with fullness of heart to be there. Thoth instructs us to visualize the halls of Amenti as described in his teachings and to ardently desire to be present there with complete sincerity and devotion. Stand before the Lords in thy mind's eye. Pronounce the words of power I give, mentally, Mekat A, Shab El, Hail Sir, Ben A, Zabrut Zin, Ephraim Quar Ei. Thoth directs us to mentally visualize standing before the Divine Lords and to recite the given words of power silently invoking their presence and authority. Relax thy mind and thy body. Then be sure your soul will be called. Thoth concludes by advising to relax both mind and body completely, assuring that in this state, the soul will be summoned to enter the halls of Amenti. Now give I the key to Shambhala, the place where my brothers live in the darkness, darkness but filled with light of the sun, darkness of earth, but light of the spirit, guides for ye when my day is done. Thoth provides the key to accessing Shambhala, a realm where his enlightened brethren reside. He describes it as a place of darkness illuminated by the spiritual light, serving as a guide for humanity. Leave thou thy body as I have taught thee. Pass to the barriers of the deep, hidden place. Thoth instructs to leave the physical body as previously instructed and journey to the hidden barriers of Shambhala. Stand before the gates and their guardians. Command thy entrance by these words. I am the light. In me is no darkness. Free am I of the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one, so I may pass to the realm of wisdom. Thoth directs us to stand before the gates of Shambhala and assert one's identity as a being of light, free from darkness, and demand entry to the realm of wisdom. When they refuse thee, as surely they will command them to open by these words of power, I am the light. For me, there are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets, Edom A. Ahim Sabert Zuradorn. Thoth advises that if the guardians of the gates refuse entry, one should use a powerful command asserting their luminous nature and invoking the secret of secrets. Then if thy words have been, truth, of the highest, open for thee, the barriers will fall. Thoth assures that if one's assertion of truthfulness is genuine and pure, the barriers of Shambhala will yield granting entry into the realm of wisdom. Now, 
I leave thee, my children. Down, yet up, to the halls shall I go. Thoth announces his departure from his disciples, stating that he will descend to the halls of Amenti. Even though it could be interpreted as going down, it's also a metaphorical ascent to higher spiritual realms. Win ye the way to me, my children. Truly, my brothers, shall ye become. Thoth encourages his followers to strive to reach him in the halls of Amenti, suggesting that by doing so, they will truly become his brothers, indicating spiritual elevation and attainment. Thus finish I my writings. Keys, let them be to those who come after. Thoth concludes his teachings, stating that his writings shall serve as keys of wisdom for future seekers and generations to come. But only to those who seek my wisdom, for only for these am I the key and the way. Thoth emphasizes that his wisdom and teachings will only be accessible to those who earnestly seek them, as he is the guide and the path for those on the journey of seeking enlightenment. End of Tablet 15 Thanks to everyone who watched the video, especially those that made it to the end. We will not endeavor to tell you how to interpret these teachings, that is entirely up to the individual. From our perspective, the teachings contained within the Emerald Tablets encourage us to explore our inner selves, to embrace our true nature, and to connect with the divine essence that resides within us. They are a call to action, an invitation to awaken to our highest potential and to walk the path of wisdom and enlightenment. They remind us that we are not just physical beings, but spiritual beings as well, and that we have a purpose in this world that goes beyond the material realm. May the wisdom contained within the Emerald Tablets inspire us to embrace our true selves, to live with purpose and intention, and to cultivate a deeper connection with the Divine. May we all walk the path of wisdom and enlightenment, and may the teachings of the Emerald Tablets guide us on our journey.